million. All right, do we need to start over? Do we need to start over? Okay, okay, do we need to start over? No, because they have a okay, recording. Got it. Okay, 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 got believe. it. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, so the latest cost estimate we're looking at is 130 million. Um, there's that's the likely tweak that the, if the maximum will be about 130 million, so it has to be reauthorized in Florida. So the delegations are working on that, um, and then we're looking to move that forward. So there's several um paths we're looking for. Uh, Florida actions, which is close author authorization change report, of course, is Packer. We have to do one of those because of the cost increase. Um, we're looking for at advanced works. That means the village and the DEC as a non federal sponsor can take some parts of the authorized plan and move them forward. So we're working in conjunction with DEC to start exploring. Looking at how we can implement the So there's an understanding that we to see. Uh, we're going to have internal meetings to discuss that. And then we'll move forward from there. So we need to work on that. Some updates we have right now. All right. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I anybody? was going to say, there's a lot of people possibly in the back that couldn't even hear you. Um, you it was kind of low, and I don't know if the mic was a little closer to you. Okay. But um, you saying that there we the the because I'm trying to recall from the last meeting that we were here. I can't remember the date. It was a few weeks ago. Um, who? October, October 20th. 20th. Thank you. Um, the post authorization because I remember that. Um, uh, Senator Gillibrand's office was asking for that. Was that sent to them? Yes, they were asking for the cost. cost. So they have to get that approved from Florida, and then we have to implement it. it was but was those numbers sent to them? Yes. Okay. And then for the DC and Village, because that was one of the biggest things in terms of um, having a, a pre-authorized or or not a uh, not a pre-authorized, but um, uh, an agreement. Where are we at with that, and when when is that coming? So we have a memo of understanding, an MOU, and I sent that to DEC to look over, and then we're scheduling an, an internal meeting between DEC, who is the non federal sponsor, mm -hmm. and us to, to discuss that memo of understanding, which would allow you guys to proceed with some of the authorized project elements. And when is that meeting happening? They are getting back to me on the date and time that they are available. All right. I will reach out again tomorrow to see when they have a date and time. But, cool. yeah. So, so typically, when there's an Army Corps project, we can't do any of the work ourselves. It's the Army Corps that needs to do the work unless we get this sort of interim agreement, that's and then we we are are able to provide it as something that's in the in the core plan as an in kind fee. Yeah, so, so. so um, so it would be at our cost, even though we've been told that the Army Corps, that we don't have a share anymore, that, after, that we, we've been told, and I, I hope this is still correct, that, that the village's share is not going to be a cash share anymore. I mean, obviously we have to maintain it, it once doesn't we have come. to be a cash share. It can be a in-kind work share. We still have, but I guess, do we still have a share? And if so, what's the percentage? I'm not bothered. So if the project is about 130 million, mm -hmm. your cost share, the non-federal sponsored cost share is 35% of that. Okay. So, so and because we were under the impression after Ida that the federal government was going to be mm -hmm. picking up our 35%. And, no, and not, Andrew's <laughs> nodding. There was a misconception out there with the new DERSA and the Build It Back programs, mm -hmm. uh, build, build funding. Um, some projects were did receive 100% federal funding, and some projects did not. This project that did not. Okay. So this is cost share. Okay. So, so let me so, go ahead. I was going to explain the cost share is uh, the Army Corps is responsible for 65% of the cost. New York State is the official local partner. Uh, that's by law. Uh, they uh, they're responsible for the remaining uh, share, but per New York State law, they only pick up 50% of the 35%, which is, so that's 17 and a half percent. And then I think there has to be some sort of cost share agreement with the state as to how the remainder of that. All right, so- uh, the, count, the, the county. county. Yeah. The counties, so, so, but- yeah, I think it, the counties put forward some like 17 or $20 million, I, I, I can't recall. The, the county has mm -hmm. set aside 17 and a half million mm -hmm. for this project. Yeah. But they have an agreement, a separate agreement with New York State DEC. 
So our agreement is with New York State to exceed the agreement. Go, go, uh, Robert, why don't you come up front? You can hear a little better. No, it's you hear. Okay. I guess you speak up a little bit. No, hold on. Yeah. We have to go outside. LMC, can you hear her? LMC, can you hear her? Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. But we have to keep the fan on because we had a CO2 issue earlier today. We have to have a ventilation unless you want to take a risk. But, all right. Just, just speak up a little bit, please. Federal share is 65 percent. The non-federal share with the New York State DEC is 35 percent. Westchester County has an agreement with New York State DEC. For that 35 percent has to be split between the state and Westchester County. Together. So, and we're working in conjunction. The village is a stakeholder, so a project partner. So and whatever your agreement is with Westchester County or the state, that is your agreement. All right, so um, uh, originally this was uh, 88 million um, and we, our, our, our share was 8 million, I think I was. And we, so we kind of uh, viewed the uh, uh, original deal as a gift of $8 million for us. But uh, the, it's, it's, so it's possible that we may be on the hook for some of this 130. Correct. All right. There's also um, words, which is on the land mm -hmm. easements and stuff like that, that may kick into some of that. Share as well, so it may not be all the cash. Okay, okay, I understand. Now, um, uh, there was some also uh, issues about you know shovels in the ground not till twenty twenty five, and uh, we're not starting, and, and people got upset about hearing that. Can you explain that, please? There's a process that we have to follow to go into uh, designing construction of the, of the rest mm -hmm. of the project. So we have to sign a project partnership agreement, mm -hmm. and that is with New York State DEC. That usually takes a few months. Range anywhere from six months to twelve years. Six months to a year. Okay. And we so, just needed that final cost. Yeah. And then we have it. So. And and any work that the village. Okay. Sorry. Um, there are people online who's also saying that things are uh, that they cannot hear her as well as it's choppy. So. Is it? I mean, may possibly one of another person's talking in it to make sure it's not just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, try it. Yeah, that's fine. All right. That's. Oh, that that sounds good. Yeah, why don't you use that microphone? Or just hold it. No, <laughs> just hold it. It's okay. Thank you, Andrew. Sander. Go ahead. Um, can you repeat the question? Go ahead and repeat the question. Okay. So, um, uh, so. We could, uh, um, all right. Okay. Um, so th there's a possibility that we, that we would maybe on the hook for some portion of the difference between 130 and 88. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Still All right, so that that'll that'll be something we'll need to address going forward, uh, and the work that the village does um, with the with the core's approval in advance, we will be fully in, reimbursed for that. You have to approve it, so we would need to see what you're proposing to do, mm -hmm. the cost of that. So there's there may be certain elements within that cost that may not be applicable, but most likely it should be. Okay, great. All right. So, so, but, but, but nothing we're going to do is going to like shut the project down or, or, or uh, okay. Uh, I can you, so the everything's fine if we start on these things. You have to get our approval first. Sure. It comes in writing. It comes in writing. Got and it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. All right. So, uh, but it, it, even then, still, even if we send up, send the, um, the contract to you, and then you still have to wait for the DC to have that meeting. So it's just still, the either the ACE project or the DC that keeps holding us up. So it's not necessarily, I just want to make sure that it's not necessarily the village that is holding things up. It's, it, it's, we are kind of doing what we need to do with us sending what we, what we are, what we're proposing to do. Then we still have to wait for you and we still have to wait for the DC. And in the interim, we can then continue to send you emails, continue to send you correspondence, asking you when is when is that meeting going to happen? When is something going to be approved? And then we also can uh, lean on our 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 uh, 
our um, county and, and state legislators to push something. Got it. And once I know the meeting with DEC, I can Thank you. And, and, and let me let me make this plea to you, since um, we don't have control of this of this plan, that uh, that um, uh, that that you release information in a timely fashion, because every time it rains, there are people suffering from PTSD in this community who get very, very upset and they get they get angry at us. And, and rightfully so. I understand that. But um, but but we don't have the information either. So 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 please please be a little bit more forthcoming so so we don't have uh you know surprises for these folks who are just very very traumatized please uh, I, I'm, I'm asking you just keep us if, even if it's no change and this is the, the schedule just let us know please okay thank you thank you Bethany. thank you thank you oh um demolition of the ward avenue bridge might begin when then 2025 is it is it possible uh, and i understand is it possible that that bridge will not be replaced or uh no, replaced. okay yes okay yes. thank you we didn't want to move forward with the demolition to leave you with no bridge no access to that roadway okay thank you very much thank you all right everybody i hope everybody's clear on that i, I think i am okay uh item 1c PPLAA 2023, the leaf blower law. And there's two aspects to this we were uh, changing. We were going to um, change, amend the effective dates uh, for the leaf blower restrictions at the request of the uh, uh, Committee for the Environment to, um, I believe, to mirror what's going on in Larchmont and um, remove the exemption for village operations uh, because uh, I think. Well, I, I don't I don't want to speak for everybody else, but at least my opinion is that it's a bad look for us to be exempting ourselves from something we're uh, requiring the rest of the village to adhere to. So um, uh, uh, are we I want to ask the, the village manager still there, uh, Jerry? Yes, sir. OK, can uh, can you assure us that that we can comply with this law, that, that you can you can operate without using leaf blowers and and and. and <clears throat> In, in, in the designated uh, uh, time periods and, and use electric equipment only? I can assure you that I will not operate a gas powered leaf blower. Okay, and, and what, the, the time, are the time frames a problem? No, they're not a problem at all. Okay. We don't mean you personally, Jerry. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Lou, <clears throat> I have these headphones on and it's not coming in clearly. No, no, no. So it, Jeff yeah. on is on, Jeff on is on and I'm sure he would like to express an opinion. Um, he is the park uh, uh, general foreman and uh, should weigh in on this. But as I've said in the past, this is a policy and um, it's your decision and we will abide by whatever policy the board uh, provides the uh, staff. All right. is, is, Jeff, is there anything you want to say that does this create a hardship for the uh, for the uh, for the your team? Um, I mean, in some aspects, it does. So we have 144 acres of grass that we cut and maintain, which means uh, blowing leaves to mulch. Uh, we use blowers to clean parking lots. Uh, I'm not saying that um, using electric leaf blowers is a bad thing. Uh, we've switched to some during the summer months where we just have little cleanups. But as far as come this time of year, there's no possible way electric relief blowers would work for us and cleaning, let's say, Florence Park. What what we get done in eight hours in Florence Park with gas powered relief blowers would probably take us three days with electric leaf blowers. All right. So that's something we'll need to consider when we move this uh, to the regular agenda. Are we uh, are we all good with moving it on to the regular agenda? Consensus from the board? Yeah. Yeah. Nora? Yeah. Um I, I would I think that it would have been good to ask for some more public input tonight because we're gonna now it's we're gonna have a new law drafted and our next schedule would be to schedule a public hearing I guess oh, right right and, and that's when, that's they, when they would, we'll look at the that yeah. way. but I mean I I, I Bob and I were thinking about the tree law. <laughs> Go ahead. So what what? I'm gathering is the board would like us to take the changes outlined in the memo, put them in a new law for your consideration, and put that on to the next work session. Unless, unless Nora, you'd like to uh, have uh, an input session from the public before we refer this 
maybe what we should just do is ask Bob to draft the law and see what people say at at the next meeting. I mean, we're gonna at the next it'll be at our next work session, correct? Whatever work session or annual session. Yeah. So the the revised draft would be on the work session, and then we would decide to move it to the regular session. All right. So well, maybe I just I would encourage sorry. people to 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 have input on our revised draft. I think it's more efficient to get the input earlier than later. All right. And before the public hearing, you want to have another meeting to discuss it, and then you know, and after he revises it, I'm just maybe we just suspend our rule next time when we have it at work session because that's when we would get the next draft. Yeah. And just make sure people. It, because it's, it's, I don't think it's very efficient to do it the way we're doing it. So let right. people talk, mm -hmm. comment on the draft at work session in case we want to make a change then. And if it's not substantial, we can. All right. Well, I mean, they can comment on, in a number of different ways. I mean, well, they can email us. They can they can talk to us individually. Um, I think the public the public input should be when we're the public. This is a work session for us to discuss. Um, uh, and uh, I don't want to. If you want to do that, but. Um, that's fine. You weren't it, here for the tree law. Well, I know. <laughs> well, my, my, I, I also realized that there were things that were on the old work session when I first got here that were, had been on for years. And I'll, I'll tell you, my feeling is, we're, you know, we're going to hit everything on this agenda tonight before we stop, um, no matter how long it takes. So um, uh, I think that's going to slow us down on on that, that particular day. But um, how do you guys want to proceed? I don't mind moving it to the works I mean, to the regular session and having that discussion, but after it's revised. Okay. Um let's let's just, if we have to send it back and do it again, I mean we have till May. We we can we can we can do it multiple times if we need to. I think we do until it's right. Like I don't want to just put something out there that's not correct. Okay, and so what do you want to do? If, like if we feel like we're gonna put it off, if we want to wait till it's revised, then I think we wait till it's revised. Wait, wait till what till it's revised? Like the revision that we're that we would discuss potentially tonight. But Nora's asking for additional public input before we we so but I I, I think that's the whole purpose. I, I mean I wasn't here obviously during the tree law the tree mm -hmm. law fiasco or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Um but I think that I personally think that's the point of the public hearing is because we've we've stopped things or we've um halted things at a public hearing. Um, when people, you know, express their their concerns, and again, Lou said, um, it coming to a public hearing or coming to the um to the board meetings is not the only way that they can address this. Mm -hmm. They can address the um. Yeah, I mean, we have the, we have a lot of a lot of opportunities for input in our meetings. I mean, more than but, any any board I've ever I, seen. But what I'm, I think, I think the education piece, of, yes, is important in terms of making it aware and educating the com community on what exactly it is. But that takes other work, not just coming here. That would take work on either um, uh, through our website, through our, uh, our our information system, all all of those things. All right. So, but we got to give these folks in, instructions on what to do. And, and uh, I'm saying revise it. I mean, I say revise it and bring it back for the regular meeting. Have a public hearing. If 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 we want to change it again, then we then we then we bring it back to the to work session again. We have till May. We, it's not it's not we're not under the gun on them. Uh, all right. Okay. So at the 27th, we'll schedule public hearing for the meeting in December. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. The changes you want in the new draft. Yes. Are to conform it to the March Law. Uh, yes. But also with two, are, are, on the dates. Yes. On the dates, but dates. also I think on the enforcement. That's the other issue that they heavy enforcement on their. Well, they they it, so the way we phrased it. Anybody could argue that they that it wasn't their fault, and that's an affirmative defense. So I think the Larchmont makes everybody involved responsible. Yeah, because I, I was thinking about that. I, I think my boss made me do it is not a good excuse. I mean, if my boss made me take four drinks and get and, and drive his car home, that, that that's not an excuse, right? Well, just just if you recall, that was a discussion that the board had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. About the potential employee who was told to do something that mm -hmm. is allegedly by under this law. So the reason it was drafted as an affirmative defense mm -hmm. is that it requires, in order to avoid liability, the employees required to come in and say, my employer told me to do this. All right. And then the law provides anyone who uses it or causes someone to use it is liable. Well, and, and, and that it casts liability upon the employer. Well, and that could be a defense. 
that could be a defense that the person with the relief blower can utter when they come to court and the judge can decide to, uh, to accept it or not. That's what it probably provides. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. All right. Okay, are all right. We, are, also, are we not taking into consideration what um, Jack was saying in terms of the workload and um, how long it takes for the the staff to, to use um, electric leaf, leaf blowers, especially in this in this season. I think that's what we have to talk about uh, uh, when when the when the bill comes up. Okay. And maybe maybe that's going to cause uh, one or more of us to vote against it. I don't know. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so to clarify, you want the proposed law to apply to equally to the village. Yes. Yeah, and I'm correct. I'm correct. I'm, 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 I'm speaking. I'm not speaking for everybody. That's what I. We have a consensus on that. Yeah, and, sure. the, and the language that I had recommended was the it was from the Larchmont law saying responsible parties. The following parties shall have committed violation of this law if it is not complied with. One, the party operating the leaf blower, and two, the party who employed the person to operate the leaf blower at the time of violation, and three, the party who owns the property where the violation occurs, so that it's, it's it, it incentivizes everybody to comply with the law. So so I, and, uh, under this circumstance, everybody would get tickets, and then when they came here, the, the, guy, with, the guy with the leaf blower says, they made me do it, and the judge can say, all right, you're dismissed, and then the other two people have to have to deal with the, the ticket. Am I, I just send this, I mean... So you're getting a little challenging here. Okay. So <laughs> if you're making everyone responsible, then yeah. everyone's responsible. Unless you have some sort of defense that says, you know, the devil may be doing. That's the, you have to have some out for the person. If, if you want the, the employee to be able to say, the uh, my employer told me to do it, I had to, you have to have that out. Uh, if you want the homeowner to be able to say, hey, my leaf, my landscaper comes on, you know, Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock, I'm never home. I don't know what he does. You're still making me pay a fine. You can do that. That's within yep. your province. But you know, you got to, and we can draft it with all that in. You can discuss it later. That's how you, if that's what you want us to do now. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm not. I'm not in a, in a. I don't know about you guys. I'm not in the mood to give anybody uh, an out in the law. I, I think that would be uh, that would be uh, something for the process. If somebody wants to say, you know, but the process has to. The law has to say. Yeah. Has to have some out. If you want to, if you want someone who is, if you want the employee not to be responsible, his boss tells him use the gas blower or I'm firing you. You have to have that in the law. Oh, oh uh, you yes, know, I think that's. I don't. I don't think we need to do that. I think. Right. I, I think that. Uh, but that, then that. But then that goes back to the point. I'm sorry, but okay. that goes back to the point where we were talking about if the employee has to then come to court to take their time to come to court and figure all that out. Who has the time for that? If it's not their fault, they're just the employee. So I mean, I mean, I, I, I'll go back to the example uh, of of somebody who somebody who who whose boss tells them to do anything that is that's illegal. That's not you can come and 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 throw yourself on the mercy of the court. I mean, that's that's what I think he would do. And I think a, a, a reasonable I'm taking away from that person who works. What? It's still taking time away from that person well, who may. I, I don't job. think we can we can help and, unless you don't want to do this. All right. So I think I think we 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 leave it leave everybody's responsible. And uh, and and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it at the public hearing. All right, okay. that's all right. my feeling. All right. Okay, Everybody, we we good with that? Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll talk about it later. All right, thank you. All right, okay. zipping right along here. Uh, next uh, uh, is one D, uh, PLLT twenty twenty three. Remove the Board of Architectural Review for certain solar projects. And this is from the uh, Committee for the Environment, our favorite committee. Um, uh, it's um. <laughs> I'm biased. <laughs> My favorite committee. No, uh, it, it, it's um, it, essentially this is the law says they should be all in one direction. Am I correct? Now, um, Gary, can you address that? We're talking about solar panels here, uh, and and it's a unified solar um, a permit, and uh, and right now the permit says the way it's written is that the you can put them up, but they all need to be aligned the same way. I have a little question about the wording of that, but uh, but, but if that's the case, and somebody has an issue where one's got to go sideways or whatever, and you can't see it any, then that would be they would need a variance, and then they would have to go to the Board of Architectural Review. Do I have that correct? That's correct. I think, I think okay. that is correct. Yep. Okay. So I think that's fine. I mean, uh, uh, w w what we're saying here is that uh, if if they're all lined up one way, you don't have to go to the Board of Architectural Review. If you've got a special problem 
where you, you got to put one sideways, but nobody can see it and take a look at the plans. Then you go to the Board of Architectural Review for a variance. And they and they say yes or no. That's, uh, that seems reasonable. No? Anybody? Okay. I, 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 is that what's being requested? I mean, yes, that, that, that's what the, the, the that's what the BAR has has requested that uh, that they uh, all be in one direction, uh, um, and now so the the wording of that, and I got to find this here. The wording, the wording on that portion of it. Does anybody have that in front of them? Yeah. Thank you. Um, is this section two? No, section. Mm -hmm. Which section are you looking at? Uh, uh, we're, 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 it talks about the 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 uh, orientation of the of the um, of the panels. Version two. Hmm. Section two. No, it's version two, the second page. Second page. Okay. help me i can't find it. it there was something in the wording that 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 made me that struck me as ambiguous that it could be either horizontal or or vertical i think it needs to be that they're they're all one way or all or in other words they're all vertical or they're all horizontal um, uh, and I would like that to be explicit in, in, in the law. It says the installation of residential solar panels laid out in a uniform pattern, either horizontally or vertically on all areas of the roof is excluded from this definition. Okay, so I think it needs mm -hmm. to say either all horizontally or all vertically, because yeah, they're, they're, they're all horizontal or vertical. Some are horizontal, some are vertical. I, that, 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 yeah, I, I think that's, that's uh, unless I'm not, I'm, unless legalese, that doesn't, so they need to all be in one direction. Okay. They all need to be oriented in one, the same direction. Okay, great. So, so I think that's an important change, mm -hmm. and uh, we we make that. And then, if somebody needs to mix it up, uh, then they can go to the to the uh, BAR. I think the same thing is true with um, landmark buildings. If they come in, and they say, "Well, listen, I know it's a landmark building, but you're not going to see them where they're hidden here," you know, and, and they want to make that that case. They can go to the Board of Architectural Review and get a, approval for solar panels on a landmark. So, so that that's that would be their um, that would be their uh, their role. There's, so there's I think there's two aspects to that. One is that there's and I, and I think that there's some sort of credit that we get towards being a certified community if we adopt this. And my question about landmarks was, mm -hmm. does that limit by by exam you know we have a local landmarks law and people have to go for a certificate of appropriateness if we decide to exempt landmarks from that which i'm not sure we actually can do would that jeopardize our getting the credit that was my that was the question that i had does it jeopardize getting credit towards being a certified community i, I think the credit is for adopting the streamlined permit yes. and and the permit says there's a yeah. question there is required any board or right. And Please. I think if you I think that permit allows for certain circumstances, but I, that's that's my that's what I'm just I want to make sure that we aren't adopting this law, but then making ourselves unqualified because we have eleven local landmarks. I, I think it came up last time and I think I think we were assured that it wasn't. Does anybody any um that's my recollection but Mary more familiar with this than I Mary? Yes. Um this is not going to affect landmark review. Um, there's a separate section of the code that requires BAR to review any kind of modification to the outside of a landmark. So okay. regardless of this new law and the current law, anything that's a landmark will have to go for bar review. So if we say nothing on it, then that, then, 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 uh, then they, they'll still be, they'll still have to go to the BAR. I, 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 I understand they have to go to the BAR. My question is, does, does the fact that we have local landmarks and that disqualify us in adopting this permit from getting this, the credit that we get towards being- a I think the answer community? to that was no. No, because this is completely separate than the unified solar permit. That's gonna be a resolution, which is currently under review at the building department. And hopefully we'll have it on for in two weeks. Um, but that's is what is going to give you credit. 
I mean, I unified love solar permit. This is a separate law. Terrific. All right. So, so I think we have a, and I'm going to ask: Do we have a consensus to set this for the uh, for the uh, put this on our regular meeting with the addition that they that we specifically say they all have to be in one direction or the other? Is that okay? Yep. I'm fine. Okay. okay good. That's a revised Yeah. On the regular meeting agenda, two weeks from now. Yes, sir. Thank you. And, um, so we'll schedule public hearing then. No. Would we would we schedule a public hearing then? Do you think we need to? Yeah, we we would. We would on in two weeks. We would schedule the public hearing. We okay. usually schedule the public hearing at a regular meeting. Okay, great. And the building inspector did perform her review of the permit. Uh, a copy of her email with her comments is attached to the work session. Mm -hmm. Basically, the the big comments are, uh, you know, figuring out the the issue with the BAR and jurisdiction. Uh, second is, uh, you know, information about New York State electrical standards. And the third, which is more of a policy matter, is uh, a fee. Do we want to have the same fee structure for that we have for building permits, or would uh, the board want to look at a revised fee to, to encourage uh, the deployment of solar in the village? So that, that's more of a policy matter, which we can discuss when we're, we're ready. All right, let's let's let, let's do that. And uh, we have the consent, so we can, we'll, we'll we'll put it on for two weeks for scheduling a public hearing. Great. Um, uh, before we go further, I just wanted to uh, tell everybody that the um, uh, the mayor had intended to be here tonight, and uh, he was going to be late. He told me to start, but he cannot now make it. It's too late to zoom in, so uh, you're stuck with me. All right. Apologies. Um, okay, next, uh, two, new business. Flood mitigation advisory requests. Um, it's... It's, I know it says on the agenda that it's the flood mitigation presenting, but I guess I can do the same because I'm the lead. Is there is there somebody from flood mitigation here? No. Nope. Okay. I mean, I could. Why don't you? Okay, Lalani is the liaison, so why don't you take it away, Lalani? At least I tried to be. Okay. <laughs> um, the flood mitigation sent an email out uh, on the 25th asking for um, requesting three things. Uh, overall, obviously, overall focus something that they've over, they've been. Uh, stating is overall focus on and communication on flood and mitigation, um, updates on the uh, ACE project and hiring of the full-time staff coordinator. And I guess this kind of coordinates with what I was, I'm not sure. Um, it kind of coordinates with the conversation that I was going to have later on, but since we're going in order. <laughs> yes, we're going in order. We're going in order. Um <laughs> they're really adamant and also I think it, it would be helpful if we did have somebody who was um who was a flood coordinator um hired by the village and they're requesting that we have um either a partial portion of our work session or an additional day uh set a, set aside for flood updates and that we can coordinate together us as a board along with um, the flood mitigation committee so that we can really move things forward. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do outside of the ACE and we just heard from Bethany. There's, we, in regards to the federal funding, we're kind of stuck, but there's other things that we can do to move things forward. I, we understand that Beaver Swamp needs um, attention. We know that we still have to figure out the dam situation and we really need to put more attention to it. And so that is what they were requesting us to be more attentive um, and communicate more. But do they have any recommendations they want to bring to us? Because it's a it's an advisory board. Do they have any advice they're going to give us or they no, just I want think to? That, no, I don't think it's just, it, I don't think it's just, uh, I think it's conversations. I think it's communication, yeah. but I think it would be good to have the conversation if it's, um, if it had a, an agenda, if it had an agenda and we stuck to it, every meeting not being like, I don't want personally, not 10 things, 15 things on, you know, on the agenda, but we are focused on one thing at a time or mm -hmm. maybe two, two more than one thing at a time, mm -hmm. but not 10 things um, so that we can try to move the ball forward because this obviously is whatever, whatever methods that we're doing right now is not working. All right. All right. Go ahead. I think they should come with agenda items if we if we were to have this kind of one-off meeting where we, we kind of meet with them because we obviously know the things that we're working on from the emails and the communication that we get. But I think that if they came with 
like if there are questions that we knew we were going to meet two weeks from now, they could let us know now, like, hey, these are the items that I'm that I'm we're focused on. I we want an update on. I think it would help the conversation be more guided. It's kind of not just us sitting in a room and having no idea, you know, giving some updates. It's not the updates they're looking for or something we didn't, you know, try to find an update. I just think it needs to be a little more structured. So it, opposed actually, to just getting two groups in the room and so is this an extra day or is this during a work session? It could be I, I'm I'm fine with either or I just I think it well, I think it, it just needs to be structured. I need to, we need to no, know what I, we can expect. I agree that it needs to be structured. So we well, both hold each other accountable and have expectations of what we want or what we want to get out of the conversation. Well, I'll, I'll say this. This board has gotten some great recommendations from that podium. Yes, they have. Um, uh, not necessarily from Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee, but we've gotten them. And, and um, what I, what I, that's what we need from them. All right, so um, uh, I think they have to come here with with specific um, uh, additions to the conversation, and uh, and 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 not necessarily uh, just a bunch of questions. I mean, because we don't have the answers to all the questions. We don't know for some of the stuff they they ask about. I listen to those meetings, and they have a lot of they have a lot of the same questions that I have, mm -hmm. but just stating a bunch of questions doesn't doesn't move the ball yeah. i would think with a with a new mayor coming on we might want to um uh, uh consider and that would be up to the to the, the new mayor to maybe maybe liaise with the uh, uh with the with the flood board uh, mitigation advisory committee and 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 maybe uh, uh, tackle that bull by the horns if uh, if the new mayor is so inclined All right so yeah. i think i think i think that you know, the traffic commission has sort of a list, like they have a, a list of projects and issues that yeah. they, they have. They have, they have a, a nice, uh, a nice spreadsheet. The flood mitigation committee is well on its way to building that list. And maybe that's one way of starting. Are they? Are they? Well, I mean, I, I think that they have, they've made a lot, they, they have a lot of recommendations. I think if we ask them to do that, yeah. um, to formalize some of the recommendations that they have, and certainly it's open to other people. There's another person in this room who's not in the flood mitigation committee, but she's thought a lot about flooding that um, we Talk can about Kate. sort of get, yes, yeah, yeah. and we have some sort of a structure and have some sort of a list and figure out which items on that list, you know, are a priority and, you know, you know, some, what we can do, what we can do quickly, what we can do more slowly, what we can do further down the line and just try and make progress on flood mitigation, because I think everybody's very disappointed that the Army Corps plan has been delayed. So Which is we not need... within our, it's not, no, it's not, it's not on us. It's, yeah. No, it's not but, on but, us. But, but we could, we can, we can do what we're going to do. We're yeah. going to, and we're going to. But that's do. something I obviously can't go out of order, but that's something that I'm going to discuss later on in terms of how we as a board, how do we tackle it? Because then we can get the recommendations and then the recommendations could sit there and go, fly by night because there's so many other things that we do have to take care of but and I think that's why they're requesting a separate meeting and a more a more directed meeting just focusing on flooding but then what happens afterwards because the 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 staff the village manager and the staff can do all they all that all the great things that they're doing in terms of flood mitigation but then what are we doing as a as a as a committee but I'll talk about that later all right uh, um, let me take that one more piece yeah, sure, sure. No, and sure. I think that's what, like, that's my main piece. It's just, it needs, we need to manage expectations. I think it's great that we have a separate meeting. It's during the work session, but I think we manage expectations of this is what we can do immediately. This is going to take six to 12 months. I just think once we give them those tangible things, it, you know, there won't be as much tension between and thinking like things aren't getting done. And then or in reality, there are things that are getting done. They just start taking longer than we go. Both us the, as a board and the community will want. Yeah, yeah, it's like running running neck deep in quicksand sometimes. So I just want to um, make sure it's structured. So the consensus of the board is 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 what uh, we do with this request. So we, I mean, I don't think it's it's fair to to schedule these face to face meetings now at the end of this this current government until we reorganize. And okay. um and, and and I think uh, I think it would be wise to um to restructure the uh, interface with the FMAC. Uh, after reorganization. I think their next right. meeting is going to be, it's whatever, what is this? It's the 28th. So, and which will be after our next meeting, but in which actually I will bring it back to the FMAC. I know that the Mary elect was invited to the meeting, so we can discuss it there um, and then come back for whenever, when is it after that, December 11th. Mm -hmm. So, and then we'll figure it out. We'll put it on the work session. Okay. Meeting. Let's not forget. Blessings. Thank and you. I think, you know, maybe what we want to do in the beginning, just think because it is that the 
probably the first few meetings will be longer than the other meetings, like mm -hmm. just to get started. And so maybe sure. we do that on a second day. And if we can move it into work session, great, but try those separately. Cause you know, come, come March, we start with our, you know, budget meetings and those are very frequent, okay. you know? So I think if we could get started separately. I, I don't mind adding another meeting. I mean, if you want to do that, I don't want to, I don't want to speak for everybody's schedule. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a retired so guy. So I, can, I think yeah, I can. that's something that we probably couldn't add, like just finalize today. Are we willing to have another meeting or we do we, do we want to put on an extra uh, uh, on, on the work schedule? I think it was, I think, nor you saying an extra meeting. I need to start with I, because I, okay. I be I'm okay with an extra meeting, but I also don't want to think, take an account that it's not just us that would be at the meeting. We would have staff. So I want to make sure it works within their parameters and their work too, that it's that yeah, yeah. it would work. We need people way. here with answers. Yeah. Because I just think that's great. Like I'm all for having an extra meeting, but it's, it's, you know, it's not okay with staff and they're not going to be prepared. What, or, a, what about doing it? Yeah, you you want to do it now or do you want to wait until after reorganization? After reorganization. Wait till after reorganization. Okay. okay. I agree we should do that as well. Okay, so this is after reorganization. That, that's the consensus of the board. And uh, well, my one request is that it's, it's that it's structured and we have and like if anything at that next meeting on the 28th they have, if if we if we're if we're committing a letter that this is what we're gonna do, mm -hmm. that meeting, that meeting, their meeting on the 28th should be a meeting where they're putting together the items of the questions like you said, like I don't remember what could the traffic they have, mm -hmm. they're running spreadsheet. They need to cut they need to come that 20th meeting, they need to do that. They yeah. need to have that structure so then we can so when we do have that separate meeting. It's not kind of just like everything we can all think of, of the questions and we have some answers to this, some answers to that. I just think we need to have that because then it could come to us, us and staff and we, we can kind of build those expectations. Okay, this thing that you're talking about is probably six or 12 months down the line. This is something we can take action on now. I just want to be able to manage those expectations. I don't, I feel a lot of people are burned and hurt by a lot of things when it comes to flooding. It's a very touchy topic within our sure. community. I just want to make sure we're managing those expectations. So it's not kind of like we're telling them, oh, we're going to do this. And then it doesn't happen for 12 months and it's very frustrating. So I want to make sure like we are very clear and transparent with them about what the expectation can be for some of those items. And not to not to flog us to death to talk about it too long. I mean, uh, but but there are specific things that I think we can ask them to do uh, since they're 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 motivated volunteers on the issue of flood mitigation. I mean, I know they have I've I've just watched the meetings, they have one person who's trying to monitor uh, surrounding communities. I think you know we could have more than one person <laughs> uh, 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 on that job. That's what that's do you mean, critical. One, one person. There was one person that she, you know about the projects that might affect flooding in in, in neighboring communities in Harrison and and and, and in White Plains. And um, I, I I saw her present, you know, and and, uh, yeah, and so I that... said. And I said, I said, that's what we need to be doing. So that would actually be, <laughs> if we're not having that discussion, that will be on later on in the agenda when I have the discussion again. Okay, so okay. Exactly. All right. All right. Thank so, you. All right. Sorry. I hear you. Thank, thank you very much. You. This is going to happen after reorganization then. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, new business uh, uh, to be um, design services proposed for Palmer Avenue crosswalk at the Maranek High School. And that's from the manager's office. Jerry? Actually, um, Lou, Dan can speak to that okay. Okay. much I'm better. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, so uh, the originally Safe Booster School made a request to uh, ask the village to install a crosswalk on Palmer Avenue uh, by the high school where the new entrance is on the rear of the yeah. property. Uh, it's a county road. Uh, we've discussed this with the board. Is that by Walton? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, got it. So the board uh, agreed to proceed with. Uh, looking into this, uh, we had uh, AKRF do a report, prepare a design. We've submitted a street a street opening permit request to, or sorry, a highway work permit request to Westchester County, which would allow us to do the work. Uh, and uh, they approved that. Uh, I've asked AKRF for a proposal for design services to design the project. It would probably look very similar to what we just uh, what we just completed at uh, Fenimore and Palmer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the proposal we uh, received from ACARF was for twenty eight thousand dollars. It does not include uh, design sur uh, sorry, survey services or you know construction inspection services if and when we award a contract for this. Um, so this is the to move ahead to the design phase. Of this the is project. one of those crossings where the pedestrian hits the button and the lights go. Yeah, that, that okay. would be that would be one of the requirements. That's one of the requirements from the county. All right. 
and uh, and I noticed in it when I read through it, it said the county says that we're responsible for the maintenance of it. Yeah, but it's their road. But they're it's our project. You know, they, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, it's their road. But thank you guys. Yeah, you know, but I it's mean, yeah. yeah. When it's like, um, uh, I think we're we main, uh, we're responsible for the traffic signal. Uh, it's either in front of the high school because that was done at a village request. Okay. So you t that's pretty typical when uh, you seek permission from you know, basically your neighbor mm -hmm. to do work on their property. They're going to say, you go ahead. Sure. You have to, you're responsible for it. So it would be like an easement. Can, like what we did with the dam. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way that if, if we're responsible for it, is there a way to find county funding? To, pick, to maintain or fix it, or where are we getting the money to to do this project? So uh, it would, in terms of grant opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, the county really doesn't have anything like that. Um, there are safe routes to school grants out there, but mm -hmm. you know, the, the, if there's if we're looking to get this done expeditiously, and by expeditiously I mean next summer, because that's when we typically do work in and around the schools. Uh, I, I don't think there would be sufficient time frame to apply for a grant, then wait to on word of whether we're approved for the grant, then yeah, you know, right. contract or see them. I mean, it would delay the process by one to two years. And these are our kids, and it's uh, so uh, I think, uh, and it's not I mean, a not a huge amount of money. Well, I mean, the design the, the design is twenty eight thousand. Um, you know, I think uh, all in. Um, Palmer Avenue, Palmer and Fenimore, I'm oh, sorry, Mount, uh, Fenimore and Mount, uh, and Prospect mm -hmm. uh, cost somewhere around fifty to sixty thousand dollars for construction. Yep. Uh, but you know, it's also two years later. Uh, it's also we are in the uh, era of pretty high inflation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, increased cost for steel products, increased cost for concrete. Sure. My guess would probably be somewhere when everything's said and done, like a seventy-five to hundred thousand dollar project. As my mother-in-law used to say, "Cuesta lo que cuesta." Yeah. It costs what it costs. Yep. I mean, again, if this is a priority for the board, we would probably, and you want to see this done, we would probably make a request that you know it be funded either through, uh, you know, a uh, application of surplus or future issuance of debt. All right. So, um, uh, are we good moving this on to the regular agenda? Consensus, everybody, or no? Okay. Nora? I, I, I'm going to have the same concern that I have for everything that we're doing spending tonight. We aren't, it's not, we, we're spending too much money and we're not setting any priorities. And I think that's a problem. We haven't adopted a capital budget. We've adopted a capital spending plan that's five years. This isn't on it. There's more stuff that we're talking about tonight that's not on it. And mm -hmm. I think, I think we have to really figure out what. You know, I mean, every you know, we can't do everything, and I think we have to prioritize so what, what we're what, doing. What, do you want to put that on the agenda? Do you want to have, have a that? plan? Well, having a um, coming up with a, a a spending budget. I would love because to put that on it, the agenda. It, yeah, I mean, I know you said it several times, and I haven't really been opposed to it or anything like that. But you have to put it on the agenda. I did put it on when, the agenda. And, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't no, no, no. And what we ended up with was this massive, massive plan, not uh, like a five-year kind of wish list, as opposed to a plan where we're going to spend X amount this year, and these are the priorities. And if we have to shift because something else becomes a priority, what do we change? So well, let me ask you this, uh, uh, Jerry. Do we have the money for this? Lou, um, if it's a safety item, I think there needs to be a different consideration than just money. If yeah. you want us to wait and look for a um, a, a grant, it's going to take us a little bit of time. But apparently, we've been told that it's a very unsafe condition having the kids from the school crossing at that intersection. And for $100,000 um, or less, because it didn't cost us that much for a prospect in Fenimore. Um, I'm not sure, you know, if we haven't spent or wasted more money doing something uh, frivolous. Um, so that's my... And I'll say this, and, and although you, you, your concerns are, are, are valid and uh, um, structure-wise and, and, and form-wise, um, we still are in a position where we add money to our reserve every year. And so... 
uh, I got to think at some point, that's why it's there for stuff like this. We have we have thus far, but this year we're on on schedule to spend a lot more than we've spent even last year. And I think one of the are we adding to the, the uh, I don't know. I don't know. We don't have those numbers. But but what what I would say is we should be prioritizing our expenditures. And the first priority is always I mean, there's like a normal metric for it is what's mandated, like you know what we're under a consent decree that we have to do. Mm -hmm. And that would be the I and I stuff that we're doing. And then there's safety. And then there's the other things. And what, what I think that we're not doing is prioritizing. I don't disagree that this is important. Okay. Well, but at so some point something else gets so something you, else has to drop off. Okay. Well you, you can make the suggestion on what we could drop. And 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 I think we were all on the on the agree agreement that we think this is a priority and it's a, it's safety and we should do it. Is that the consensus? Yeah, I, I think, think I think safety has a different okay I, I think I, a different I, priority level. I just right. think we don't want you know, got this something to happen and, and we're getting told and it keeps coming up that this intersection is not safe. I think why we, you know. I mean, I would, I would, I, mean, I, I would hate to put this off and then have somebody hit by a car there. Mm -hmm. beyond, beyond this, beyond this, this particular situation, do you want to have a different meeting? Do you want to have a separate meeting? What do you, what do you want? How do you want to proceed with creating a, um, a plan like how do you want to proceed because again i personally think that the safety yes and safety items should be there be on the top of the list or however um but what do you what is the plan what plan do you have what plan are you suggesting of how to move forward like or do you want a, a, an additional meeting do you want us to lay it out do you want us to work you know obviously work with the village um the, the employees, uh, whether it's Augie, Aug uh, uh, um, Laura. Laura, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Laura, and 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 um, Jerry, like, who do you, what do you want to do? I, what I, I so what, what I concern? want is for us to create a capital spending budget. <laughs> Not this. We can use the plan that we have. That's. That, but that's many more things than we can accomplish in five years. But that's not what we're talking about here. But we're, we're, it, is. it is, because we just say it's on the list and we can fund it and we can afford it and we're gonna have a lot of reserve. I wanna have a structure that says, these are the projects that we're gonna do in a given year. And we have to prioritize them by what's required by law or consent, what, what, this, what the health and safety projects are, and then the things that we want to do. So on this item, so I'm just going to stay focused here. Now on this item here, um, do you want to you want to proceed, put it on the thing uh, on the agenda, or do you want to wait? I'm ha I'm happy to proceed, but okay. I want to. You're just about going forward. But, okay, yeah, going forward. forward. We hear you. But I'm I, I'm asking is that you have an idea of what that looks like. Because we can say that's what we want, but I'm asking you because you're the one who, who brings it up a lot. And then I and I agree, yeah, I mean, but what does it look it like? It looks like a plan that the staff would create that we would adopt that would that I have been asking for for years. The budget committee has been asking for it for years. And what we ended up adopting was a five-year kind of very right. big picture. And then we pick and choose from that as opposed to prioritizing. Well, we gotta we gotta play the cards we're so, dealt now on mm -hmm. uh, at this particular point in the game. So uh, uh, I think we have a consensus. So not to be dismissive, but the short version is uh, put this on for board consideration for the 27th. I, I think I think that's a, that's a consensus, am I correct? I agree. Yeah, okay, great. Let's, With so the plan, asking the- asking No, 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 that's, that's this, that's a separate issue. Uh, specifically this item. It's not an impossible. I understand, it's not impossible, okay. it is. Uh, do you, okay. think it's, you think it's worth putting it as a work system agenda and having the board, like once we get the staff's kind of consideration of prioritizing that we go through in a work session and yeah, our I priorities think, as well? Yes, I think we should. I okay, think good. We should. excellent, good. All right, good. Thank you very much. So that goes on for two weeks. Uh, next is 2C, Sheldrake River Flood and Land Use Assessment Report from the manager's office. Is that Dan or, uh, or Jerry? Um, yeah, I can talk about this because this is okay. uh, in the end of 2020, uh, the village applied for what uh, was known as a Building Resilient Infrastructure Communities Grant or BRIC, B R I C. Uh, it was to effectuate a project that had been recommended in the 2012 Comprehensive Plan and was also included in our hazard mitigation plan which basically was to uh, conduct a study to try and uh, expand and or protect 
open space along the Sheldrake River uh, to you know maintain areas that uh, to keep buildings out of the floodplain. Uh, so we had actually been approved for that grant. It was originally a seventy-five thousand dollar grant. Uh, we had uh, applied for seventy-five percent of the cost. Uh, in that round of funding, uh, there were eleven grants that were or grant applications that were submitted to New York State. Uh, we were the fifth highest. So uh, the first four of those grants ate up about ninety eight percent of the uh, of the total funding. So there was thirty two thousand five hundred dollars left. Uh, so uh, the board originally adopted a resolution committing the twenty five percent share of seventy five thousand, which is I believe eighteen thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Uh, we have thirty two thousand five hundred available in grant funding uh, and eighteen thousand from what was prior uh, prior previously approved. Uh, in the meanwhile, New York State commissioned a report, uh, which was a kind of a flood study of the Mamaroneck and Sheldrake Rivers. And among the recommendations in the report that was uh, prepared for the state by the engineering firm of SLR was the establishment of a flood bench along the Sheldrake River, which is remarkably similar to what we were going to study. Uh, but you know, we were proposing to do hydro hydraulic work, hydrology work. That was all done by SLR. Uh, so, and identify the areas that we would focus on. Another again, gift. Done by SLR. So uh, we've kind of expanded the grant a little bit to uh, not just identify, you know, the cost of those properties, but just kind of implementing what they've uh, recommended for the Shell Drake River area. Uh, given that SLR has already done, I would say two thirds of the work, uh, we asked them to submit a proposal because they have the data. They're not gonna be spending a lot of time interpreting the data. And we have until the end of next year, essentially, to perform the contract work. Uh, so I asked for a grant, uh, sorry, an applicant, a proposal from SLR to do the work. They provided that uh, at a cost of $75,000 to complete the study. Uh, and you know, we're seeking to move ahead with this. So we only have, uh, but we only have 32, you say, right? Well, there's 32,500 in grant funding. Mm -hmm. uh, the board already approved $18,750. So it's how much? We're committed uh, 18,750 in, I think it was uh, early 2021. So there is a balance of about twenty three thousand dollars that uh, uh, we we'd be asking the board to uh, finance to complete this report, right. so we can do this uh, complete the grant application. So that's another twenty three grand, Nora. Uh, I, um, uh, do what do we think about that? I think what we need to be doing is dealing with flooding. I think that's a priority. Okay, that's great. All right, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm with you. So, um, and 23,000 uh, more doesn't seem like too much. So uh, we put this on for two weeks? Absolutely. That's the board's consensus, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. We were... Say that again? No, 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 okay. I just, I was just yeah. And this has to, this grant funding is over in, has that been secured or no? Uh, yeah, the, the grant was approved in uh, 2020. We've been holding off on performing the work because uh, in discussions with SLR, again, given that they've done so much of the work already, uh, they asked that uh, us to revisit the issue once they submitted their final report to the DEC, which they did uh, in September of this year. And this is and this is studying uh, where and when to do what, right? Well, it's really the cost of implementing the rec their recommendations for the Sheldrake River area. And that's and that's critical. What we're talking about by the shelving is we're talking about essentially given the river. If you if you know the Sheldrake, the Sheldrake is like a, it's like a canal in a lot of places. And if you if you you create a, a shelf, it gives the river somewhere to go when it starts to flood, as opposed to just over the side and into the neighborhoods. So uh, and uh, and and that's uh, that's a good thing. That's a po very positive thing. It's what we what we want to do. The main thing that we want to do is whatever is happening upstream. That when the when the water hits the village line, 
it uh, it moves quickly to the harbor and out. We don't want it uh, ponding and, and and spreading out here uh, or behind all sorts of gunk in the uh, uh, in the um, in the rivers. And I'll just add that uh, the brick funding is out again. Um, one of the projects that I'd like to submit for is a similar study for the Beaver Swamp Brook area. And again, SLR is doing a similar report for the state in that area. So uh, I've had discussions with them about a similar type study. Uh, it would be a little more, uh, uh, a little more work on Beaver Swamp, uh, but that'll be coming up at some point in the next couple of months. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's off for two weeks also. Busy two weeks coming up. Uh, next is the uh, RFP submissions for the order for affordable development on Hunter Tier Lot across the street. We have uh, two responses to the RFP, and I believe <laughs> we have two separate dates where we can where they can present to the board, and we can uh, grill them about what they what they're proposing and and all that. Uh, and, and, and 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 those dates are what? Uh, 15, uh, the, I'm sorry. Fifteen and twenty one. Uh, uh, November fifteenth and November twenty one. Five o'clock. Here. Well, here at five o'clock, and and that is uh, presentations from these folks to the board. Okay. And Zoom. Okay. All right. Great. There's, there one team is presenting one night, and the other team is presenting yeah. the other night. Correct. Yeah. There was a, there was a suggestion, and I had this. Uh, uh, well, the mayor was was suggesting that we do them both in one night, and then when we when Jerry and I talked about it, I, I think it's too much. It's it's too much for us to absorb all that in in, in one sitting, and I, I think, and each one of these pr uh, proposals, it, it, it's an hour. But it's not going to be an hour. We're going to have questions, and one hour is going to become like an hour and forty-five, two hours. So I think, uh, in reality, <laughs> two different presentations <laughs> make sense, and it wouldn't be fair for the person who, for the uh, presenter who goes second, yeah, exactly. to, to, yeah, to 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 you know to come up with a board that is just you know that's head of swimming. And how do we go? We want to keep them them straight. So I think this is a good plan to go forward. And on so this. I can't attend this week. I had said that last week when okay. we, and so I I I. Didn't find out today till it was actually till it was scheduled today. Okay. Last Thursday, it wasn't. Can you so zoom in? I don't think I can. Okay. All right. And, uh, I also cannot attend in person next week, yeah. but I will zoom in. Neither can I, but and I will zoom in. Um, but you know, I'm sure the rest of the board will take notes for those of us who aren't here, and uh, and we have pretty substantial um, um, things from from you know with drawings and stuff, so we could we could also uh, if if there's. Because we got the the proposals and they it came with that spreadsheet of like you know a checkbox list if you want to present if you want your your thoughts yeah, to be I presented then submit them to somebody. Yeah, yeah. Before. Before. I will do that. Okay. And right. also, we have discussed, and I think this is something we really need to do. This is not none of us on the board of trustees is qualified really to be selecting a developer for this kind of a project. The village has did that with the regatta and didn't wasn't entirely. It was a, it was it didn't go as expected, um, and we had talked about working with someone who was going to help us guide these decisions. And I think that's something we really need to do. Because well, none of you us, have in mind. Well, we didn't. You know, we haven't we haven't worked we haven't picked someone to work with. So I think we need to really. This is a very what big. What kind of person would you work with on this? I mean, it's our decision. It's our decision, but I don't. I, I mean, I've only worked on. I've only picked a couple of developers and I, I you know I've done this before it's you need a team of people who really have experience in construction and development and financing these projects and who have expertise in affordable housing I think I think we should make sure we have somebody helping us with this decision all right um uh, well I mean I'll, I'll be on the phone with people asking them about this I mean, I've already been on the phone uh, checking on it but we should work our sources I, as I, trustees I, well uh, Jerry you were saying something yeah Lou um two members um, if you're so inclined, if the board's so inclined, two members from the Romanic Coalition on Affordable Housing mm -hmm. should be maybe included in the discussions, um, as well as our building inspector, who is an architect, mm -hmm. and our planner. And of course, Dan, Dan Sarnoff and I will be included as well. So maybe bringing in someone from the Coalition of Affordable Housing to um, have their perspective could help uh, the board um, decide on on which way you know they're looking to go. And I think that they do have somebody on on the staff for at the coalition that um, has that background specifically with uh, in terms of building and and developing. Oh, that's good. 
I didn't know that. Thanks. Yeah, I didn't know that. And I think if any of the board members have have uh, suggestions for additional mm -hmm. members of that that group, then we just um, invite them. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. So um, we've got that uh, a meeting on Wednesday and a meeting uh, next week. Okay. Got it. And uh, and I'll I'll be zooming in on that meeting on the second meeting. All right. Uh, right along. Okay, good. Just a that you need to, if you're zooming in, yeah. we need to have the information on your location. Was it 72 hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That. We already said, uh, yeah. Sound yes. and I already discussed it. I'll be, I'll, be, uh, I'll be zooming in from the great state of Texas. And I'll be zooming <laughs> in from South Africa. <laughs> South Africa. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Well, we, we had people zooming in from Venezuela for a long time here, so it's all right. Um, uh, so, uh, okay, so 2E now, uh, speed humps on various village streets. Now, this is from the mayor. I did not, let me see if, I didn't think I got it. I asked him if there's anything specific he wanted me to say on this. Um, I did not, I did not hear back from him. So um, I think it's it's self-evident. Is, is anybody up to speed on the speed humps? Well, I mean, so what I attached for the board's information, yeah was uh, guidance from uh, engineering uh, associations about the proper placement of speed humps. Oh, that's it, yeah. And I also included uh, New Rochelle has established a speed hump request process. Mm -hmm. uh, that was provided to me by uh, a member of the Traffic Safety Commission uh, several months ago. So I attached that to show how the program is being implemented in a, a nearby community. And, and I guess the mechanism we could use is people could use that that process to apply for a, a speed hump in the street. Is that how it would work? Well, I mean, I I, 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 I just provide for the board's information. I don't know what direction you want to go in, how you want to uh, look at this. Um, you know, I, I will say that uh, uh, I think uh, New Rochelle Pie is a larger uh, engineering department than we do. Yeah. Uh, so they have staff who can really dive into this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know. I, whatever the board's pleasure is. And, uh, you know, I did include that uh, for the speed humps we had installed on Old Post Road. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was about, we had three of them installed. The total cost was about $15,000. So it's probably about $5,000. Now, do they interfere with the snow plows at all? Yeah. They do. Speed so, humps do or do I thought? So how, uh, well, you know, it's, 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 ra it's a raised portion of the roadway. So how, how, I mean, if, how do the plows deal with a speed hump? I mean, a speed hump, that's, yeah. Why don't, why don't you ask James? He's right there in front of you. I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's like either they don't or very carefully. But uh, James, want to strap in? Yeah, and obviously you can also speak about the cons you know, fire department. We don't want to break any plows. Always the uh, the normal concerns about speed humps from the fire department and public works. Yeah, you have very heavy trucks very sensitive suspensions, and you're going to cause a lot more wear and tear on vehicles that were not designed for that type of terrain. Um, you know, speed humps are effective, um, but I, I do believe, you know, I, and the engineer Gino can speak on it more. Um, right after we finished putting in the speed humps on Old Coast Road, we actually were asked if we could cut them down halfway. I because, they're, because they're too, they're, they're too. The height is is a little aggressive. But when you go with the actual spec and code of the of the speed hump, um, that's that's the height that they're supposed to be to be in there. Um, so they they do they do. Um, you know, you could put all the signs in the world, but when you've been driving the same road every day, yeah, for for twenty years, and you're plowing it at two o'clock in the morning after working twenty six hours, you forget that it's there. Um, could cause damage to the trucks. Um, when you're responding to a fire call in the middle of the night and, you know, it's somebody, you know, possible occupants trapped, you're not thinking about the speed on the medical room. You're thinking about getting to the house. Well, there's so, a downside with every solution to anything. Yeah. Exactly. Um, they, they, like I said, they are effective, but they, they do cause damage to, to our equipment um, in, in the extreme circumstances. I would think that, with that uh, when, when these items come up before the traffic commission, um, that that would be part of the discussion. I mean, the fire department has somebody at the traffic commission. It was. Yeah, yeah, uh, and to 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 express that, and that's something that they would have to consider before they recommend to us whether. I mean, would they have? They would have to recommend to us where they go, or they would be. Uh, 
right? Well, I mean, it, it, I, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think there, there's a process that has to get set first. Um, you know, in general, you, you don't see speed humps on certain types of roads. Yeah. So, for instance, let's take a road, a road like North Barry Avenue. Mm -hmm. We would not recommend putting speed humps on a road that like that because that's a uh, it's a, probably identified as a collector road, which funnels mm -hmm. traffic from residential streets and connects uh, Post Road and Halsted Avenue, which are our arterials that carry heavier amounts of traffic. And that one stop sign on on, on Barry that we put on Barry, I, I think, is working pretty well. That's just me, yeah. but. Um, in in terms, of, but you wouldn't do you, you do you wouldn't do it on a road like that because that's also a primary road for emergency vehicles. Right. Uh, uh, and one that we probably wouldn't do in the short term is a road like uh, Jefferson Avenue uh, between Northbury and Columbus Park mm -hmm. because right now that is the only way that the trucks from uh, you know Columbia Firehouse can get from the firehouse. Uh, to the other side of the tracks on Post Road. So we wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing anything over there. Well, it's kind of hard to get a head of steam up on that. That's kind of twisty turny anyway. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have I have faith in people to figure <laughs> out how to drive fast. And, you know, the, the fact is, is people will drive as fast as they feel comfortable. Um, you know, if you have a wide open road and there's plenty of data to support this, you know, People will drive faster than on a road that's more narrow, as obstacles by making by making people by making it less safe. You actually make it more safe. So a little bit of a counterintuitive. Counterintuitive, but yeah. People have specifically asked to have them on the other side of Jefferson, so to the I guess east of the firehouse. Towards the landway. Mm -hmm. Towards the yeah. Old sack. Yeah. People have talked about, I've talked to several people who talked about how fast people drive on that stretch, which seems like a really bad stretch to drive fast on. Yeah, so, well, I mean, I would say, I would say that um, in the area of Jefferson Avenue, and Barry Avenue, uh, you, you have a, you have a call for, for speed humps because there's a significant amount of construction and road closures going on right now, and you're going and you would be making a, a permanent solution to a temporary problem that in, in time is going to damage you. So <laughs> putting, putting speed humps on Jeff on the dead end end of Jefferson Avenue, mm -hmm. and I say dead end mm -hmm. openly, you know, behind the firehouse, will yeah. it, it's it's too narrow. There's there's no way to go, nowhere to go with a snow plow. It's already hard enough to plow a street like that. Yeah, so it, you're, going it, to, you're going to bury the, the homeowners, bury the cars. Because you can't you can't angle the plow now. When you when, every time you go over a hump like that, you have to straighten the plow out and go over it. Now now the snow can't be directed to one side, and and you're going to delay the, the clearing of the road. As well. yeah. So in, in all fairness, you know, how the per, the perception of how fast people are driving is a lot different from the reality of how fast people are driving. For example, and I shared this with the traffic commission, uh, you know, probably a year ago. Uh, had a resident on Hillside Avenue uh, ask for the installation of speed humps after we opened the new bridge. And I, because we had to take uh, traffic counts prior to designing the project, I, 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 had, I had evidence that showed that the 85th percentile of vehicles was, they were going between 18 and 28 miles per hour. It was, you know, like, you know, there were, so few examples of cars going radically fast, but you know the fact is, is I, I, there is a difference in, in that perception and the reality. Yeah. Um, so one thing that the traffic committee, what we've been trying to stress and really work on, because we had a presentation again um, with Vision Zero, and this is just because I'm thinking holistically, and I'm also thinking long term because if we keep doing these little things here and there, it's not going to. I think it, to your point, it, it doesn't necessarily um, help the village. But if we and to all the points when we are always talking about um, educating the community, that's what Vision Zero does. And if the traffic committee, with the support of the board, can really hone on hone in on education 
around uh, pedestrian safety and using the the uh, uh, some of the uh, measure the, the the measurements that Matt Carmody has has suggested or will suggest in the future, as well as with our 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 um, what's that plan? Okay. Comp plan. Thank you. Along with the comp plan. I think we can change the way that uh, the village looks and how people think and how people are driving because it's not necessarily all these measurements that we're doing. It's literally, um, I'm driving down Mermanic Avenue to even get here and I'm stopping in front of, of uh, uh, the Formula One because the traffic is backed up. But because the traffic is backed up and I could foresee that the light is gonna eventually turn red and there's not that much room in, in front of me, and I don't want to block traffic, about two or three cars go in front of me because they felt like it's an opportunity. And then they end up, and it's, I think it's, it's individuals. Mm -hmm. Everything is individual. We are in this state of individuality and we're not thinking about anybody else when we're driving and when we're doing, and it's just because we're in our own state of rushing and however we want to do things individually. Oh. So to my point, mm -hmm. um, this is something that we as a traffic committee is, is 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 really trying to figure out and work on so i don't know what the if we're going to do the speed humps i don't know and this or how we pr proceed forward but we really have to start thinking long term well i i think um all these individual issues will be dealt with as the speed individual speed humps come up uh uh and and we can discuss the uh those things in detail um, uh, as they have come, but what we're de dealing with here is a procedure for putting them in. Am I correct? Right. Okay. So, so do we are we clear? Do we want to uh, uh, proceed with this and put this on uh, as to whether we want to uh, adopt this program? Well, I guess does Matt Carmody think this is the actual right program for the village? Well, I, I mean, suggest, I think it's, it's you know that's all right, so really no. he, he's provided us suggest yeah, suggestions for placement in the past. Uh, you know, I, I think he, in general, I think uh, traffic engineers are, are kind of have mixed opinions on this. Yeah. Um, you know, to a certain extent, uh, a, a good portion of, tra of traffic engineering is psychological in nature as opposed to physical in nature. Because again, right. you know, like when you, are able to change the perception of the driver, they tend to be more careful. Uh, so it's not necessarily science, it's not necessarily uh, always physical alterations to a roadway. Well, I know we've put speed bumps down. I, I, oh, I speed bumps. humps there. Well, I've seen bumps already, and, and I, I, I prefer, vastly prefer the humps to the bumps. So, um, uh, <laughs> so the, um, uh, I, I think the, the question we have here is we want to um, discuss this. Uh, in two we we're, we're, we want to discuss this in two weeks. So I mean, I, you know, the application is pretty straightforward hmm. and and applicable to more than one community, except for the table that ranks the project ranking system. And I guess the question is: Is this project ranking system that was suited to Rochelle appropriate for the village of Marinette, or does that need to be tweaked? Well, um, I mean, I, I think you'll you'll have requests and. Uh, you know, if we were going to implement a program like this, uh, we would seek probably funding in our general fund budget for something like this, because it's going to be an annual program. I think we'd have to, you know, like rank and prioritize. Yeah, yeah. Four of them a year, and and you know, table one has um, you know the basis for a point basis for point assignment. It like there's one point for every accident reported within the past three years, five points assigned for each good school, each school crossing on the project street. Um, housing density project supports city transportation goals related to bicycles. I think if we're going to adopt a program like this, we have to have a set of criterion that the criteria that apply appropriately to the village of Amerinek not necessarily to the city of Nersha. Yeah, we, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Well, we, we, we can tweak the yes, wheel. Yes, because our meeting is tomorrow. Well, I mean, we already have an agenda, but um, yeah, that. but we will, I will see, I will talk about it, I'll bring it up. Okay, great, that's, that's through. Okay, so so the consensus is that 
Lilani is going to take this to the traffic commission. Yes, I can't promise that that will be at the next for the ready for the next meeting. Okay, fine. I, I don't think this is, is a desperate. Is there? There's no. Is there a time frame on this where the, this turns into a pumpkin or? No. Okay. All right. No. Good. All right. I mean, All right. It's going to be an annual project. We probably want to get it in the next year's budget. Sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's a good idea. Okay, at the traffic commission. Then. There we go. All right, all right. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, 2F, Orient the Bike Path Lighting. And this is from the mayor. Um, is there, I, I'm not familiar with this, so um, uh, help me out where this is. So the mayor asked to uh, put this item on the work session. Um, I asked Jeff to speak to some of his contacts that do lighting because it's that you know, fall under Jeff's purview. And what is attached is not a formal quote in any way. Okay. It was kind of the, you know, how quickly can we get an estimate of what it might cost to do something out there? That, that, that was at 488000 Yeah. Uh, and, but I mean, it, you, it, it wouldn't be my, I wouldn't recommend something like a traditional street. We have street lights yeah. or you know, lampposts that are yeah. you know, 20, 30 feet in the air. If it's for a walking path or a bike path, I would probably recommend uh, a series of lower mm -hmm. uh, in height lights, but more of them. It's not just a bike or walking path. It's a street and cars yeah. drive on it and park on it and it's yeah. traffic is I mean, in, in theory, there should be a lot less it's, traffic. I mean, right, but it's a street that people drive on. Yeah. All right, so um, I mean, I, I, we 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 solicited a estimate. Um, if this is something that the we can look to include this on the capital plan going forward, would have a, with that size, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's there's no other like alter cheaper alternative. Like I just don't. I don't. Well, I mean, in, in all fairness, this this came to us I think a week and a half ago, and just the process of trying to get some of these vendors and we 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 haven't performed the level of due diligence or due diligence that we would normally do had this been something that we've been looking at for several months how much time do you need to, you know get better quotes to to do diligently <laughs> well I mean, we would probably look to uh when we go through the budget process next year uh you know we for every capital budget project uh, we uh, prepare that uh, capital improvement program uh, form. So we would, and we try to provide backup. So in, prior, along with uh, submitting that, we would try to have more precise information as far as quotes. And how long a stretch are we talking about here? I mean, uh... um, I mean, it's not like four or five blocks. Yeah. Really? Four or five blocks? It's, it's about, it's about 2,500 feet. Yeah. From Bleaker almost to the to the curve, it yeah, it's a half mile. Good job. The the cheaper alternative, Manny, is uh, to get everybody flashlights that use the bike path. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cheaper alternative. Okay. Not cheap. All right. Um. So what what do we want to do with this? Uh, um. Uh. Kick kick the can down the road and just talk about it in the capital budget. I, mean, I think it, I just would like to see other like to see. I think it's something I think Steve and Jenna can see the other pricing models that are out there. I don't think it's something for the fun, but I think it's something that would be a capital item if it's gonna be around this three hundred thousand dollar range. All right. Um that's it. So we wanna just uh, uh, put this off to the uh, capital budget. Is that a, the consensus? Everyone, please. Is that a consensus? No, yeah. I mean I think you need to it 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 Again, it has to fit in our criteria. It's a safety issue, mm -hmm. yeah. it, but but and it's a safety issue. So, yeah. but that would be in our. I think we need a ranking system. So. Okay, all right. But but what do you want to do with this one? You want to just put it. it needs to go in the capital budget. Okay, there we go. So this is going to go in the capital budget. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, process for board advocacy for uh, this is a uh, two G. Process report advocacy for flood mitigation funding in the community. This is Trustee Yeiser Reed. So we started the conversation earlier, mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to finish it in terms of where do we stand as a board in terms of addressing um, flood flood issues. Um, 
you were mentioning in terms of uh, a person going to the different municipality meetings to make sure that we are advocating for ourselves um, mm -hmm. because we did send out that um, that resolution earlier this year saying that we are interested parties, but then we, you know, where does it go from there? Are we are we working together? W what are we doing? I would like, I mean, I can give up time to go to extra meetings, but I don't want to just be the only person. Um, um, and I think that this is something that we can all do together. I agree. I'm more than willing. The, the meeting that I went to for the club meditation, I, I, they, I remember they brought it to me and, and I brought it to you and now we're here. And I I, I am more than willing to have that extra meeting. So is this, is this, well, am I, uh, let me put this question up. Okay. Well, I think what Alani's talking about is us going to meetings in other municipalities. So that, it, uh, it could be that because like I went to, um, when the county was having their budget public hearing, I, I went on um, just, you know, I went and I, I represented the village and I stated that we, we would like extra funding, you know, if they so feel fit to put their, um, put money in their, uh, in their budget for, for flood mitigation for our community, as well as other communities. As, and I also advocated for um, that we take a countywide approach to how we are, are um, creating policies. And there should be a mandate for countywide. And, and I mean, if I, we could go up to state, that's fine, but we should at least on countywide have a blanket of policies that would say, you know, how your, how your building affects our building. And are, is there stormwater management um, policies in every, does every community have one? And so, there should be, I mean, that's, those are the things I was advocating for, but I took it upon myself to go to those meetings. What are we doing together as a board? Because if this is, is, I mean, I did it because I know I'm the liaison, but I think there should be more that we do as a board. Go ahead, go ahead, man. I'd like to add that as well. Like I did also attend a, a county meeting when we made a we made a request um, oh, yeah, we for funding. So we I, I mean, we attended together because I do I, as we all are aware, flooding is a huge priority. I'm also looking. I mean, in terms of like other stormwater uh, codes that are within other our neighbor municipalities, I also have been trying to compile and understand that data to see what their what our neighboring municipalities is even as strong as ours. Or weaker than ours because I think we need to push on them to kind of upgrade their codes as well. I'm also trying to um, revamp and restart the Lis Liswick. So I know I'm trying to begin to begin doing that process because I think it's really important that we Liswick can explain that what that is. I, I don't I mean, know. I, 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 I can explain Liswick. It was yeah. no, no, I just want to do that. Yeah. I don't want I, I, I hate the use of acronyms. Yeah. I, I just it's just so long. So I think yeah. we agree that and to basically push on our neighboring communities to kind of come to the table and us all kind of meet together to understand you know both managing our stormwater and work together to apply for grants together so that we sure. can do that you know have an intermissible municipal agreement that we can you know work together to strengthen you know all, all of our communities i think if we're i think it's really the power numbers i think if we can all come together i think it'll be a lot easier for us to kind of get more fun to get more funding okay. to be i mean is, is this something we should bring up in that meeting with the with femac uh, those meetings with femac this is a, a... yeah i mean it, well i mean this, this the suggestion of a class right is Everything old is new again. Yeah. Um, so Liswick was a group of municipalities in what was then known as the Lower Long Island Sound Drainage Basin. I think the county has changed the name, but it was uh, at Liswick Long Island Sound Watershed in a municipal council. And it was a group of you know, 12 and then uh, 14 mm -hmm. municipalities. Uh, we uh, The original intent was really more focused on water quality. Uh, and uh, there were uh, intermunicipal grants that were sought in the late 90s, early 2000s uh, to produce educational materials. Uh, and then kind of the next major step was uh, we had worked on a grant to try and establish a regional stormwater management district. Um, I've sent, I think I've sent emails to the board about it. Uh, I, I can redistribute that email, but it's kind of going over what the process was, what we we're trying to accomplish, because I could probably speak for an hour on that, and I don't want to you have an agenda to go through. Okay, then we're going to finish it. But no, that, I, I just know like that is one of my kind of priorities to try to figure out that piece. And, and I know, like like I said before, I, I attended county meetings to kind of when we have requested funding to kind of help and push our legislators to, you know, release some funding to us. Well, right. again, yeah. I guess we can push it to the FEMAC, but mm -hmm. also what are we willing to do? 
we can push it to that meeting, but I also would like to know what are we all willing to do? Well, all of us, yeah, but, 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 but. I mean, yes, come on, I want us to come five up people, with people, but, but FEMAC is also a group of volunteers that yes. we can request them to uh, Yes, step but up then, then, there, then there's this, 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 this procedure of like, when, then when we have to all advocate for, or when we have to advocate for, uh, to our 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 local, our I mean our county and and state uh, or even federal um, legislators, who's doing it? How is it being done? Mm -hmm. And you know, is there a process to it? Because I'm not. I don't. Do we? Do you know the process? No. Do you know the process? Anybody know the process? Or are we just all just sitting there, just emailing and 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 not even talking to each other about what we're emailing and what are we finding? What are, what answers are we getting? So that's, I just want to streamline process so that we all know what we're doing and we all know that we're advocating for the same thing and that we're not just all over the place because that's what we're, we're, we don't have that. Yeah. And if we want to talk about procedures and we want to talk about policy, that's something that we're not doing. And that's why we're all over the place. Well, I, I, all right. I that's my, it. that was my purpose of bringing this up. Okay. I, what I, are we willing to do? All right. So, um. So what do we want to do? So your proposal? <laughs> I can propose to put this when we when we talk to the FEMAC, you know, we're asking them to come up with a uh, um, okay. with a, a a list. We should have a list of what we're gonna do. Okay. And so if we as a I'm, board, if we as a board, if we can um email or something, uh, uh something that we're willing to do and that we could bring it up again, whether at the 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 uh the the designated FEMAC mm -hmm. uh, uh meeting or with each other, but I think we, that's what we should do. And and we can divide it up. Where where one of us is is uh is charged with monitoring what's happening in Harrison. One of us is charged with mo yep. monitoring what's happening in, in Rye. One of us is charged in what's happening in 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 White Plains. So we can keep each other. We can divide the um the tasks and have assignments. Otherwise, it's like a third grade soccer team team where everybody runs to the ball you know so um we need to we need to be coordinated all right so so when is your next meeting sorry 28th. The 28th yeah okay. um and back to liz with i know that they have they've been in the process of reorganizing and and bob had looked at their organizing papers because you had a concern about whether it committed us to some funding and that was something i don't know if you've been able to track that down well it, it hasn't come up since we discussed that, what's it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the funding model that was in place uh, when it was active, it was just, uh, it was an, an annual membership fee, I think it was six something, yeah. $600. Bob, yeah. the authority, had the authority to commit. No, 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 it didn't. The, um, when it came to the grants, um, there was a lead municipality. For instance, with the, uh, that grant that produced the educational materials, I think it was either the village of Mamaroneck or the town of Mamaroneck. Uh, and then for the stormwater management district, it was the village of Scarsdale. That was the lead agency. So they, they were paying the bills. So that, that may have been the practice, but the organizational documents authorized oh. certain your authority for the spending. Oh. That I thought you would be concerned with. But I can go put it on the agenda. Next time let's, we'll let's, look at it again. So let's follow up and see how far they have gotten in their reorganizing. And I, I will, I, I'll promise to do that. I know. I know. Council well, Parker brought this up. That's the last time I heard about it, uh, at right, the big, yes. uh, the big uh, ACE meeting. All right. So, so I'm putting that on my list. Too. You know, but, uh, I, I can follow because I was um, the person who was uh, working on it was uh, John Filiberti. Mm -hmm. um, oh, uh, Catherine sure. Parker's office. Yeah, yeah. So I, I can, I can call. Oh, you. great, great. All right. Well, all right. I mean, I, I know I also spoke to the, the person, one of the persons who were last, I guess. Um, the, the main coordinators of Liswick um, from the Rochelle. He's in their, um, uh, I can't remember what department he's in. And I spoke to him and he said it is a hard task to get that started. And it's not about people not wanting to, but it's about the time and the commitment. But, you know, we have to start somewhere. And, and no one's going to be as focused on this as we are. I mean, we're, we're ground zero for flooding. So um, uh, uh, they're not going to, they're not going to take it as seriously as, as us. And we're, we, we're going to have to, we got to do, we got to, <clears throat> I'm willing to do to take those steps. Like I, that's... yeah, you 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 saying something, uh, Jerry? No, I'm sorry, I had to clear my throat. Okay, great. <laughs> Wasn't an editorial comment. It was not. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, uh, so that's I don't know what what what, what that is. Uh, we'll we'll wait, wait for Bob to um, talk about see for, if there's any fees okay. for Lizwick and okay. and um then but we Nora said that she was going to follow up on. Got it. Part thank of you, Nora. Is Nora or, or is, uh, Dan? 
Nor, I think Nora and Dan can both, both uh, good. We can cooperate. Yeah. Nora can talk to Catherine, Dan can talk to John. It'll be great. Um, uh, uh, 2H, uh, tenant protection. Uh, that's again, yeah, I said, you know, very, uh, very prolific here. Yeah. Okay, we got emergency shelter and rent regulations. Um, uh, so the purpose of, do you mind if I just jump into this time? No, um, please. The purpose of me bringing this up is because during Ophelia and during all of our other floods, we know that there are some people living in basement apartments and um, what was discovered or has been discovered and also seeing past emails because this is not something that I'm just bringing up. This is something that was brought up in 20, I don't know, when was, where's that email? 20, 2021, 2021. Predating me. <laughs> yes. So I don't know where you guys left off with it, but I think this is something important, especially those individuals who were on that committee. Um, I think Chief DeRuza was stated was on that committee. Um, uh, Jerry, the, uh, the village manager, um, the building inspector, um, there was a lot of people and they all in, you know, said that this is something that we need to establish. So where did we leave off as, where did the board leave off and where can we go? Because people need protection. So I, I looked at back minutes and I got back as far as April, 2022, mm -hmm. so a little over a year ago. And um, we had a law that Jerry had proposed or mm -hmm. brought to our attention from New Jersey. Bob wasn't sure that we could actually do what we wanted to do. And it was gonna go back to the committee and that was April 11th, 2022. And I didn't find it on our agenda after that. Mm -hmm. My my recommendation at the time was that we model what we uh, what you want to do if you want to pursue this uh, what the town of Southampton was done mm -hmm. because their law had been tested in a federal lawsuit and found to be constitutionally valid. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this is a related thing, but there have been um, recent litigation about regular Airbnbs. I don't know if that's something you're no. interested in doing. No. Okay. No, okay. I'm st strictly for tenants who are renting in this community. Okay. So you want me to dredge up and that law very back? Please, please, please dredge up. That's not the right phrase. Right away. Thank you very much. And uh, and and I'll, I'll also, I mean, I know the I know Jerry has been doing some things under his own authority in this uh, in this area, not with registration, obviously, but with emergency shelter and with helping folks who need help. And uh, mm -hmm. perhaps uh, um, uh, since you you'll uh, lose your services at some point, the um, uh, you can you can write down what you've been doing and maybe we can codify those uh, into a village policy. Uh, sure. Stick with that, right. What do you think? Absolutely. About yes. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, I. I'm happy with what you've been doing. I mean, I, but I, I don't know. I don't know how everybody else feels about it. But I think I think we need to go on record and say that the village supports this policy, and this is our policy. Uh, and so, it, when it happens again, we can we can uh, we can act with authority. You know, the the next village manager can act with with um, with our authority. Right? I would be I would be very happy to do that. That would be fantastic, especially since um, we know people are in need, and we know that our um, our process is working it's not free but at least our residents are protected uh, from the issues and problems that they could be facing uh, living in substandard and worse housing it was there was a yeah. couple of instances or at least one instance recently where we we had to put some folks up because of a uh, of a dangerous situation i don't want to belabor mm -hmm. that now but but uh but that's what we should be doing i think but maybe not everybody agrees we no can... i agree that's why I brought it up. All right, all right. Uh, so um, thank you, thank you. So where are we with that now? Request to allow. Are you talking about where we? You, Bob has said he's going to dredge Bob, up. I got it. Got it. the dredging. I got it. <laughs> now we have the request. To We're all into dredging. Okay. Uh, two two I requests again. You a request to allow daycare as a permissible use in C one uh, zoning district. Uh, we got. Oh, we have a um uh, a request from uh. From somebody who uh, who wants us, who has, is a good neighbor and and, and wants to uh, yes, ask Ms. Me, Ms. Ivy would like to present as she's been requesting this is something that she will explain um, in terms of what she wants to do uh, with the daycare kids corner. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Ivy. 
so much. Please speak up. Can yes. you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak tonight. Right. Um, as one of the trustees just said, I've been trying for two years <laughs> to get one of my daycares. I am the owner and operator of Kids Club in America. Mm -hmm. I've been in the village since 2007. Mm -hmm. I've been cleaning with these stores. <laughs> um, we have two locations. Um, and one of the things that I've been trying to do is move the location at the beginning of 703 World. The front of the Valley World, that kind of world. For mm -hmm. a lot of personal reasons. But one of the bigger reasons um, since COVID, and even kind of before COVID, but mostly after COVID, is that we have outgrown that space. Um, we, uh, we have a waiting list of two years. We can't take kids, and we have people coming in all, all the time. One of the issues that I, I was running into was that even though I'm in a commercial zone and most of the daycare centers in the village of America are in commercial zones, the law does not permit daycare in commercial zones. Mm. It permits it in uh, residential areas with a special permit, which doesn't make sense. Okay. They never did to me, but you know they have the reasons for that. And as an applicant, Trying to find a residential property that would meet the special permit requirements for childcare, that's almost impossible because the parking alone, having to have enough parking for employees and for, for successful pickup and drop off mm -hmm. um, is impossible in a residential zone. Even if you could find a property that could accommodate this, now we're talking about painting. A lot of the topography of the property, right? So you have to keep stuff and people are like, oh, we're running up onto my property. Mm -hmm. They're doing all these kinds of changes. Um, when I came to Ameriknek and I'm, I'm, I bought a residential neighborhood, if you ever Google, I'm in the New York Times, um, <laughs> with residents complaining about traffic, which is a whole other issue. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I agree, a lot of people don't want, it didn't happen. We ended up knowing that term right on. Bunch of uh, Barry Avenue, mm -hmm. but people don't want the traffic in their residential neighborhoods mm -hmm. where people are trying to get from daycare to daycare or whatever it may be. So, um, in New York State, since COVID, uh, we have created a lot of daycare residents. A lot of childcare facilities have closed. Uh, and New York State, within the last six uh, May 2022, uh, provided a lot of initiatives and grants. I'm a bit of, I'm, I have benefited from many of those grants um, to try to keep childcare facilities open, to try to get childcare facilities to expand, to try to get childcare facilities to be open um, in places where they consider most of New York is a desert at some level. Mm -hmm. And so I would like the board to just consider, you know, thinking about having commercial daycare, which New York State defines commercial daycare separately from residential daycare. Residential daycare does not require special permits. Mm -hmm. It's only you can have up to 12 kids um, all day and then additional four kids. Uh, yeah, somebody kids. bringing people somebody into their home. Into their home. Yeah, the state yeah. allows that. You don't have to get permission to go through the state process. Mm -hmm. But the state does its commercial daycare with a lot of different things. We mm -hmm. have to be fire coach. We have to be safety coach. Sure. It's almost impossible to do that in a residential zone. And so I don't know. How to really solve that problem? I appreciate the board for just hearing me out, um, and, but I would think that if it's a commercial program, it should be either in a commercial zone mm -hmm. or a business zone. I have daycare centers in other municipalities, and they're all in commercial business. Okay, uh, is, is Mama's Kids one of yours? No, no. Okay, all right. Nana's Nana's Kids, yeah, yeah. Kid for me, but she, you know, she she also in a kind of mixed use kind of situation in yeah. the commercial area. Unfortunately, she gets some of the flooding. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. don't. Delightful neighbor. It's just, yeah. I mean, kids. I mean, it's kids. Kids, you can't. <laughs> you know, I think that if you're a working parent and you have tried to seek childcare in yeah. Westchester County, you have run into some real problems. Yeah. It, it, and it just makes you smile to see all those kids. Yeah. Yourself, mm -hmm. You know, it was just nursery schools and the kids half the day and nanny. We have two working parents now. Yeah. Um, uh, this seems to be another one of those things where our code doesn't reflect reality. Yeah. yeah so, Lou, um, yeah. Uh, Greg, who's coming on now, I just texted him, is coming on now. 
uh, he'll be able to explain a little bit about uh, some of the uh, research that he's done because we've we've spoken to Dr. Ivy um, together and Greg was able to come up with some suggestions. Uh, I think he's on now. Greg, can you hear us? Yes, hi. Hi. Hi, so, so I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dan, you want me, Greg. Uh, sure, so um, one of the things that, that's come up uh, time and time again, uh, just, you know, in my duties as the as the planner uh, is is request for certain types of uses within the C1 zone, uh, not just, uh, you know, daycares in, in general, uh, but also veterinary offices and doggy daycare. Mm -hmm. uh, so those those three uses were outlined in a section of the uh, zoning issues memo that was prepared in, I think it was May of, of this year. And so they're a little bit further down the list. They're they're couched within um, modernizing land use definitions, but it also relates to allowing those types of uses in uh, the C1 and or also within the M1 zone, um, specifically doggy daycare within the M1 zone, um, as that was a, a recommendation of the industrial plan. Well, this is fun. Do dogs and kids, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, and, and and just from like a a, a general perspective, um, daycare, and I know this just from also from personal experience, but but we know this just from the general trends, you know, both regionally and nationally, is that there is a dearth of of daycare providers, and there is a a, a huge need um, among young families to to find daycare centers. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very, very difficult for those families. It's, you know, it's uh, a, a societal need and there are very few places that you could put that type of use within the village of Mernick. Um And if you do want to put it uh, within the village of Mernick, it has to be within a single family district through like a home daycare uh, option. And that does require a special permit. Yeah. And I could see where that would generate, uh, um, uh, you know, local resistance oh, yeah. sure yeah oh yeah yeah i mean it, it just seems like it's like it's a it's a it's a it's a easier lift in a commercial district mm -hmm. yep yeah so, so my my recommendation um to ivy and, and to others who have requested certain types of uses um would was to you know bring this to the attention of the board one and then two kind of look at um a couple uses uh holistically uh within the c1 zone and this also kind of dovetails with the report that we're expecting to present to the board uh at the december meeting um regarding economic development yep. uh, so, so we, we do have that couched within there as well so it's, so it's included in the in that in that uh in that economic development report it is yeah. Okay, well, great. Well, then, then, then that—that's the issue. I mean, we. Um, there's, uh, we'll just keep in mind. We that hear you to advocate for her during that time. Yeah. Did you think about the zoning law? Really take a look at you know, the state office of the zoning regulation. Uh huh. Back up, right? You need to be, you know, being able. It's like I have to meet the standards of the village, which don't necessarily meet the standards of the state, and it just becomes complicated. Right. And and I'm I'm just well when she said that there were all these places in a place where they're not allowed, it just it just reminds me that we have a lot of stuff in our in our code that just doesn't just doesn't compute. Yeah, and this the same goes for veterinary offices. Uh, all of them are currently within the C1 zone, yet it's not permitted in the C1 zone. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, can we fix that, Bob? <laughs> Okay, great. Uh, so, so we'll bring that up with with, with that thing. Uh, so that that'll come to us. Uh, we don't really need to do anything, right? I mean, and we'll discuss it one. It'll 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 come to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks, Thanks, Dr. Ivy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, so there's still people in the um in uh in the virtual world who still cannot hear um the and I'm not sure what that is and what's the hiccup. Is it? Uh, is are they it listening the on LMC or are they listening on? Uh, yeah, on... Li oh, it's LMC. It's LMC. What? Yeah. No audio. No audio. I, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I just pulled this off. 
Okay. Yeah. It's being recorded. All right. Thank you. I'm. I'm. I. So we. Have Jimmy it could be here, but I, we apologize. What are you pointing out, Mr. Stark? Oh, okay. Um. Thank you. No, that, that no, that was just me. I hadn't I hadn't moved the mouse. So whenever you put had the mouse over someone's name. Okay. Sorry. That All right. Was, that was that was me. Okay. All right. All right. There was no. User. So there was no hands raised. User error. Okay. No. All right. Okay, All so right. No thank you. All right. Um. Uh. All right. But just we sorry that we can't that they're having technical issues. That's beyond us. back on. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. That's great. Awesome. Welcome thank back. You. We're sorry about the audio problems. Yeah, All right. Uh, continuing on here, we've got uh, uh, items for tonight's regular meeting. A per uh, three A purchase of twenty. Firefighter emergency escape systems. Um, uh, we we're good with moving that out. Yeah. It's already on. It's already on. Okay, great. Right. Well, I mean, it's on, it's on, but why is it here then? Because we you have to ask. Ask to, we haven't discussed it at work session. Okay. So, what do anybody want to say anything about it? Yeah, it should be discussed. James can come up, or Dan can talk about it if you want. But uh, okay. it should be discussed real yeah. quick. Okay. Excuse me, the fire chief. I'm not okay. Good. Our not fire chief. not the fire chief, not yet. <laughs> chief? Uh, how are you? Okay. Um, so the, the emergency bailout uh, systems were implemented um, back in 2010 by Chief Betcha. Um, they were mandated through New York State over the past 13 years. Um, we, we have over 100 volunteers that are trained in the person escape systems. Um, but just like our gear, uh, they're mandated to be replaced every 10 years. Um, well, five years if they're used and 10 years if they have not been used mm -hmm. in an emergency situation. So um, the fact is, is we, we set it up in the in the capital plan to replace a certain amount every year so mm -hmm. that they didn't have to spend $100,000 to replace them all in one shot mm -hmm. and have them all expire again in one shot. Right. Um, so... Last year we started with the first purchase of them. This will be another purchase. Okay. Uh, so it is on the, the capital plan that was put out put forward by Chief Costa. Um, and we're just looking to replace 20 of them this year um, and, and move forward with the, the proper replacement of them so that nobody gets hurt. That's right. So that, that, thank you, Chief. Uh, I, I can't imagine a higher priority. It's based on our property. Yeah, so that it's not it's not one lump sum. Thank you. It's, it doesn't do us any good to have to have to replace no. them every time, all of them every time. No. Right, thank you. Thank you very much, thank Chief. You. We appreciate L it. Lou, Lou, he has to stay up there. He has to stay oh, up there. Okay, great. Who's next? Okay. Uh, um, increased previously adopted funding authorization for the purchase of a 75 yard. Oh, well, is, there, is that something else on there? No, let's go down to, the, to D then. I will take it out of order. Purchase oh. of water rescue. Gear and equipment. What's uh, what's that about you? So the water rescue um, equipment um, after Ida and for the year following that, there was a significant amount of rescue and preparedness equipment purchased. Mm -hmm. So obviously, like everywhere else in the village, the fire department has a space issue. Mm -hmm. no equipment. So a lot of equipment um, was the purchase of it was being hit off because there was nowhere to keep it. Mm -hmm. um, with the fact that we got hit with a, a second but less devastating flood, um, I was authorized or I was ordered to go out and purchase the remaining equipment that had not been purchased yet. Mm -hmm. um, and the funds that were put away uh, to, to make those purchases have fallen short. So in order to, to get the remainder of the water rescue equipment, um, we're requesting that the the uh, purchase order be authorized for the, for the water rescue equipment. And how much is that? Well, I think it was, it was sixty-one thousand. I think you asked for a ten percent contingency. Yeah, there's so, so it'd be like sixty-seven or sixty-eight. The reason right? that this particular equipment has not been purchased yet is because it's all um, emergency responder specific. So every person needs their set of uh, water rescue suit fitted to them. It has to be a certain size. So that the price of the equipment can can fluctuate based on what size the responder is, um, but this is the last step in uh, hopefully the last step in, in outfitting our members with exactly what they need. Anything that was non-person specific has already been purchased. This is the this is this is the remainder of the equipment. It's Not a custom size suit. 
It's a custom size suit for each trained uh, water rescue individual. And not everybody's trained. You have in, you, so there's a group that's trained, so it's not the whole department. We so. have we have uh, we have twelve members trained in um, surface water rescue, um, and we have uh, also of course on a scheduled uh, joint course with the police department. Um, we are going to get approximately another 15 members uh, certified by April. So we, we do need the equipment to, to even take the course you need to be taking us in. Right. Well, mm -hmm. we, we, we all want to get saved if, if we need it. So I, I think uh, I think that won't be a problem. Uh, so that's for tonight. Here's more. Okay. Uh, uh, um, is there anything else here from the fire department? I'm trying no, to. No, here's the DPW. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're here for DPW too. All right. Uh, increasing previously adopted funding authorization for the purchase of the 75 yard compactor trailer. Uh, that now you're changing hats, right? Okay. I, I only wore one sweatshirt. <laughs> um, the, uh, the purchase of a trailer, a uh, reference trailer, was uh, approved back in uh, May or June, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we piggybacked the county trailer, um, the county spec for the trailer, and pricing uh, because. It fits our facility. We have this, the same style compact there. And everything. Um, I over, I, it was an oversight that all of the county trailers are painted a single color. So the color option in the trailer is not, it's not in the quote. Um, and our village trailers are all and are, are orange. Um, it just, it helps the county differentiate um, who's coming over their scales. And um, it also identifies the material that's being brought. So our, our trailers need to be orange, and that's why we're asking for the, uh, the extra. Okay. The, 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 the color is that big a deal? It, unfortunately, it is. Um, when you there's there's a lot of union issues when it goes on. We've borrowed county trailers, and, mm -hmm. and when you're going over certain scales and onto their properties, they mm -hmm. don't like it very much. So it, it helps differentiate with with us and what materials are in the trailers. It also helps us um, to to know what needs to be moved and what doesn't based on what we have. In there, so. Okay. All right. So that's, that's on for tonight. Thank you. And, uh, all right. Thank you very much. Wait, wait, here's a, what? He's change order for generator platform. He's item C2. C. Oh, for God's sake. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad somebody, I'm glad. I, don't know how to I think, I think Gino may assist in that one. All right. Uh, C is change order for generator platform project at DPW. All right. What's that about? I, so I, um, we had, uh, as most of you know, we had a, a catastrophic failure of the transfer station electrical system back in April. Uh, we've um, we had a um, we had to basically put new underground power to the transfer station. Uh, so that our material can be picked up and dealt with as it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And um, in doing that, um, we realized that there was no generator power for the building. So we ran the building on a backup generator while we had no power for almost five and a half months. Um, we had requested money up front or put away so that we could continue this project and make sure that the building had a fail safe. But by renting the generator for as long as we had to rent it, the majority of those funds were, were subsequently eaten up. Um, in order to finalize the project, um, we need to put the generator, install the generator onto the building, mm -hmm. but we need to elevate it above, uh, according to code, um, above the flood. Yeah. So simply installing it next to the old generator is not only against our code, but it would be pretty stupid. Yeah. Because it flooded there, the, that generator had to be pumped out and re basically serviced and rebuilt during that. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're we're we have a, a proposal to build a platform that will be much higher than uh the flood code, the flood code, so that we can actually service it properly rather than have a mechanic climb a 12 foot ladder to okay. work. So, that's that's what the funding is, is being requested for. Is that it's mm -hmm. platforms, uh necessary and, and that's how much yeah i think uh, when i discussed this with james last week and correct me if i'm wrong uh part of the design had to be revised based on direction from con ed so going through the process of redesigning that also led to additional months of us having to rent the generator so 
that's part of the, that also, that's why they're kind of into the cost. How much should we spend on that uh, rented generator? Just not that we can do anything about it, but it just, yeah. Uh, 60, 70,000. Right. Okay. Right. It's, 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 it's a public health issue. I mean, there was just no option. No. Uh, thank you, Jim. Okay. All right. Um, uh, E3, E, purchase of three patrol vehicles for the police department, Chief. <laughs> the other chief. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, cool. Good evening. So uh, to you said uh, that's the other micro. There you go. Hello? Yeah. Um, in, our, in order to maintain our fleet, we look to vehicles each year. Our vehicles, our mainline vehicles are used 24 7. And then as new vehicles come in, the other vehicles come off the main line. They use the secondary vehicles. And then when those vehicles are no longer in use, we decommission them and then we put them up for all. Uh, this is a, a process that we do every year, but it has to be on the agenda. So, and, and the yeah. funding is in the general fund. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right. Uh, oh, this is this is a <laughs> all right. Uh, 3F, the Waverly Avenue Bridge Project. Jerry. Uh, so I have been um, unable to discuss or negotiate uh, anything that has to do with the Waverly Avenue Bridge. And I do want to advise the board that at some point the town did threaten a lawsuit. So I would be very careful about what I say, um, but anybody can say whatever they want, of course. Um, but there is an agreement that is being worked on by the attorneys to be able to close the Waverly Avenue Bridge and provide the proper police at the corners of the um, Mamaronic Avenue and Hoyt and um, Fenimore and Hoyt for a period of time. Uh, so I, I think I, Mr. Spolzino, I think Mr. Spolzino was finalizing that agreement earlier today. And and uh, is it is it happening? Is it done? Uh, All right. Uh, Mayor, and I, along with Mr. Sarnoff, uh, Chief DeRuza, no, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Trujillo, um, and uh, Mr. Barney, and uh, Mr. Travisil met with the town last Monday afternoon mm -hmm. and reached uh, a tentative agreement to present for your approval that had to be drafted. It's the content, but it has to be drafted. I received the draft on Friday afternoon from Mr. Baker, the attorney for the town. Uh, I was not able to review it Friday afternoon. I did review it and, and uh, suggest my revisions on Sunday in the version which I sent to uh, the members of the staff who were there and the, uh, the board. Uh, asking for comments by noon today, I received two comments from Mr. Sarnoff and Chief Kimberza. Uh, I was not able to set through through other commitments to put them into an agreement, in, into my version of the agreement, mm -hmm. which will then have to go back to uh, the town for its review and then ultimately come to you for your Approval. Mm -hmm. I, um, if the board has had legal questions about what's going on, I thought that would be an opportunity to do an advice council session mm -hmm. if you want to do that. Uh, I can, if you want, explain in broad strokes what the agreement is. Okay. Uh, so the agreement is that the, um, uh, the town will pay for two police officers. Mm -hmm. uh, at the intersections of Delaware and Hoyt, and Hoyt and Delaware. Our police officers. Our police officers yeah. at a rate that's been, that has tentatively been agreed upon mm -hmm. for, um, I think, a total amount of a little over $100,000, which is roughly 68. 60, 60 working days is what I saw. Working days. Yeah. Yeah. The working days in the days when right. they Days when, not, not weekdays, and not weekends, not school holidays, not Christmas holidays, et cetera. Three months. Yeah, roughly. All right. Roughly. But there's also a process by which the town will hire an engineer, the traffic engineers at the village and the town will use 
to see if there are any uh, opportunities to uh, make the to improve the intersections to make them safer mm -hmm. you know, physically or light timing, the timing of lights that sort of thing uh, is there agreement on how that would be paid for uh, and then there's a, a built-in testing process so that if it turns out that the um, police protection can be removed sooner because these uh, these uh, traffic improvements are working. Uh, that would happen okay. based on objective criteria defined by the engineer, mm -hmm. uh, by the, the traffic engineers and acceptable to both the village engineer and the town engineer. That's the, the broad strokes of, of what the what we're, what we're talking about. Okay. Um, all right. I, I think we can discuss that. Uh, uh, we might have some questions in executive session. The one question that's on everybody's mind, and I've got a lot, is why wasn't this done before uh, they began? I mean, they were supposed to start this in June, and they, they kept pushing it back uh, J July, July, August, September, October. I mean, so so it's like like three three plus months they were late, and then they start, and then and then we find out that they haven't, that there's not an agreement for traffic control. How did, how in the world did that happen? I don't know the answer to that on my personal knowledge. I've heard that there were discussions about this issue for a period of time, uh, but beyond that, I, I do not know. I mean, uh, is this uh, is this something that we normally get in advance of a contractor working in the village? Uh, uh, Jerry, Dan, uh, I mean. So, so typically, Lou, a contractor will include traffic control in their contract. We didn't learn that the contract did not have traffic control in it until I spoke personally to the contractor. The discussions that staff had had with the town and the town engineer were all about traffic control for the intersections and how to mitigate traffic. And when I spoke to the contractor that, was, that received the award, they said, Jerry, we have $150,000 here, but we were not permitted to put it into the contract. And that's exactly what happened. Shouldn't we have, well, I, I guess it should. I guess I just, we probably should have caught this sooner. Yes, no? We couldn't, we wouldn't know that it wasn't in the contract because the town awarded the contract. Right. And this is the town we're talking about here. We've never had to create an agreement with the town We've done a lot of things with the town. We've done we've purchased equipment with the town. We share equipment with the town. We also provide services to the town and they're supposed to provide services to us. But it seems like in the past year or so, all those services that they used to provide us, they no longer do. And they basically don't tell us what's going on. All right. Um, OK. Um, uh, well, as, as you know, a lot of people weren't happy about it, uh, but we uh, and, and I'm not happy and I don't think anybody's happy with how this went down. Mm -hmm. But I certainly uh, was not. The crisis for us would have been that traffic <laughs> and and not not a traffic control, because it was when it for the first couple of days it was closed, it was a nightmare. So um, I um, I have to say I'm, I'm glad we we uh, stepped in and uh, and didn't just uh, accept the bill, you know, and uh, and and uh, and decide that we were going to just uh, pay whatever it took. So I appreciate it. All right, that's it. Um, uh, so uh, that's that was that's basically a report, right? So, yeah. Seven thirty. In terms of this contract, since the board of trustees is meeting Wednesday and then um, Monday and then again Tuesday, do mm -hmm. you want us to try and approve it one of those days to get? Like, does this con does the contract have to be approved for any of the for the bridge to reopen? Yes. So, if you need to add it to any of those agendas. I think what I need to do is uh, finalize my revisions, get it back to the town. I mean, how long will it take for them to get it back to us? Uh, but as soon as it's available, especially since you have so many meetings coming, yeah, there's up, more opportunity. I'll get, it, I'll get it before you. Okay. All right. So um, uh, that brings us to the end of the. Uh, uh, we have. Uh, all right. We have uh, executive session uh, items coming up. Um, uh, in the matter of uh, Goldstein versus uh, the village of Maranek, it is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1D of the New York State Public Officers Law to discuss matters of current litigation. Can I do these all at once? 
Okay, all right. Um, uh, in addition, uh, in McCrory versus Tigert versus the Village of Mamaroneck Planning Board, Carolina Fonseca, Ian Sigalo, and Jessica, Jessica Sigalo, it is anticipated that a motion will be offered in to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1D of the New York State Public Officers Law to discuss matters of current litigation. Uh, and uh, in addition, C, Village Manager Terms of Employment. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1C of the New York State Public Officers Law to discuss the medical financial credit or employment history of a particular person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. Do I have a motion? needs to be more specific because it's not a catch-all like there's like what what whichever reason we're going in and also i would add that uh, based on past practice um mayor torres be added to um to uh, mayor yeah, electoris be asked to attend the executive session is it, is it uh it, it, it's proper to invite the mayor elect in the board to determine who they want to invite into executive okay I, I would i would say that we we can invite the mayor elect in Yes. I um in also keeping in mind what Jerry emailed us in yeah. terms of um not things that he wanted to discuss. There's things that in terms of I, I personally don't have a problem either way, yeah. but I'm just saying keeping in mind mm -hmm. that uh the village ma manager did say that he didn't feel comfortable in regards to um not being under oath and information um getting out based on what he wants to say so that i'm just saying keep in mind of that that was on the that was that was okay uh, is that so, that's the case jerry would you uh do you have a, a problem with a uh, an uh, uh our inviting um, mayor um, i think i think sharon's a great person but i'm very concerned about the confidentiality and um you know she's not sworn yet she will be soon on december 4th and i think at that point once you swear on an oath um there's more protection against anything being leaked out Okay, so I, I would say that we can invite the, the, the mayor elect in, in for the first two items and then uh, discuss the third item uh, uh, as That's a good uh, idea. Sitting That's board. a good idea. What, what do you think? That's There's no expectation. Uh, we're not required to be confidential in executive session. I mean, you know, I, I think that that's, that's not a valid statement. I mean, that, maybe maybe, you know, maybe that was missed. My misunderstanding was that uh, what happens in executive session should not be discussed out out in the public. I think you have to use your- Maybe research. I was wrong. But the, but the open meetings law, I mean, there's opinions about that. You know, since a public body may choose to conduct an executive session or discuss an issue in public information expressed during executive session is not quote unquote confidential. To be confidential, a statute must prohibit disclosure and leave no discretion to an agency or official. So I think you have to, you know- it, it, So you don't have to be confidential and executive, that's fine. Then I have then I have no problem. Then I have no problem. Okay. Right. If if the if the items in executive session can be released to anyone, then I have no problem discussing anything. All right. All right. Good. All right. Uh, so uh, is that, Bob, is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Great. We're all on the same page. It's all it's all wonderful. It's wonderful. All right. So a um, uh, motion to go into executive session, please. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor. All right. All right. We'll, we'll leave uh, the uh, work session open in case we're we... going out into the other room because yeah. is the other room set up for yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We'll leave the executive yeah. session open in case we've got to add. Uh, here, um, motion to end executive session. So yep. moved. So moved. Second, please. All right. All in favor. Aye. All right, we just came out of executive session. Um, no votes were taken. So uh, that's that. Um, uh, we are still in uh, work session. Uh, is there somebody wanted to add something yeah. to the agenda? There's something to the agenda that was that was removed. And um, it is, so I want to make a motion to add something okay. to the agenda. Okay. okay, okay, we got to close that door, please. Thank you, officer. And the item is- Hang on, hang on, hang on, Nora, hang on. There we go. J or three J um, would be three. It would have been two J, 
um, new business and um, to discuss an RFP for recruitment of village manager position because our village manager has announced that he's retiring. Um, I just, I think that <laughs> having done this once before, it takes quite a while to do this. And so I think that we should uh, put out an RFP and look for executive search firms um, and start the process. All right, so that's that's a, a motion to add something to the, to the agenda. Do we have a second? Anybody? Second. Second, okay. Uh, so we've, uh, we'll have we add this uh, to the agenda. All, all, in, all, in, all in, well, let's take, a, take the roll, Sally. Steve Rollins? No. Desiree? Yes. Jeff Lucas? Yes. Young. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, and that would be, uh, so we're going to discuss it now. You know, I think that we, I, I think that we need to develop an RFP. We probably have one from five sure. years ago and admit it. I guess we would put it on our regular session agenda for two weeks from now, if we okay. have a draft of an RFP. And to be, to be clear, the, the, although the, um, uh, the uh, village manager has announced has a, a four year contract and um and has announced his uh, 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 intention to re uh, retire uh, he has says he is going to stay until uh, the items involving um, any legal items involving um, uh, complaints ethics complaints or lawsuits with his name on them are resolved so that may take some time so we don't know how long it's going to uh, take but um, since we have plenty of time we can begin a uh, a deliberate search for a firm to begin to find <laughs> um, uh, uh, candidates to be his possible eventual replacement. But uh, he'll be with us for a while. Um, um, so we want to take a vote on whether we want to uh, uh, start that, uh, uh, put that RFP together. Or no, we we don't do that. We that we put it on the. I move that we add it to the. I move that we, we, we put it, it on the, for the set. Next week, and then next, sorry, the next regular session, we'll we'll discuss it. Okay, thank you, Sally. Okay, now now I need a motion to uh, close the work session. So move. Second. Everybody in uh, favor? All in favor? Aye. All right. Now, oh, we're running late. Um, it was. Um, uh, I need a motion now to open the. Regular session of the uh, the board of uh, trustees. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. So we're uh, in session now. Um, uh, I'll, I'll begin by. Uh, oh, oh. Well, well, before we start, I'll begin by saying that the that the uh, mayor uh, um, was going to be here, was going to be late. His new job has him out of town. Uh, he can't couldn't zoom in because it wasn't time to set up a zoom. So you stuck with me. All right. So uh, please rise for the uh, pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation and one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Righty. Hear that? I guess we will begin with. Uh, presentations. We have none. Um, report from the village manager, Jerry. Hi, Lou. One Hi. Second. Hi, everyone. So Hi. I don't have um, a report this evening. Uh, I do have, though, several items to be filed for the record. Dan, can you uh, can you um, read them off to me? I don't have the agenda right in front of me right now. Uh, I think I left it upstairs when I went to go get dinner. So uh, the first is an agreement with the county for the police mutual aid agreement. Uh, second is an agreement with Westchester County for the STOP DWI program. Uh, third is contract 2023-03 uh, Village of Mamaroneck sidewalk replacements. Uh, and the final item is amendment to grant contract T000883 Shell Drake River Open Space Acquisition Study. And we discussed that tangentially during work session. Thank you. 
Okay. Anything else? Nothing else. Uh, well, J Jerry, while we have you here, um, we had discussed uh, uh, offline. Um, I was going to ask about the boat storage situation. We're in boat oh. storage uh, uh, season, and uh, um, we just started with this idea. Can you give us an update on, on where we are on that? And, and I'm sorry, I, I didn't get back to, to everyone um, about that. I did speak to, um, to Jeff LaRusso, who I think is on our Zoom right now, so he'll be able to speak about that. Uh, in our efforts to try to um, recruit some people over to our parking area. All right. Yeah. Good evening. We've been working on it, trying to get more people to sign up. This week, we did get uh, three more people so far to sign up. So it's oh, coming along. It just it, it got kicked off a little bit late in the season. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of people had already made arrangements for their winter storage. But uh, you know, we'll we'll see what we can do this year. Then hopefully, it grows next year. Okay, so uh, three three more in addition to what? I think we I believe we had three already, so I think we're up to six. That's six, six boats. So we'll, yeah. we'll okay, all right, and that's uh, that's better than nothing, I suppose. Yeah. Um, all right, I just wanted to be curious because somebody asked me about it, and yeah. uh, and and I called Jeff to ask about it, and um, thank you. And, that's it. And, and and Jerry, you had said also so there was some concern that. Um, uh, people wanted to work on their boats while they were at Harbor Island, and and uh, we we need to make a, we didn't anticipate that we're going to need to make adjustments on that. Yeah, so so um, not having a boat, not being a boat owner, um, people want to um, people want to work on their boat in the off season when you know weather permits, and so I advise uh, Jeff to start to purchase pads so that the uh, asphalt uh, would not be damaged or uh, impaired in any way. So that we could reuse these pads over and over again, but allow people to um, do some work on their boats in you know sunny, um, not so cold type of conditions. Okay, thank you. All right, so thank it's you. off to a slower start than we hoped, but uh, it is an additional revenue stream which uh, we like. All right. Okay. Uh -huh. um, next invitation to address the board. Um, uh, you're welcome to come up here. Uh, anybody to speak? You have three minutes. Uh, please direct your comments to the board, and um, and it's uh, you know it's not a Q and A, and it's not a it's an open mic night. It's just 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 tell us what you what you want to talk about, and uh, we'll be happy to listen. Please, anybody, sure. Tony, how are you? Hi. I see on the appears on the agenda tonight. There's a lot of spending items. Uh, um, budget uh, items. Yeah, yeah. You use use that that mark. mark uh, that, the microphone is on your left there. The one yeah, without the. One. Yeah, yeah. Good evening. Yeah. Board. Okay. Okay. Um, chair of the flight committee. I see on the agenda tonight are a lot of items where it looks like the village either wants to or needs to spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I know that some of the items may be very crucial, but we have a lot of flood mitigation problems, as everyone knows. And I think we need to, in quotes, put some money away for a rainy day and not spend it away. Now, there's been some talk about what the Army Corps can do and what they can't do. Mm -hmm. And part of that problem is that, as we all know, inflation has been crazy, mm -hmm. and especially in construction. So if we're over on the on the project, I'd like us to have a kitty where we could have some money saved away. So I would please ask the board to be very conservative in their uh, approval of funding for this for the piece in the near future. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Um, so you know that I'm here for uh, the flooding in my area in Beaver Swamp Rock. Mm -hmm. um, I have a whole bunch of papers here that I've been reviewing. Um, going back from December 22nd, 2014, I have um, documentation Mr. Slingerland wrote. The village owns the right of way where the beaver swamp broke is. We are making efforts to work with residents in the worst hit areas to make them more flood safe. And then June or the year of 2020, 
you actually put the beaver swamp brook into your, it's called the Village of America five-year capital project budget review. And the Short Street Bridge was supposed to be replaced 2021 to 2023 with the right town. Beaver Swamp Road for Improvements was supposed to be $400,000 in the year 2021-2022. And $2,616,000 was allocated for 2022 and 2023. So we all know that we've been taken out of that plan and nothing was ever done. Even though the village does own that property, the decaying channel walls that were built in 1935 that pulled up our homes, our, our backyards. And then this year, I was just reading this for your capital project plan this year. It says, whereas, as there are many operational and capital needs to address, the budgeting process is often a series of educated choices and capital projects are prioritized on the basis of cost, need, and effectiveness in the context of the Board of Trustees' fiduciary responsibility to, uh, to adopt a physically respon fiscally responsible budget. So then, in your comprehensive plan for 2023 to 2028, of course, we're not on there, but Short Street Bridge Rehabilitation, Tompkins Avenue Bridge Replacement, and Mamaroneck Reservoir Dam Alternatives. In tonight, and then also, and even if your comprehensive plan from 2012, acquire land for flood mitigation and open space. And then the goals for the new comprehensive plan, Encourage conservation and strict development regulations on the waterfront, floodplains, and wetlands. Consider how existing and new parks and open spaces can contribute to forward, toward uh, flood mitigation. Investigate and implement additional flood mitigation strategies for areas that are not included in, new, in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers project, which would, I assume, be Beaver Swamp Brook. Also in your com comprehensive plan, talks about the Beaver Swamp on 5-3, conduct, conduct mitigation study for areas not improved by the ACE project. You, do, you have a, do you have an ask here? Uh, do you want to ask us about it? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, you're good. Time, time is up. Do you need more time? It's been three minutes. Do yes. you need more time? Well, and, and here it's a whole other area here. They're telling okay. you to talk about to, to do something with the beaver swamp problem. Okay. So when I see your your projects for this year, for your project plan now for the next five years, okay. and I don't see anything for beaver swamp brook in there, but you have all this information and studies telling you that you need to look at our area for the flooding. And I think like $2 million to rehab Florence Park is a bit ridiculous when you have other residents who's, um, Safety okay. and life in their homes are in danger. We will we'll be. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You hear you. Can you leave like copies of that with Sally just so it can go in a, in a minute? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. You are to, I, I kind of also spoke about this during the work session. So, um, uh, as far as uh, that, the project you mentioned about. Uh, identifying projects for uh, areas not improved by the Army Corps project. Um, there's a, the New York State DEC has undertaken a study of the Beaver Swamp Brook watershed. Uh, the company that is performing the work is a company called SLR. They just completed a similar project for the Mamaroneck and Shell Jake rivers. Uh, their report, I think, should be finalized within hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, what I've been uh, looking to do is submit a uh, grant application to New York State under what's called their Building Resilient Infrastructure Communities Grant, BRIC. Uh, and what I, I've spoken with the firm that's conducting the study for uh, the state to try and develop a cost estimate uh, because they've already, what they're gonna do for us is uh, identify They've done a lot of the, the scientific data research and data collection, and they're identifying the projects that uh, should we should look to implement 
along the uh, Beaver Swamp Brook in the village of Mamaroneck. And by we, I mean, that would be the town of Rye, the village of Mamaroneck, and possibly some state agencies as well. Uh, I'm seeking, I'm gonna seek to apply for a grant to kind of complete the last phase of that project, which would be identify what those costs are, determine what the benefit cost ratios are so we can make future applications uh, grant out flood for flood mitigation to try and implement those projects. So uh, I'm more than happy to talk to you uh, about that. Thanks, Dan. Okay, Robert. Robert, the other mic. The, the other mic, the smaller one, the smaller one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What session there was a discussion about speed bumps. And uh, one of the gentlemen who was here talked about um, speed humps came down speed humps emergency down. equipment. And I just want to remind <laughs> the board that the village manager, the village manager stated that the the speed humps need to be removed in winter as the plows will send them flying. And the gentleman who spoke earlier talked about damage to emergency equipment. Am I right? Is that what he said? Yeah. So it's winter. I'm just reminding you, you need to remove the speed humps that are on Grand and Old Coast Road. All right. Um, we'll look into it. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. All right. I'm Meg Rubin, I'm Spirit Avenue in the village. Um, I'm calling to um, add my concern for the long list of spending authorizations that you have on your agenda for tonight. I think it'd be a huge amount of money. Um, as Trustee who just mentioned in the work session, it seems to be without any plan or priorities. Um, I don't know how we're going to afford that. So that's very concerning. Don't see flood mitigation and any of those. We know that that's a great concern for our village and should be a priority. But I, in addition to how much money this would cost, I wonder how can the staff take on all of these projects? You have an RFP out for the parking lot. Um, we have other projects going on. This board took a lot of heat just recently for the risk management of preparing for the Waverly Avenue bridge project. Um, Obviously, staff has got to be involved whenever you do any of these projects. Um, these are large projects besides the ones for purchasing the vehicles. There's also, there's a pavilion, there's the, the remodeling of the Harbor Island Park, there's Florence Island Park, Florence Park. Um, there's a lot of work in all of those. I wonder how large your staff is. How are you going to manage that? Are you going to hire more staff? Is there going to be more overtime involved? Do we have to then have consultants? And if this is, you're authorizing this now for a long period of time, then why are we doing them all in tonight? Um, it, it Wait, not, excuse me. Exactly. Yeah, please don't talk to the audience, please. Please. But if, if, if this, you're voting on all of these tonight as though this is going to be in some time in the near year or two. I don't understand how our staff could possibly take on all of those projects. Um, I don't see a priority for prioritization of the list of projects. Um, so I just wanted to, my concern is that it just doesn't make any sense. It seems like you're undercutting um, board for years by obligating our tax dollars for these projects instead of seeing what happens in the next six months or the next year and actually doing um, a very rational project plan for all of our CapEx projects. A number of the items that we, that we approved are uh, out of funds that were already approved. So in other words, the funds are waiting there and the uh, purchases were delayed for the reasons that were uh, stated when uh, when the items came up. So these, these, these are not new expenditures. Some are, um, a lot of them are not. A lot, a lot of the big ones were already, um, already budgeted. Uh, and the Waverly Avenue project is a town project. So um, uh, my question about that is why uh, we didn't know about that and when we uh, grilled the the village manager on it, and um, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think it's the town. You got to direct that question to the town. It's not our bridge, but the traffic is in our village, and uh, and we have to make sure that the traffic um, uh, project uh, protects our uh, citizens. So that that's that's what happened. But we there's none of our funds are in that uh, in that uh, 
in that project, but we would have been on the hook for all the traffic control had we not acted. So that's that. I just want to explain that. Uh, anybody else? Hi, Amy. So, the, the, the small one, Amy. Hi, Amy Siskin on Skiba Lane. Um, just following up to the comments, my understanding is 1.4 million out of almost 6 million was, was the amount that was already underway. In this amount, in addition to the others we've mentioned, 500,000 for lights in the Orienta on the bike path. That wasn't approved, but. but okay, 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 good. Because my understanding is that came up at a campaign event. And I mean, I think we all realize in this room. Number one issue for our village is flooding mm -hmm. and the money needs to go to flooding, not all these other events. I also want to talk about, and I'm, I, I see we have a large crowd from CRC and from other advocacy groups. You know, we just had an election. This was a prime issue in the election and the voters decided. So I just want to say out loud, we just, I'm proud that we elected our first Hispanic mayor um, we are not against affordable housing. We are against this particular proposal, which has not been thought out well, which, and I'm going to read, uh, this is dated October 8th, 2023, titled Debunking the Latest Misinformation. It says, and, and this is from our mayor, I'm going to read it into the record. The village has put out a request for proposal RFP for the purpose of building an all affordable housing development on the site of Hunter Parking Development and on the site of Hunter Parking Lot on Prospect Ave. This proposal includes no other contiguous property. Really? The village has no interest in joining the Hunter Tier proposal or with any other parcel. The companies who came to inspect the property in preparation for the proposal were told in no uncertain terms that the proposal was only for the Hunter Lot. Okay, so that turned out not to be true. The other thing that is said in this email that I want to read into the record, if folks don't like affordable housing, which again is, is not true, our village is for affordable housing, not in this particular site, I wish they would just be honest about the fact, instead of manufacturing an, a tissue, I guess an issue, of lies to hide their true motives, then at least we could have an honest debate about the merits of providing residents with clean, safe, and decent housing. I want to be clear that there's no way that these particular units will be given to residents of the village. These are two, I, I want that in the record because I think that's been misrepresented and I, I see people here with very hopeful faces that they're getting housing. It's just a lie and it's not how the system works. So that's it. Okay. Um, uh, okay, great. Go ahead. Yeah, James Abadi, 170 Washington Street. Um, you know, I just want to say, so Channel 12 did an interview about the way to land a new bridge, and they basically cut everything I said out, so I'm going to say it here. Um, <laughs> you know, it seems like we're blaming the town for everything. We never take responsibility for anything. So it's the town's fault. Um, meanwhile, you have plenty of meetings to know what was going on, who was paying for what. Guys, make a salary to do so. That's your job, um, whether it's Jerry, Tom, whoever it was. And then they said, uh, the last time Tom said that Sandy, our chief, was at several meetings. She doesn't make those decisions about the money. So she shouldn't, that shouldn't even come into play. Um, I don't know why they put it on her. But, you know, it's aggravating because we're always blaming everybody else for everything. Meanwhile, the residents, the taxpayers still suffer. So now... They close the bridge, they open the bridge, the bridge is still open. At the end of the day, I think we just want to have some honesty once in a while. You're blaming the town for it. Take responsibility. How come we didn't know who was paying for the police? They went to several meetings. It, 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 it can't be that difficult to figure out who's paying for what. I just had to say that since Channel 12 cut me off. Thank you. <laughs> Probably the time, not content, I would imagine. All right. Uh, um, you want to reset the clock there, Sally? Yeah, oh, okay, okay. Daniela. Yeah, okay. Uh, Daniela, uh, uh, use, the, use no, the, the, the little mic, the skinny mic. Can we just take it off? Can we just take that other mic off? Other mic, you can't. Okay. Uh, Daniela, I don't know about that. Okay. Two things. 
One is, where is the mayor? Why isn't he here? Number two, why is Jerry hiding? Okay, and number three, shame, 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 shame. Okay, the flood is the most important thing. We need to get the flood rectified. That's it, nothing else right now. The flood, that's it, okay? Get to the root of the problem and then you can do whatever the hell you want. Get the flood done. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so, I wanted to just talk about the question of the government program. Mm -hmm. um, affordable housing. We have what we call repetitive numerous properties throughout the world that get flooded again and again and again. Mm -hmm. I sent a PowerPoint around to some of the trustees, some of the people, what I call visions for better housing. Drop. I remember that, yeah. I think there's an opportunity here for us to look at some of these areas with the repetitive flooding and try to get dry, better housing in those places because a lot of the residents that are living in these flooded areas. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we would call it affordable housing or, or not, but they're living there and they're, they're in desperate situations. So I'm saying, let's focus on the better flood properties, see if we can come up with some creative solutions of how to solve them. And I, I, I have some ideas on it, but going into the future, maybe we'll be able to sit down and talk about that. But I'm saying, let's look at those repetitive flooding properties as opportunities to have better, drier, more affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Laura. Laura Body. I am part of the traffic commission, but I'm going to be speaking as a resident and in regard and actually for the Washington Road Neighborhood Association. I can piggyback over everybody in this room, but I'm going to ask a question to the room. How many people in this room feel uh, like flooding just, is how many people feel that like flooding? Is the most important thing in this village. Yeah. Thank you. Right. And we spend far too much time not being organized. I've said this over and over again. We are not focused. We are still behind the times. We have we could have accomplished greatness, and we have not. We are not the poster child for anything in this village at this point. We blame. We push responsibility. We don't even answer emails when they're sent to the board. It, it's far and few between that an email gets responded to and a resident gets the respect that they're due. How are we going to fix that? I don't know. I hope we have a plan in the near future because we are we are a community. You're not here to make the decisions for us. You're here to hear the voice of the people. Yes. And the voice of the people are speaking. Flooding needs to be fixed first. I can understand affordable housing, but it's not the topic of conversation. You can have affordable housing. But if you don't have viability in your community and you don't have safety and security that we aren't going to flood or, or not, we are going to flood. But if we don't have control over the flooding, what is it for building affordable housing? What is it for improving our properties? If we're not getting to the crux of the issue and we can't get to the crux of the issue unless we make that issue priority. It is your responsibility to do that. And you know what, Lou? You keep looking at the clock. It's, is it imperative that you watch the clock instead I'm of looking at it to see how we're doing? Being present and listening. To I'm listen, okay, I'm listening. Present. Please, please, I'm listening. I'm listening. Laura. I am. Well, I'm sure everybody in the room can see that you weren't being present. That's the point. That's the problem here. That's the issue in a nutshell. Because you you're on a different team than the whole community. Instead of being on one team with us all, trying to make solve issues together. If we could do it together and you could hear and listen, things would be resolved. Instead of picking and choosing and making your own agenda and taking pictures of signs that are for not, that are not going to come to filtration because we're still going to flood. And if we don't fix the flooding, we have nothing. Thank you. Thank you. 
Peggy Jackson, 1616 North James Street, former chair of the Flood Committee. And I'd like to make a few points. Um, I appreciate what Sue is saying about the Beaver Swamp area. It needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been. It's not the only area of the village that's not being covered by the FNC plan. Harbor Heights is not being covered. First Street is not being covered in this plan. There are a lot of areas in this village. Is off. The Army Corps project isn't it's helping. Because, uh, be careful. If we don't deal with that, you're doing your residents a disservice. Secondly, we don't know where the Army Corps project stands now. We had a report earlier. Well, could you fill us all in, please? Well, it, it, was, it was like, I, it, it was okay, go ahead. We should be very careful with the village's money now because we don't know where we stand with the Army Corps project. There was a question as to whether the county was picking up our share or not. We really should have our eyes on every single dollar we are spending. Hello. Um, Jennifer mm -hmm. Jacobs Guzman, good to see you all. Um, I'm on Palmer Ave. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here tonight as both um, a member of the board of the Washington Bill Housing Alliance, as well as a member of the Mamaroneck Coalition for Affordable Housing. Um, I've just been listening to a lot of kind of discussion as to whether the flood, addressing flooding or addressing affordable housing is the most important. Um, and I think both of these things are very important. Um, and we really shouldn't be treating them as one or the other. Um, I think just from the experience of the Washingtonville Housing Alliance, which has been here in our community over 40 years, providing affordable housing and managing affordable housing and doing referrals to people that come in and need services, that 40 years plus of experience is telling us that we do not have enough options for people who are not able to pay luxury rents. We also have seen families displaced by floods who are forced to live in subpar, sometimes dangerous basement apartments. These are members of our community. They are just as important to us as homeowners who are also struggling to address flooding. So I just think we should really be thinking about how can we address both problems. One development site can set an example. It's not gonna solve everything. It's not gonna solve every affordable housing need, but what it can do for us, I think, is it can demonstrate some of the great things that are going on with affordable housing design right now. It could show the community that an affordable housing site can be beautiful, it can be resilient, it can be uh, sustainable, um, it can demonstrate how we can retain stormwater on site. Um, and it can really serve as like a great kind of beacon of hope in a community that's really been impacted negatively by flooding. So I really would encourage us all to keep moving on this project with the idea of like, we can do it all. We can help solve the flooding, and we can also, I think, respond to this real need for affordability in a village that feels increasingly like it's just for the highest incomes. Um, and it's you know one of the reasons I think so many of us love the village is it really is a diverse community. We will lose that if we don't think about both of these needs together. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening. Good evening. My name is Carolina Yan, and I live in the um, Washingtonville um, area. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the residents have um, concerns about flooding. Mm -hmm. That's one of the major <laughs> things in the Maronic that needs to be fixed like, as soon as possible. Like uh, Danielle said, you know. Let's not wait until two years from now and get another flood or people lose their housing. Um, my name, like I said, my name is Carolina. I have lived in Merrick all my life, 40 years plus more years, plus 40 years plus. I live in an affordable housing apartment for 16 years. It's been significantly helpful for me and my family to have the ability to pay my rent. I have 
constructive feedback from affordable housing development, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to support the concept that you build building affordable housing, and I'm here to support the Hunter Thai lot for affordable housing. Like, I don't know who's the guy that was talking, I got a good name, but he said- uh, uh, Please, please, please talk to us, thank you. Um, you know, when you build affordable housing, build it high, so it will flood, you know, um, think about the area you want to make affordable housing because it's crazy nowadays to live anywhere, you know. Um, for me, my family, you know, I'm a single mother, you know, I'm trying the best I can, you know, and I agree with a lot of residents flooding here in Maryland has been an issue since, since my uncle told me in 1970 something um, before I was even born. But that those are two issues that are for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Listen, affordable housing is fine. However, there's no guarantee that all my people in this room are going to get into that no. lot. Okay. No so I there's no guarantee that Carolina's gonna get into Hunter Lodge. No. Okay, so that's a big problem. So, so my point is why are we worrying about other people coming in when you should be worrying about all the people? Yeah. 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 So that's not helping A, B, and C. That's just not helping. So while we do need affordable housing, you need to help these people here sitting in every one of these chairs, not people who are gonna come from other places. We don't, we don't know that either, but it's okay. It's a story. Yes, you do know about it. Exactly, it's a chance, yeah. It's a chance, right? Exactly. So tell that to everybody and stop burying your head in No, uh, we're not, no, nobody's guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you doing? You got that? You got the mic? Got it. Okay. Josh Lanza. Hi, Josh. So I have a question for you. Do you guys have the numbers for the affordable housing? What percentage of Mamaronic residents would be eligible for affordable housing? Hey, it's not a QA, and we don't have the answers right now, no, but, but go ahead. Tell well, us what you want to tell us. It's not a QA, but there's a lot of hopeful people here, right? This is obviously a big issue. So people want to know numbers. You have these people coming out, and they're hopeful that they're going to get affordable housing, but you don't even have the numbers to show what their chances are to even get in. Do you know is the is the lottery drawn from Westchester County or New York State? We, we haven't even gotten the proposals uh, yet. We're, we're getting the proposals. Board. Do you have an answer? We, no, I don't have an answer. Right. Don't have an answer. Okay. So here's the thing, right? Do you have, do you have something you want to tell us? This is the board, and they don't have an answer yeah. for it. This is a gigantic lottery, okay, for a lot of people vying for this affordable housing. You will be lucky to get two families from America right. that get into these buildings. I, so I don't know that either. Again, you don't know. You don't seem you, to you know, don't know either. right now. Uh, but, so please, again, please, please, please. Be transparent. Okay, you have a lot of people here. There's a lot, there's a lot at stake with these people. So I suggest get the numbers and then run them back to people because these are the people that are gonna may or may not be voting for you next year. So on this letter for the proposal for um Hunter Terrace. Tier, tier. I'm sure. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's Terrace. Terrace. Okay. Terrace. Yeah. And it's by Richard Nightingale, President and CEO of Washington Housing Alliance and West Ham. Mm -hmm. He writes that um, 
Let me get it right here. So about when he's talking about the village of Merrick is facing a severe shortage of low and moderate income housing. In addition, the lower income housing that does not that, that does exist in the village is largely warehoused in the highly flood prone area of the Washingtonville Flats neighborhood. Hunter Terrace will literally uplift residents out of the flood zone to a higher standard of living, allowing the village to take a small but significant step toward alleviating the affordable housing crisis and delivering on the community's commitment to promote a sustainable, culturally diverse, multi-generational and mixed income community. That's not really true now, is it? Yeah, lie. Hi, Nancy. I am a founding member of Washington Hill Housing Groups. Myself, Jeff Beebe, Bob Barber, and my very good friend, Marcella Barley. So when you talk about what to do for affordable housing, we had everything planned. We had everything figured out. We also had the money. Well, let's put it this way. After the senior building was sold, and the money went to what they call West Town now, we would have been able to use that money to build the building. We would have been out of property. The property was perfect. <clears throat> Yes, there was a problem with some flooding. However, the architect said if the buildings were built a certain way, there would be no flood problem. And you know, who am I to tell them you don't know what you're talking about? But our former mayor said he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I'm going to change the zone, and I'm also going to change the sex act. That's why this whole big project, which we did here, perfect place, is not there. And the money is not here either, because the money went beyond us. And they built housing. <laughs> Don't tell me no, I know. You want to fight? I'll fight. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when, when Washington Real Housing Alliance was established, we didn't have this kind of um, fueling. Everybody is for everybody wanted. Then it got a little out of order, and we got somebody who was the director who didn't want it that way. And I don't want to discuss that security. But anyway, what I'm saying is if there was room for it, there is no reason why it should not be for the government people like what we planned from day one. Um, there's somebody sitting in here whose father advised me about what should be done. And I did what I was told. And we had everything worked out. I don't know what happened. I only know that the property was taken away. The money is not here anymore. Figure it out, but the money belongs to you. The big bus with that senior building was sold for big money. I don't see it. Thank you, Nancy. I think you need to find Same one, same one, same one you were using before. Okay. You know what? Because they put the covers on it. They must be covered on yet. We know. You don't know. It's not that one. Okay. Can we? Can you just? Yeah. No, just you, put you, it put down. Put it down, or yeah, something like that. Thank you. Thank you. Daniela, again. Okay. For a third time's a charm. Yes. Yes. Um. So. Okay. So there's a couple of things that. I'm interested in knowing with the affordable housing. Now, I'm disabled. Okay. I'm, I am disabled. I cannot, I don't have feeling on this side of my body. 
what happens if, if I have to go into an affordable housing? I can't go because there's a lottery, right? So I see that I'm sure there's people in here who are in similar situations. They, my American people can't have housing because you, your affordable housing, the way you want to do it is not, is, is, is it going to be, Nancy is correct. This should have been, this was all worked out. This was all worked out. Somewhere along the lines, it got changed for the wrong reason. Okay. Now I have my mother-in-law who's 90 years old. She was in the, she's in the Avalon because she, that's where she is now. Now, mysteriously, Jerry was there too. And then he moved over to the Mason. Well, that's, there's something fishy to me, but anyway, the Avalon, the Avalon is no longer called the Avalon anymore. The Avalon now is called the Mark. The Mark. Okay. The Mark just raised and hiked all its its rent to six thousand dollars for a nine hundred square foot unit. That's highway robbery. So what's going on? There's something fishy, and I'm not sure where. But there's something wrong with this system. You're right about Listen that. to Nancy. She she's right with with this whole situation. The money is here. Thank Go you. find it. Go find it. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here. My name is uh, Richard Leinberger. I live on Hydro Street here in the village. Richard. Um, I know a lot of people in this room. Um, as many of you know, as the former president and uh, board member for four years of the Mamarinic Chamber of Commerce. Um, I was the PTA treasurer at NIS school for two years. Uh, professionally, I'm a financial advisor for 23 years. And what I do for a living is I help people make smart decisions about money mm -hmm. by doing due diligence and doing a lot of research mm -hmm. before they make those decisions. Um, I've donated a lot of money to the village over time since I've lived here for the last nine years helping out with the rec department and so forth. And I believe that I'm a very reasonable person. And tonight I'm here as a supporter of my neighbors and my friends in this village. And I wanna see the village prosper and do well. But the proposed construction across the street is not at all what we would consider reasonable. So um, we all support affordable housing. I think many of us have said that. We don't, what we don't support is misinformation. Um, Tom Murphy, our outgoing mayor, uh, on the Larchmont Loop seven months ago was quoted as saying that there was going to be 40 to 50 apartments. That's not true. We all saw the proposals, 122 to 187 proposed apartments. I, um, that's a lot of apartments to I be fitting in that space. And we haven't gotten the proposals officially yet. I think that's. We have gotten. We haven't made. We haven't gotten their presentation yet. Um, Washingtonville, which I believe was the best proposal for this community, conservatively estimated there would be twenty-eight to thirty-three children that would be added to the Mamanic school system mostly obviously in the Mamanic Avenue school, which as a parent of a 10 year old knows that there's less and less room for more children to be in there. So my question is, where is the value for the current taxpayer? Right. Are we getting any value for giving up this space above that parking garage? We talked about adding more parking, but in the proposals, the 200 parking spot that we currently have for the village is going to go down to 50 to maybe 100. So we're losing parking. Um, in my opinion, as somebody who's spoken to the, the, the business owners, as the Chamber of Commerce president, as somebody who's spoken to other family members of the people in our school, in my opinion, what we need in this village is more parking so that we can all enjoy downtown. What we don't need is more residents, because as many of you had said, they're not going to be our residents moving in there. They're going to be residents from across the country, uh, from across the county. 
we don't need more traffic and we don't need more flooding. So I'm here to just tell you that I support affordable housing and everybody here, but I do not support that building that you guys are proposing across the street. Thank you. Victoria Theta, Rally Road. Um, as I sit here tonight, I am like, I'm gonna try to just speak quickly. I've only lived here nine years. I came from the Bronx and what I see happening now is what I ran from in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. 37, 39 kids in a class. My son can't get reading help. There's no AIS, a disaster. You, you're allowing this to happen to us. We pay the taxes. Do you guys realize what our taxes look like? Do you have children in our school? Do you have any idea? When I first moved here, I went to every school meeting. Do you know Dr. Shaps had crafts and all these big PowerPoint. We don't have room. But why do we care about affordable housing for other people? How about our people? Yeah. What are we doing? What are you doing for us? My children are in these schools that are overcrowded. My kids in the homics, do you know that the homics cafeteria holds 20, uh, there's a, like 250 kids? They have no choice, they have to split it. They have to make the kids go outside, it's freezing. There's almost 500 kids per grade in the homics. What are we doing? Where does it end? I'm from the Bronx. I love where I live. It doesn't look like what it used to look like. It's dirty. It's crowded. There's no parking. We stopped shopping on the avenue. You know why? Because you can't find a spot. Sunday, I went to Nana's, my favorite store on the avenue. 20 minutes. I sat and cursed at myself. And Jesus Christ, I should have went to Target. And you know what? Me and my neighbors were driving to Porchester because I can pull into the parking lot, get what I need, and go home. And it's wrong. I should be able to park and shop in my neighborhood. I walk with my husband. Many of you see me walking. We walk day and night. The village is filthy. Okay. There, It is garbage everywhere. Nobody enforces any. I can start to send you pictures if you'd like. I do a three-mile walk almost every day from the harbor to the, uh, from Harbor Heights down to the water, back around. It's dirty. Like, what are we doing? It, do we want to be the Bronx? That's where I come from, and I love it, but it doesn't look like the place I grew up in. And I never had the privilege of living in this town. I only live here eight years, and you know what? I do love this town. When I was a kid, we would come up here. We weren't privileged to live here, but we could walk the avenue. We could get pizza. And then as I grew up, I did the same with my children. And now I'm privileged. I feel lucky that I worked. My parents were immigrants. Nobody even graduated high school. Never went to college. We worked to get here, my husband and I. And yet you're ruining it. You're letting this village go down. This is what The minute I walked through the Maranac doors, you know what they did? They assessed him and they gave him that help. But you keep adding and adding to our kids. And you know who gets hurt? The kids, the English language learners. You know why? Because all the services are going to be cut. That's a big part of our community. And all those kids that can't afford the math tutors and the ELA tutors, those are the kids that are going to get hurt. Our vulnerable population, a lot of our flood people here. Thank you. Okay? We have to stop building. We have to take care of our people, our flood residents. Do you need a little more time? No, I'm going to okay, thank you. Thank you. To say thank you for listening. But we have to do better. Thank you. My kid, your, their kids, they deserve better. Thank you. Mayor, how are you? Norm Roosevelt, Carol here. Uh, what's interesting is whether we're talking about flood mitigation or talking about affordable housing, a lot of comments were made tonight that covers a lot of points. But what screams out to me, and particularly to this board, is a lack of transparency in this village. People do not know what's going on. When we started the what I thought was gonna be a successful flood mitigation program for the Army Corps of Engineers. We had several meetings with the village board, the flood committee, and people that uh, were involved uh, as residents, whether you were affected directly by it or indirectly by it. 
anyone who lives in a village of Monica is aware of the flood problem and, and to the degree that it is. And as far as the um, affordable housing, uh, I would note that if you go back in history, that when you had the famous HUD lawsuit, the village of Monica was exempt from that lawsuit because the village of Monica always had a policy and any new building of three units or more, 10% uh, or affordable housing. So again, it comes down to without uh, going to minutia of specifics, there was always the intent of this village to maintain its greatest gift, which is diversity. And that's what you do. But I, it just goes back without going on and on. This, everyone here and everyone watch, watching on television is entitled to transparency. You have to know what's going on. What happens when you go from 88 million to 120 plus million? 130. Why, why is it happening? Where is it happening? Why isn't the Army Corps of Engineers here to, dis to discuss it with the public? Besides this, the input that you're gonna get from the community is the most valuable information you can get for you to make a decision. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Norm. Anybody else? Afternoon. But um, this one express. Um, I really feel a lot of uh, support for affordable housing in this room, same as uh, flood mitigation. I my name is Janet Fry. I represent the community resource center, and I've been in the TRC for over twenty years. I with this organization and as a community resource, which is low income immigrants be, uh, living in the class area. And also the entire village and town of Marinette. I have seen the devastation of the flood. But I also have seen how families are being impacted by a friend who go in time, trying to choose between feeding their families or paying for them, trying to see how they can find housing in a community, in a community where they have lived for more than 10, 15 years, these families think that this is their community. They work here in the village. They take their kids to parks. They, um, I thought that most of their kids are laid with the kids of the blacks that are here. And I think that it's important to work together around a good diversity issue. There is already a coalition that's called Memele for affordable housing, bringing your energy, your thoughts, your efforts with us too. I hear that everybody is working for the housing. I see questions about whether this is a whether this is, you know, how this will be regulated, how this will be to be allowed to be in the community. So let's talk about that. Let's build that together. We don't need to be undermining one issue because we know another one is more important. Both are important. Affordable housing or this housing crisis that we're experiencing right now, it's happening everywhere. And I'm really proud to have seen this community thinking about affordable housing and really making it, you know, almost real. This is, as, as I heard Jane saying about, this is the example we're setting about affordable housing in our community. We are all investing in this community and it's great. But let's all funnel that path and that good energy in working together. The CRC has its present here and it's present to hear your comments as well. It's present to hear it's it, it present to hear what we think about it. I wish that we could have you know trans, uh, translation uh, service here for you to hear really what this community feel about living in this community. So I just want to say that let's work in unison. Let's really put our minds together and make these two, address these two issues and make it happen. Uh, I just wanted to address what Mrs. Fry just said. Um, we do support your community. We do support our community and we do feel that um, there are a lot of people who could benefit from low-income housing. 
in this community. We just don't feel it's this project, but again, uh, to talk about what uh, Mayor Rosenblum said, transparency. Ms. Fry just got up here and is still speaking out for the affordable housing here in Mamaroneck. Now, I don't know if she realizes, she talked about the lottery, but she's still talking about the people in her community like they're going to get it, and this is the problem. When will you guys be transparent with everybody about what's going to happen with this project? I, I just don't like I can't understand this. And the fact that you don't have the numbers and this project has been being planned for so long is unacceptable. Why are there still people that believe that they're going to get in this when the number math doesn't lie? The numbers don't support a large group of the Hispanic community to even get in there. Why are you not, are you guys not being forthcoming? I just, I like, I don't get it. And I needed to reiterate this because there are people here that still seem to think that they are going to get in there. One of you, maybe two of you in your whole community, maybe might get a unit there. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. We have somebody wants to, on, the, on the line. Do we have Yes. We have two people. We have two people have their hands. Okay, we got two people on the line too. So before we let uh, anybody uh, anybody else uh, speaks twice, we're going to go to those folks. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Bernie Camarda and Durandy Martinez. So okay, uh, you want to? It, it's you. You want to meet so. Okay. Yeah. Right, so you, go ahead. Go ahead, please. My name is Anne Greensmith right. in my personal capacity. Um, I live on Howard Avenue, right by Hillside Avenue Church, but flooded by Ida. Mm -hmm. Flooded most recently. I've been displaced from my home for the last two years. Um, I wanted to come here. I just realized today this is on the agenda. And I wanted to come here just to let you know that I recognize how difficult this problem is from a very personal level. I wanted to thank um, Dan and Jerry and Leilani for putting a bunch of us together who are looking to elevate our homes and also like behind the scenes that I did want to make that public, that they are looking for grants to help us. Um, we've been meeting with them regularly and I just want to let you guys know how much that means to me as someone that is paying more than 100% more in housing costs for the last two years. I wanted to make it personal what affordable housing means. Um, first of all, it's not for the Hispanic community, it's for folks who are low and moderate income approximately 40,000 to 77,000. I won't qualify for this project, but I did want to come up and show my support for it because I'm stressed and struggling. And I recognize that having different types of housing to meet different types of needs is super important. And I just wanted to lend my voice for that. And as someone who's deeply affected still, recognize that it's important to move in tandem. And when you're looking at the flood victims, I want you to also consider the financial impact on them and what it means, what the need for affordable housing is. I just want to put a personal face to it to let you guys know that I could have moved from my house if there was affordable options available, right? Mm -hmm. I could have been in a different type of apartment that was not as financially stressful for me if there are different types of affordable housing needs that could, affordable housing options that could meet my needs. So I just wanted to come up and say that even though I'm impatient and I'm frustrated and I'm upset and I want this to happen yesterday and I want the ACE project to be done and I don't understand why it hasn't started and I'm going through that whole process right now with the building department just going to get my permits to elevate my home and so I could finally move back in. I wanted to also say that just because I'm focusing 100% on flooding doesn't mean that I don't also see the need for affordable housing because as a person that's struggling to make it through the next year or so until I get back in my home, I think it's important for us to recognize that there are other people in the community that don't have our income, that don't have our resources. And I recognize my privilege, even in this situation as stressful as it is, that I'm fine and I will be fine. And I wanted to thank the village for putting us together and trying to help us get the funding to elevate our homes. I wanna invite other people 
or also in that situation to join our group, the more the merrier. I think it's important for resilience and to take this to the next level. So I just wanted thank you. to thank you. Thank you. Um, um, okay, uh, go ahead. We're going to take a call, uh, but, but go ahead. Uh, John Gitlitz, I live at 124 Beach Avenue. I'm a member of the board of directors of the Hispanic If you need a resource center. That's what they used to call it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. What they called it when yeah, I remember. I first joined and you changed for very real reasons because the, the immigrant community was becoming a lot more diverse and the needy community was becoming a lot more yeah, diverse here. So we had to, but I've been a member of the board for a couple of months longer than Janet's work for us. It, we, no, we cannot solve the affordable housing problem quickly, well, or easily. We know that. We know that most of what we call affordable housing is going to lower middle range income people, not to the poor members of the immigrant community who live come nowhere near being able to afford that. We don't expect an affordable problem, housing problem to solve any of those things. But to shove them aside by saying, no, we can only spend on what? That seems to be a good problem. We have to morally and economically do all things tandem to the very best of our ability. I'm not going to get involved in the technical questions. I'm not going to get into the transparency questions. Uh, I know that when Ida came, or when the big flood came, we lost how many were homeless in the flats? 178 people claimed that they lost their apartment, 178 families. Is that number correct, Janet? Please talk to the board, please. Pardon? Please speak to the board. I think that it was uh, a number somewhere around 170, right? yes. 78. Many of them were immigrants because the immigrants live in that area of town. Does that mean that we don't have to care for them? I came here in 1986. Again, I'm an outsider as well. Anyway, I really hope that we will not, in the name of one very needy and important things fails to work on the problem. Equally important issues as well. Thank you, sir. We have a parents who called in, so we want to take one of those calls. Can we do that? Yeah, we have uh, okay. Bernie Camarda and Jim, Durandy Martin. Cool. Bernie, Bernie and Jim. Yeah, Bernie and Durandy. Bernie? Yeah. Bernie yeah. was with his wife. Right. Right. He's, out of, he's, he's out of town. Okay. All right. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, Bernie, how you doing? Good evening. So, okay. Uh, so, just state, your name housing, for the record. state your name for the record, uh, please. Bernie Camarda, FMAC, speaking for myself, uh, 904 Ralph Avenue. Thanks. Um, a couple problems. The, um, the, the affordable housing, okay, the dishonesty that the, the, the board and the mayor have uh, told us. Um, because first of all, I know that the RFP uh, is in negotiations and everything, but you're putting out uh, RFPs for 77 units and 187 units, okay? Mr. Murphy said that it was only going to be 50 units. We were going to keep this, the, the same amount of public parking, and then they were going to add on to whatever parking the needs of the apartment building. So to me, that was probably at minimum a three tier parking lot. And he said that they weren't gonna take any other land than the than the, uh, uh, than the Hunter lot, okay? So there's a lot of dishonest things being said. With that being said, okay, um, now people have said they're, they're being displaced by flooding and they need affordable housing. Well, if Mamarinic could fix the flooding problem, those people wouldn't have to be displaced, okay? You have to be honest with everyone, just like you're honest with us. You can't fix the flooding 100%. But you can't fix flooding 
and affordable housing at the same time. Okay? You have to do one thing at a time. You said tonight in the in the in the work session, we have the FMAC has to be more specific on what they're asking. We have said very specific things. Dam, reservoir study, uh 95. We've been very specific. So you can't say that we're we're not specific. Okay. So this board, mayor, and the village manager cannot handle fixing the flooding. Army Corps just told us that they're not starting till 2025 and we have to pull out of our pocket now mamaronic is is liable for some of the money now okay so until the army corps gets uh hashed out and ironed out you can't even think about these rfps and have all these people come in for this affordable house okay the army corps project is way, way more. I don't care if somebody got up there and said, oh, we can't make one better than the other. I'm sorry, miss, but do you know what happens when we get flooded, okay, in front of the bakeries over there? The water is six feet high. Remember that, okay, when all of you walk and you all of you march in the 4th of July parade, the St. Patrick's parade, the Memorial Parade, the Columbus Day parade, Remember that when you walk in front of that bakery okay, and just imagine that you can't walk and function and that street is unfunctionable. Thank you, Bernie. Okay. And, Thank you, Bernie. and you cannot, and the village cannot manage all of this water. Okay. Remember Bernie, that you. when you walk through that area and when you have a parade that goes through. All right. Okay. I, and all you, of these people that are, all of these people that are displaced, Come on, you listen, Bernie. Bernie, uh, get the uh, priorities uh, straight, Lou. Get the priorities straight. Here. Okay, we we hear okay. you. Thank you, very, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right. Um, Peter, you want to talk? And then, oh, then we'll take Jirondi? you. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, we'll six, to, uh, does yeah. Jirondi, can yeah. Jirondi stay on or? Oh, no, I, I can just ask. I want to talk. Okay, just ask her. Uh, uh, Peter, Peter, it's only going to be three minutes. She can wait. Uh, okay, I do. I just asked. What? I just, I just put forward because I thought you wanted it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, what do you want? What, what do you need me to do? Well, uh, Durandy is on, is on the line. Okay, right? All right. All right. Dur yeah. Durandy, how you doing? Hi. How are you, Lou? Thank right. you, okay. everyone. Good evening. Um, uh, name, name for, please, just for the record. Durandy Martinez. As an organization, which is the Community Resource Center that advocates for immigrant and low-income families, I want to be clear that we recognize that flooding is an issue we are also flooded out and have not been able to return home yet after Hurricane Ida. So we have a lot of empathy for the community members that are talking about flood mitigation now, and I, we completely understand that. That being said, we want to be clear that we're not misinforming our community. We have been clear from the beginning that under HUD laws, developers or organizations are not allowed to guarantee housing. But we're also aware that immigrant communities may not qualify for this housing. And yet we still support the Hunter Lot Affordable Housing Project because it would build additional affordable housing that is so needed in this community and in our county. And I know we don't want to think outside of our community, but we have to because we're all part of a larger community. In a village that is as well functioning as ours, we should be able to focus on multiple high priority projects at the same time. So it's not one or the other, but rather yes and. We support affordable housing. We are not misinforming our community. And this is something that is coming from an organization that is still flooded and helped over 300 people return home and or deal with the flooding issues. We're not saying it's not important. We're just saying affordable housing is too. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. So I think you can read a lot of the room here and, and understand that there are advocates here for affordable housing. I am an advocate for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. However, I think it's very clear that we are unable to do and walk, do them and walk at the same time, right? So when we say, as the previous speaker was saying, that we can do both, it's very clear that we cannot. We have a budget that is ballooning, mm -hmm. right? We're paying for the 
credits. The taxpayer. The taxpayer. But we, we don't even know, A, how much it's going to cost because we put out an RFP without specific criteria, which of course we're, we're supposed to do the same with it. Right? When I asked that question six months ago, I said, I don't know, we're going to set out the RFP and find out. That's not how RFPs work. Okay? This is why we have a proposal for 108 units because we did not say must be 50 units or less. Okay. Secondly, we have all these people here that would like affordable housing. Putting in an affordable housing unit does not, again, reiterating what Love said, guarantee anybody those units in that building, right? So why do it? If we are helping our community, how is it helping our community? Except burdening us even more so by having to put the bill for the building and then and then support all, all everybody else instead of supporting the people that are already here. I'm not saying you know you don't want to welcome it. Anybody else from outside of town, that, that would be weird and unwelcoming. We're a welcoming community. But what people are speaking for is affordability for their own houses, for where they live now, because they are residents. Why not look into different programs like rent stabilization? That does not you know, require all this work. You know, it, obviously, it's going to be a lot of work, but that would then help the people that are here now. That are looking for affordable options, like the like the Avon. Now the rent six thousand bucks a month. Shouldn't that have been looked at? You know, you could have you know, stabilize those those rents. They were two thousand bucks a month a couple of years ago, but now now everybody's priced out. But instead, we're looking the other way. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the flooding. We're going to build this new building. Everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't see the logic. I don't see the rationale. I don't see the thought process. I don't see the funding. Those are the things that you need to do. And it's funny that the mayor is not here because, you know, where is he? Where, where's the manager? Where are the people that are in charge of the things that we are asking to be controlled and to be managed and to be proposed and discussed with the community in an open setting? Oh, thank you, Peter. Um, Quickly though, uh, I guess what say, we're not we're not building the building, and we're not paying for it. The developer's paying for it, right? So uh, we own the property. That's our property, right? All right, but I'm just I'm just saying. So it's it's not a, it's not. We can't speak on the. Okay. Okay. Um, I just want to say that. Mayor elect Sharon Torres. How are you? <laughs> and I want to make sure that y'all understand it's not about the affordable housing. It's really not. If you look at the RFP, it was vague at best. Only two vendors came back. That's not a good sign. One of them is 187 units with only 33 filling spots. Yeah. The other ones, I think 77 or 52 public spots. We have 200 now. 20 or so maybe are not usable. I might be slightly off, but that's still almost 200. We have firefighters who use that parking lot. Where are they going to go? Has anyone gotten any opinions from the fire department about safety, about how they're going to respond, what it does to response time, how far it goes? The biggest problem for me is not that it's affordable housing, because I support that. And I came from the Bronx. I lived at Eden Wall. It's a project. I understand. From 15 years ago, this is not the place I moved into. Okay. It's not about the affordability of housing. That's a problem. We all understand it. We all agree it has to be addressed. But this cannot be rushed through. Maybe it's taken a while to get here. The hunter chair lot might be a great spot. It's out of the floodplain. The parking structure, if you look at it, is falling apart. It's going to be dangerous. That doesn't mean in two weeks we flip around a contract. We need consultants to come in to understand this. We might have to rewrite the RFP. We have to look at what we're getting, and we have to push for fewer homes or fewer apartments, a shorter building or a lower level building, not six flights. And we need to have our parking 
And for me, I, I know that sounds crazy, but without the parking, our entire Avenue. Avenue just goes away. Right. Where are you going to put your cars? Where are the people from outside of America going to go? We're not going to have them anymore because they can't park. I have a three pass rule. If I go up and down three times and I can't find a spot, I go home yeah. or I go somewhere else. I live here. I want to be able to shop the Avenue. And I want my small businesses to thrive. And I want all of our residents to thrive. So please do not let this become a divisive thing. We have to pull together because if we can fix the flooding, we get more affordable units because now people can afford to live there. So remember, this is not an us versus them. It's we have a problem. We need to find solutions for flooding, which will help solve affordable housing. And we have to look thoroughly at this RFP. And if it takes another six months, so be it. We need something good and solid that we can be proud of. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is your second run here. Yeah. All right, but let, let's, folks. Let's let the, we, you know, it's getting late. So I let's. Something important to say. What? Okay, good, good. But let's let's go. I'm sure you do. Here just to talk anything. Okay. You know we're talking about parking, and I brought this up at a meeting about five yeah. months ago. The village owns two parking lots. Huh? One was uh, used to be Bob's um, Honda yeah. across the street, and the other one is behind uh, the flower shop behind Village Paint to the left there. Spencer. And they're they're pretty much full of commercial vehicles. Yeah. Now I know the business owners will probably hate me right now, but I'm a business owner. I can't run my business in a public parking lot or the street, and uh, and I'm in the Bronx and I can't do it. Um, I brought this up before. I don't understand how that's allowed. We have no parking, and uh, basically what Sharon just said, you're driving around. And you can't find parking after three or four times. You know what? The business owner loses because I'm leaving, and that's not fair to the business owners. I don't know why they don't complain, but I'll do it for them. Those parking lots were made for the businesses. The, the business pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Those parking lots should have never been permitted to commercial vehicles. I don't know why it happened. I brought it up before, but it went to deaf ears. Um, the village. I understand during COVID they put the seats outside, and that was great. But that also allowed a business to expand into the street. You know, you pay for rent in the building you bought, and then now they get to be in the street. Well, they, they pay for that too. What's that? They pay for that. Doesn't matter. I pay taxes, I got no parking. So when they came and they purchased their business, okay, they purchased a, a certain amount of property. They didn't purchase the street. Now you give them permits and you're letting, because they're paying. So once again, there goes the taxpayers, they get nothing. This is what we're complaining about. The residents in the Marinick, Always get short. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, okay. Please. <laughs> we got to get going, but go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. What? Okay. Hmm? I'm sorry. I'm Spencer. Okay. The parking lot. And we had a deal, and the village was all ready to go with it, that that would be tier robotic parking, and police headquarters would be on the ground level, and then the guy who owns the property behind it decided he didn't want to sell his property, so that was the end of it. However, you could do it now. Because the property on South Court is the sale. Okay. Okay. So you have plenty of room for everything. And the village owns Spencer. So we discussed this, I remember. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Did he have, and it was all going to be paid for by the company who was going to build the robotic to your park. Okay. And then when they got their money back from the bargers. It was then being given to the village. Because I've been here since 1961, so I think I know a lot of Well, people. everybody knows you, Nancy. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. We're good. All right. Glenn? Oh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a thing without Glenn. Here we go. Good night. We're back to you. Right. 150 506 Hill Street. I'm a member of the budget committee, but I'm here speaking as the 
Hi, Lord and Master of the autonomous region of Mamarnic known as Hill Street. Um, number one, when we do talk about flooding and flooding victims, it, it is a, a serious problem. We actually have 500 res less residents now than we did in 2019. We've, we've lost five 5,000 residents because we've lost well, 500. That, that much. Excuse yeah, me. according to the U.S. census, it's 500 people no longer live in this village. And that's from lost uh, housing with, with the flooding. Um, speaking of the, the flooding, what is going on with the way we have you bridge? And at this time, what 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 is what is the deal? Because one of the things that the Army Corps of Engineers wants is that bridge is going to be higher and wider to allow the uh, uh, flow of uh, water. And once that bridge is done, they're going to take out the pedestrian bridge, which once again will will help. I spoke to the town of Mamarna. I had Elizabeth call me back. There was never ever mentioned at any meeting between the village and the town about uh, a police detail or the village paying for a police detail. I was told straight out, if there is a piece of paper, a text message, something on the back of a cocktail napkin that says that there was a deal between the town of Mamarnik and the village of Mamarnik about police detail, they'd like to know about it. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will leave that at that. Orange Corps of Engineer. They came back 130 million, but what was the uh, the shocker? Well, we're picking up X amount of cost, and there's about 35 million dollars worth of cost out there. Uh, the state's going to pick up half, and then there's another 20 million, and the county may or may not be picking up. But where what is the going to be on the hook for? We don't have that money. We've raised our taxes, our operating budget, 25 percent over yeah, the last five years. Our operating budgets have 25% yes. over the last year. Do we have more in uh, unassigned funds? Yes, but our debt is also up mm -hmm. $3 million. There is no extra money. We have hired a lot of staff. Right now, um, and that list of items that, that you gave, none of those are paid for. They're not a majority paid for. The spray ground is not paid for. The, uh, the painting in the, uh, in the the red room, the blue room are not paid for. The um, extra storage is not paid for. The bandstand is not paid for. The, the you know, ballpark is not paid for. Lands of field. The playground is not paid for. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the truck that they want to have, the little Jeep truck is not paid for. The other rider for the, uh, is not paid for. The police boat may be paid for if they happen to get a grant, if not, maybe they get 90000 The docks are not paid for. So I'm not sure what you said when this stuff is paid for. We have $6 million sitting out there. None of it's paid for. And that doesn't include the $5 million you had before. We have never, ever had this much debt in the general budget. And if you pass all of that between this year and last year, you're talking about 3 or 4% raise in property tax just to cover those costs. Thank you, Glenn. Awesome. See anybody else? Thank you. Oh, all right. Rodney. Okay, I'm going to have you in the heights. Uh, been around this town for about, let's say, 10, 11 years hanging out. Uh, moved in here uh, five years so far. All intents and purposes, I'm going to Gotcha. in the midst of everything that's happening, this. That's the general lack of compassion. Um, I used to hear about the flooding and how bad the flooding was here. And then uh, the, uh, 2021 opened my eyes and saw the devastation. I'm from the Bronx. Um, I don't see flooding. Um, the rain for days, you know, I didn't go, I didn't go up and that's the environment. 
So to see like facing people was like, you know, the whole the whole life world being washed away. It's it's devastating. It's just really hard. And I, I, my heart goes out to all of you that lost, that suffered. Um, 2021 wasn't the first time in this town. And I think these people up here are trying to do their best to make things happen. I know it's a very dire situation. And personally, for, for someone that does, that's not directly always suffering from the situation, I don't want that thing. But I think things can be worked out if people have more compassion, have better discussion, you know, treat each other with like the same kind of empathy, the same energy you come here with. with with your anger and frustration. Sometimes that doesn't always resolve issues. Again, these people are human. They're doing the best. They were voted in for a reason. It's been about a year. I, I don't think it's fair that you have to fix issues that have been lingering in this town for ages in one fell swoop. And, uh, that's pretty much my statement. Things can go both ways. Everything can be done. Affordable housing is also important. I think uh, this, this town likes to kind of beat its chest on being all inclusive and like opening to like all types of people all walk away. Show it. I think this town needs to show it and not just like walk by and stand by. Thank you, Roger. Okay. Are you, uh, we're good. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for, for taking your time to talk and we, we appreciate the input very, very much. All right. Uh, public hearings. Yeah, we want to talk about the next two meetings. So we'll be talking about the actual proposals. Just let people know. The, uh, well, the Wednesday night and this coming Wednesday at five and August. then Tuesday at five, the individual Developers are going to be presenting the proposals, so yeah. just yeah. add up, you know, at he meetings here. In the yeah, see, well, the meetings are here, and they will be presenting to us. And and there's trust me, definite. There's I got some questions. <laughs> so uh, so whatever whatever is on those proposals, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hash out. Hmm. I I you don't have to come. I think they're presenting to us though. All right. So, so no, she are you asking to submit questions to the board? Developers, yes. Can we send the sure board? send them yes. send them on in? Yeah, send absolutely. Them. Sure, yes. sure. Absolutely. They are, they are public meetings. Yeah, they're public meetings. Yeah. So yes. send, send them on in. We, we, we just don't I want to hear what they have to say. And then uh, you know, I got I, I looked at it. I got some questions, same as everybody else, and uh, and uh, and I want to hear what you guys say. So, so, so send them on in. Yeah, sure, absolutely, absolutely. We all, you know, we're all. Uh... Voters just decided something, right? Should we just make them the next? Uh, let, okay, let, let's not. Uh, um, uh, we're going to start the process. We're not, just, we're not deciding we're anything. We're not deciding we're anything. Just having a. It's a public meeting, and it's just they're presenting the information. But if you want, yeah, if you have questions, decision. send them on in. And Sharon can send them in too. Right up. And she'll be here at the meeting, I'm sure. All right. So um I would I would expect she would be here. I would all right. So um public hearing now. Uh open public hearing on PLL U2023 regarding block parties and special events. Um help help me out here. Uh, this, with... so, uh, this is a local law proposal uh that originated from the police department. Uh it's to establish some additional requirements for uh, the block party application, which would include things such as who the sponsor is, uh, what the time frames are. It's kind of, everything else is kind of escaping me right now. Yeah. Uh, but um, I think we're just uh, trying to maximize the information that the police department has so that in the event that there is a block party, they know all the responsible parties, how to address any issues that come up. So, um, th th so this is yeah. So I, I have it in front of me. Um, I don't think we want to read the whole thing out loud here. But um, the uh, the the police chief was uh, felt that uh, um, uh, she needed, you know, parameters, and uh, and 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 these are that these these are the parameters. 
Um, uh, they've been published. Does anybody have any questions or comments about the proposed law governing? Oh, 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 oh sorry, thank you. Okay. I miss Tom. Uh, um, does somebody uh, make a motion to open the hearing, please? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so, uh, does anybody have any comments on the on the uh, proposed law? Um, anybody have any comments about block parties in in general? <laughs> right. Um, I don't. I think we should leave this open, right? I mean, uh, we we uh, leave it open. Like leave what open? Leave the public hearing open. I mean, we're not just going to. We're just going to vote. Uh, uh, nobody, no comments. Does anybody to vote have it? any comments? I mean, it's the it's the board's okay. choice. All right. You can All right. All right. So. so yeah. So, um, no input at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm? well, well, no, no, she, she asked for the parameters. They are in the law that was published and we're, and we're here to get public input on this, 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 uh, uh this proposal. It was published online. And this is something that we've been talking about for what, um, how long? Oh, so, so, uh, I think back since uh, August or maybe even earlier than that. But, you know, ba basically, you know, the, the changes to the law would basically be uh, if there, if the block party you're intending to serve alcohol, the application must be submitted by uh, someone 20 year, 21 years or older. Uh, all applications, if that, you're not serving alcohol, act can be 18 or older. Yeah, uh, application. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, it's like the names of addresses of the persons uh, sponsoring the activity, if any, um, anticipated uh, attendance, so we uh, know what to expect. I, it's it's uh, it's fairly common. I, yeah, I mean, the, I, our our block party law was a little old, as are many of the sections in our code. It's just kind of updating it to meet what you call modern. Standards and speak to you, audience. If you want to speak, you have to come up to the podium. Um, the the also the, you know like if if you if you petitioning to close a block, you got to live on the block. All right, that's that's that that makes sense. Um, uh, you got to be at least eighteen years old, as you mentioned. Uh, the um, you got to have the tele what, what you what the stuff you got to have on there. The 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 information of the applicant, the fees determined. Uh, the village manager must grant the permit. Uh, if it must grant it, if he conclude if he concludes that the uh, proposed activity and use will not unduly interfere with the flow of vehicular traffic, the proposed activity will not unreasonably interfere with or dis or detract from the enjoyment of a, of a park or wherever it's going to be held. Uh, the activity would not unreasonably interfere or detract from the promotion of public health, safety, welfare, and recreation. The proposed activity will not unreasonably restrict, obstruct, interfere, or impede pedestrian right of way, vehicles right of way, ingress or egress of the requested or budding property. And the proposed activity or uses that are reasonably anticipated will not cause violence, crime, disorderly conduct, or nuisance. So this gives the village manager a parameters for granting it. We have a village manager form of government. Uh, most of the authority, the executive authority, lies with the village manager. Um, so uh, this is this is uh, our guidance to uh, that person who who will be the village manager. So um, uh, I'm I'm happy with it. Um, I don't, anybody else on the board want to, everybody happy with it? It's fine. Yeah? Okay, all right. So, uh, Sally, call, call the roll, please. Oh, well, a motion to close a public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sally, call the roll, please. Okay, I, I move, a motion to adopt the, roll, the law. <laughs> so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sally, call the roll, please. Uh, Trustee Drawings? Yes. Yadja Reed? Yes. 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 Deputy Mayor Young? Yes. <laughs> All in unanimity. All right, how about that? All right, so that, that there's that. Okay. Um, audit of bills. Uh, uh, we have any comments on that? I have the uh, I have the audit. I um uh, Dan and I had a conversation, so my questions were answered. Um, you 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 you've gone over it. Everybody gone over it. Everybody happy? I think Nora's gonna still Nora? Okay. Last page. I think that's fifty nine. Last page. Um, you have two resolutions before the audit. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. All right, help me out here. 
I'm lost. Yes, I'm not being, being here. Sure. <laughs> Where? Sure. You're at the right here. It's the budget transfer and then the one behind it. Okay. Right you should probably run it. All right. So, so what's uh, what's up first here then? Engineering department budget transfer. That's for the. Uh, Okay, uh, rather, um, budget transfer to fund engineering department uniform budget line. Uh, this is an amount of uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Um, this is just moving from general fund to the from other general fund to to, to uh, other budget uh, for uh, yeah for uniforms. All right. Uh, any any comments objections? No. No. Motion to uh, approve. So moved. So moved. All in favor. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Next is a resolution funding for emergency repair to the village transfer station. This is a uh, uh, an emergency uh, um, transfer station was damaged. Uh, help me you know, fill me in on this again. This is so uh, we had a uh, a critical power failure at the transfer station. Uh, basically, it uh, lost uh, the electric service, so we had to uh, restore it, uh, which involved major trenching, uh, coordination with Con Ed. Uh, and as part of the process, uh, we had to rent a generator to keep the facility operational. And, you know, it's a, your sanitation facilities are an important component of public health in the village of Mamaroneck or any community. Um, so the uh, as part of this project, we are constructing a elevated platform for the generator, the new generator, uh, to uh, be placed. It will be located above the base flood elevation. Uh, it, uh, for example, you know, during Ida, uh, the, the existing generator, which powers the main facility, uh, was inundated with water, which you know had to be, which cost money to repair. Uh, this going forward will allow us to maintain the operability of these stations in the event of a uh, flood emergency. Uh, as far as the platform, uh, there were additional requirements that uh, Con Ed required us to meet uh, that required redesign of the project, which extended the amount of time we had to rent the emergency generator. Uh, and because of, you know, just the ever increasing cost of steel. Uh, we're asking for additional funds to effectuate the construction of the new platform to maintain the long-term operability of the Right, the and I remember, remember now that because of the extended use of the generator, which was rented, that literally burned up some of the funds. So uh, we, we need to- uh, Yeah, I think we spent something like $60,000 yeah, just so, on the emergency power. This is, uh, this is for the amount of 100, and $28,000 um, uh, to bring the funding back up to $253,000. And, uh, and this kind of flood resiliency we're building in is, um, is uh, effective because if you, if you look at what happened at, uh, over at uh, Volunteers uh, um, Fire Station, it, it was trashed after Ida, took a long time to fix it. We raised everything, we made it flood resilient. It was flooded again recently and it was only a couple of days we had it back online. So, so this this kind of flood uh, anticipation and and protection uh, actually pays off in the long run. That's the thing. Uh, yes, sir. You want to talk about this? I say something first. Yeah. I, I, so, of course. I'm concerned about this. Not that I, I don't think we should do it, but we're paying for this tonight, which means it's done, and there was no change order, and that's just not an okay process. Okay. So, uh, so uh, should we not uh, vote for it? No. I I'm, I don't want to encourage us incurring expenses and, and, and entering into exchange orders without actually having gotten the change orders. So I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned. Okay, you can say, so, so what, what should we do? You can do what you want to do. Okay. I'm, I'm, I, you're with us. We're all together. Well, we are, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not in support of this because I think we have to get, get our process in order and we have to do things in a logical manner as prescribed by law this we, this is on the audit of the bills tonight 
if it were an expense we we're gonna be entering into in the future, it would be one thing, but we're being asked to approve something clearly after it's done. And that's not, that's not the, that's not, we're not fulfilling our fiduciary obli obligations. You haven't constructed the, uh, uh, the platform yet. Part of it is to initiate the process of constructing it. But we're paying 128,000, we're paying, we're doing a transfer tonight and paying the bill tonight. And there should have been a change order. That's my that's my concern. I, we have to be more systematic about how we manage our money. We've just found out today, which some people had suspected, that we the federal government isn't complete taking our whole share of the Army Corps plan. And now we know the Army Corps plan is going to cost more money. We really aren't operating fiscally responsibly. Well, I mean, but 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 to be fair too. We always thought that the the plan was going to cost us at least eight million dollars, and that was taken off the table. And, and nobody, uh, you know, that was nobody was ready to open champagne when that happened. So we, you know, that was an eight million dollar gift. We're, yeah, listen, we got to do this. That we got to we're going to have to pony up some money. I mean, I don't think we can complain about that. Um, but I'm not, I'm not complaining. It's just there's an un, there is not an unlimited pot of money for which to spend. Just asking for a process. Okay, it's so, uh, understood. Is is, is there? Is there something else that we're not okay with um, proceeding with? I mean, outside of this. I mean, I mean that's uh, it, 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 it for me today. That's I mean, it? That's right. it for me today. I mean, um, I understand that we need this. Um, uh, uh, if we if we push it off, is it going to be ready with flood resiliency by the time uh, we're back in uh, hurricane season? You know, I mean, uh, that's the other question. I, I don't. I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah, right. uh, I mean, uh, this this is a this is a this is a a, a, a not a, it's not a flood mitigation matter, but it's a flood resiliency matter, and uh, and I I just think we're we're maybe we're disappointed, but I think we're stuck. Um, over them, all right. But that's that's just my my feeling, Mr. Teeger. Yes, I would say you're certainly stuck because I. I don't know how this is a change. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, state your name for the record, please. Stuart Teeker. Okay. Um, I don't know how this is a change order. Is there a contract for this work? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, uh, anything else? Do you have a good answer? I, I'm, no, we'll, we'll find out. If you have anything else you'd like to say, say to the board on this? I know of no contract for this work. Um, steel prices haven't gone up that much. You're not paying for fuel with this $128,000. You're paying for the platform fabricated by the company that's, you know, you're paying a bill for tonight. The board's the talking is, about going into a lot. Any of you understand how chain builder is supposed to work in a contract? Thank you. I'm not done. Okay. So a change order generally Didn't comes think so. from the contract. He says, oh, we have this extra work. So they go to the owner of the project, that would be the village, and says, we have this amount of work. It's mm -hmm. going to cost this much. Mm -hmm. Are you going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. Then you guys make a decision. That's not what happened here. Mm -hmm. This project doubled in price for a steel platform that apparently wasn't even envisioned when you started doing this work. So you guys are obligated to pay the contractor who's going to sue your ass. The question is, why was this, why was he given a go-ahead when this board hadn't approved this work? You start doing this on major projects, we're all in trouble. All right, we'll make the inquiry. Thank you, sir. But I think you're not hearing me. Are you? I, 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 I'm, uh, do you understand what's gone wrong in the process? Uh, I, I believe I do. Yes, but I, okay. but uh, but uh, I, I believe I said we were stuck. In any event, uh, are you, are you finished or no? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, a few months ago. This board approved a three and a half million dollar brand new contract as a change order. I raised the point then, this is no way to spend the residents' money. 
you guys are spending our money mm -hmm. and the way you're doing it is irresponsible. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. So I think moving forward, because if it was mentioned before, Oh, I'm so oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Hello. No. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can. Beta Rally Road, I, I really am just a frustrated taxpayer, and I just want to say, please, we have to stop spending. It, funds are not unlimited. We, the taxpayers, my mortgage went up $100 a month because of our taxes. So we can't continue to spend. We have to rein it in. Okay. And you're spending our money. It's It's got to, it's got to stop, you have to start really seeing what do we need money for? And you're saying we're gonna be picking up the flooding. Where's it coming from? It's coming from us, the taxpayers. And how many more hours can we work? You have to rein in the spending in this town. It is out of control. Thank you. All right, so um, we need a resolution then. I have a, I have a, okay. I have a comment question. I don't mm -hmm. even know to us as a board. Um, it's it's like what a what a time to come into government uh is when a lot of these a lot of um vehicles a lot of things old buildings have to be fixed new vehicles have to be purchased because they're out of they're out of warranty and um or going to be out of commission and it's just and then there's also time, things that there's like a wish list, things that we want and we want to, to and we want to improve and why our community is so great in terms of um, the anonymities that come with this town that even I didn't have when I was growing up here. Um, but we do have to, at some point, think about Think about our spending, how we're going to spend it, but also keep in mind that it just it's a it's a poor hand that we were dealt. That a lot of our our vehicles, a lot of our things are expiring around the same time. We also it's a poor hand that we are dealt. That, that sometimes a lot of our the things that we are replacing were affected by the floods. It's a poor hand that we were dealt when you know it just it's a real sucky poor hand that we were dealt in this particular time. Uh, but keep it in mind it. Of, of our spending, but also figuring out, as Nora had stated earlier, um, is coming up with something, but also relying heavily on our um, our experts, our clerk treasurer, our village manager, um, the people who work for the village in terms of how we are budgeting and how we are paying for it. So that when people do come up here and have questions, that we can somewhat give them something because this is not going to stop. They come up here every single time and say the same that same thing, and we um, have to figure out a way to have some type of answer, not simply just say, "Well, I have I I've said this and I've said that," and not have an answer. So that's just my comment. I don't know if there was a question, but there was a comment. Okay, and and, and again, this is an emergency repair. An yeah, emergency. I mean, yeah. So, so, um, because you solved the emergency. So, no, 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 please, emergency. please, 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 please. You the power back in for the other $125,000. Emergency's over. They don't just keep going. And you want to, you want to leave that new piece of equipment right there where it can get flooded the next flood. I, but that's not an emergency. I An emergency it. is something that has to be done. In the okay, meeting. well, we could we could debate that some other time, but thank you. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your input, sir. Understood. I hear you. We heard, we heard you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, okay. So this is an emergency repair to Village Transfer Station. And um, no, 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 no. Miss, miss, please. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, you keep I'm reading off of the page. What, you, what this is for is building a steel platform to put the generator on. It's not to fix the transfer station. Please stop misinforming the public. Okay, so um, uh, do but we have- Could the emergency- Okay, but let's, let's, I'm not gonna, let's not quibble over- Could the emergency- Let's not quibble over, over uh, uh, verbiage. Okay, so um, do, we, do I have a motion to, uh, to approve this or, or not? 
Motion to approve. So, so moved. So moved. Second. 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 Okay. Um, Sally, call the roll, please. Trustee Rawlings. Yes. Geyser Reed. Yes. Lucas. I'd prefer to to get rid of emergency from the title of it, um, but I mean I'm going to vote for it. But I really, okay. uh, but I really want to send the message I that, hear you. that we have to be tighter, uh, tighter. We have to be tighter, tighter. way tighter, and you know we have to have a way better process of auditing the bills because we're not looking at the bills the way we you should. Got it. Okay, and that. I'm hoping it's going to change. Okay, all right. Can you put that on the next work session agenda in terms of, uh, you know? Yeah, I will. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would that would be yeah. nice if you put it on, on the agenda. That'd be great. waiting. Okay, great. All right, all right. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, approved. Okay, there we go. Now, I am going to call Tom and give him a piece of my mind. All right. This is the updated one here. Okay, so so next is the audit of the bills. Audit bill is it is that this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, next is the audited bills. The grand total of one million nine hundred and twenty-six thousand one hundred two dollars and fifty-four cents. This is a primarily, um, uh, if I recall, it was reimbur uh, uh, re reimbursement of uh, of. Um, we escrow? Was that it? No. 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 If you can look at the last page. Oh, no. It'll show what the. Uh... Oh, no. These are okay. so This is uh, opt in, uh, dental insurance, optical insurance. Okay. This, these are these are basic. Yeah. These are the, uh, the basic. benefits. Does anybody have any uh, uh, issues on this, uh, this list of bills here? Okay. All right. Uh, we need a motion to approve. Okay. Public comment. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. Are you... okay. 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 Sure. I'm sure you do. Go ahead. Um, you know, at the last meeting during audit of the bills, the mayor asked the village attorney whether the board of trustees had to approve the audit of the bills. I believe the village attorney said, no, you don't. I believe technically the village attorney may have been correct, mm -hmm. but I believe it was a very misleading answer. Okay. Here's what 5-524 of village law is. In a village which has not established the office of auditor, the Board of Trustees shall audit all claims against the village, except that it may, by resolution, authorize and empower a separate Board of Commissioners, a Board possessing the powers of two or more such boards, or another Board possessing like powers to audit the order paid to audit and order paid all claims incurred by such boards. All right. Um, so I'm still going. Oh, yeah, yeah. But do you have any, any comments about, the, about these bills? I have a comment about the audit of the bills. I believe I have three minutes. I'd like to not I'll, be I'll, interrupted. I'd like you to get to the point. Thank you. Um, so we have not appointed an auditor. You running the clock? Okay, thank you. We have not um, formed a, a board, but I believe this board should because it's general, generally understood that this board seldom knows what it's paying for. <laughs> here are my comments. Here are my comments about the auditor bills. Page twenty six, top of the. Page, there are three payments to Richard Falcari for plan review. I've lived in the village 40 years. We currently have twice the amount of employees in the building department. We don't have somebody in the building department that can review plans. 
seems incredible to me. Um, so I don't understand why we're paying an outside person and do plan review. I really don't. Does that mean so? No, sir, not yet. Okay. Yeah, eight seconds. And I will just, you know, end <laughs> on what I started with on page 59 is the payment to be any iron works for fabrication, installation of structural frame and transfer station or transfer station generator, all work to be hot dip galvanized, all this stuff. Okay, so thank that's you. That's what you just paid. Thank you, sir. How you do how you order work before you do a change order should be cons of concern to all right. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. So um yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking through here. These are these are basic bills. I, I looked through them. I, did, I didn't have any any uh, particular questions. I see a lot of it is Medicare reimbursement to uh, to uh, retirees, including uh, some former members of this board. And uh, um, uh, so it's one million nine hundred twenty six thousand. No. What? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, Glenn. I, uh, I have two questions. One, uh, uh, we've been having uh, a lot of. Uh, Bills from data uh, to control. Mm -hmm. we, we have it in this. Uh, do we have a monthly contract? Do we have a contract on certain properties? Um, the last meeting, we had a large bill for data pet, uh, pest control that was actually charged to the trustees, mm -hmm. like 6000 Then we have the manager's office. Uh, as it, one the last month, it said it was a three month bill, then there's another mm -hmm. month bill, monthly bill, this bill. And then it had a Center Avenue inspection, mm -hmm. three hours, two hundred fifty dollars. So another seven hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, what what is what is our exact um, uh, contract with Dana Test uh, Pest Control with this stuff? Because at, at this point, you're spending eighty ninety thousand dollars on the Rat Patrol. <laughs> that's, that's the the thing. other question I have is we have under celebrations two thousand dollars for an ice sculpture. <laughs> For the uh, for the Santa Claus experience, we're not in a great year this year. Our beach did not bring in nearly what it was supposed to. Our parking is coming in on the light side, and when you adopted the budget, you asked the village manager to go back in there. So the original budget that was scheduled to have a over seven percent um, property tax increase, he went in there. And made adjustments with the budget, and some of them aren't, aren't uh, you know, uh, panning out. <laughs> it says, yet we we spend money like you know, we're, we're in celebration time. Right. It says it's nice to have all these wonderful things and everything. They're always talking about flooding. We're doing ice sculptures for two thousand dollars. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's all. All right. Do, do we, do we... Can somebody? Um... Okay, uh, uh, Trustee Geiser would like uh, uh, one of the staff to, talk, to inform, inform us about the um, pest control contract. Thank you. Well, Dan or Jerry, it doesn't matter. Cheers. Pest control contract was put in through the IDA funding because yeah. it was impacted. The reason it happened was because of IDA. Mm -hmm. That's coming to an end now. Okay, so and, and and those bills are are they all rodent related? Dana Pest Control does our uh, rodent control at DPW, and they also have been doing the rodent control in the village. So, um, Jerry, where is that money coming from? It's from the fund that we have for Ida. Okay, thank yeah. you. All right. But, so, uh, does that mean it's being reimbursed by FEMA? We've applied, we've, we've applied for reimbursement, and so far they've approved quite a bit of all of the other items that we have. We haven't gotten to that point yet. Okay, thank you. Thank all you. right, so, all right. Do you have any uh, specific questions, uh, Nora? Uh, well, the biggest question I had was the fabrication. Okay, all right, the change order. So that, that uh, certainly is valid, all right, but... Uh... I hope I'm not going to be the Grinch again and complain about overtime for the um, Christmas. <laughs> All right. Uh, should we wait for Lilani to get back or do, or do we have to, do we have to vote to, to do this now? 
What? There's somebody here. Yes. I, I know. Are you are you uh, I'm okay. I can wait for the Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, she's not here for the for the bills. All right. She's, she's... You're here for the to address the board, right? Yes. We'll call we'll call you up when 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 that when that comes. Thank you. There'll be another opportunity. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So um Motion. Well, you know, if we don't need if we don't need Lilani, then she wouldn't have the vote. Um, a motion to uh, approve the uh, the bills here. So moved. I'll second it. Sally Colbert. Roll. Trustee Rowling. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Deputy Mayor Young. Yes. Okay. Approved. All right. Uh, so I got to sign this, right? Yep. Okay. Pass it down. You have to write the check. Mm -hmm. You got it? Oh, sorry. Let's check I have a room. All right. Uh, what's next now? Now I'm completely out of here. Go up to the uh, business. Oh, one. Okay. What are the bills? That was the abstract, right? Okay, great. Okay. Old business, none. All right, new business. Resolution authorizing capital purchase for Harbor Bastard to replace Harbor One vessel. All right. Any uh, any comments? We discussed this in work session. All right. Work session two weeks ago. Yeah. All right. So. Um, all right. Any comments? Any comments? All right. I'm going to make the same comment that I've been okay. making. I'm kind of a broken record. Again, okay. like we just, it's on that big, big, big list we have, and we just keep pulling things off the list and never prioritize them. Okay, well, we'll, 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 uh, we'll reset, but uh, the, these are the things we have now, and they, he, he needs it. We need a new boat, so, uh, so uh, I'll accept you know, I think the, mm -hmm. I think the current boat is, was yeah. 1982. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, motion to um, yes, I'd like yes. to ask something. Although I do watch every meeting, I don't actually remember the cost for everything from the reception two weeks ago. So, when we go through new business and it's a authorization, can you guys just tell us how much it's for? All right, good, good, 90,000. This one, 90,000, 90,000. Okay, yes, all righty. Um Wait, Dan, where are you? It was, it was 95, 371, 94. But in, in case there's some increases in cost of the boat, we're asking for 100,000. I, I just pulled this list. Oh, off the yeah. last, last yeah. We did, when we discussed it two weeks ago, it was nine. Yeah, but it's a, a $100,000 authorization uh, to cover any uh, unexpected price. It was 90 for the boat, I think 5,000 for the ancillary equipment. Okay. All right. So, um, motion to approve. Motion to approve. So, second. Second. No, second. Second. I'm sorry. Second. All right. All in favor? All in favor? Need to call the roll. Oh, call, call the roll. Oh, yeah, it's money. You got to call the roll, right? Trustee Rowling? Yes. Lisa Reed? Yes. Lucas? No. Deputy Mayor Young? Yes. Okay. Okay. Resolution authorizing dates and street closure for. 2024 Fireman's Carnival and Parade. I think we can do that without uh, controversy, yes? Any 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 co comments? So fireworks is July 4th. That's pretty normal. Mm -hmm. The parade this year is uh, Friday, is Thursday. No, Friday no, the 28th. The Friday the 28th. Would... Friday, June 28th. Mm -hmm. The carnival is from the 27th to the 6th. All right. Okay. Uh, all in favor. Motion. motion to motion to pass. Yes. Zero dollars. It's, it, it, it's just author authorizing closure dates for the fireman's carnival and parade. So. Somebody, I moved. Yeah, I moved. Second. I uh, second. Okay. We could do that all. Do all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Resolution authorizing funding for capital project for the parks department ride on mower. How much is that? 40, 40 what? 
41,000 dollars $41, includes okay. the trailer as well course, what it was a, the trailer to the trailer as well which which is uh which is a dual purpose i remember that then. all right we discussed it um any comments it's electric it's a oh and it's and it's electric that's right so so we have a yeah, okay, yeah, you. good. Yes, sir. Hi, Rich Langford, again. Hi, Rich, Rich. What's up? Um, so I was looking at some prices, and I know you, we have a professional lawnmower, mm -hmm. but $40,000 was top of the line for an electric oh, right. mower. I think we can, we could probably hire a landscaping company to start doing it for $40,000. That's, that's an enormous amount of money to cut grass. And you said it, there's a trailer that's involved, but... Don't we already have trailers? Yeah. Why are we getting a brand new trailer for uh, the same type of mower that we've already had? The well, um, DPW of the six. It wasn't. It was yeah. parks. Yeah, we, it was well, it parks was and record. Park department. Yeah, and we need the trailer because, I, uh, for an electric mower, it would you know drain a lot of the battery just driving it from location to location. Right. But do we are, are we replacing one that was from gas or? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, so it's, it's, where's, it's a, the, where's the trailer for that one that we're we we don't we didn't well, we need a trailer because we were able to drive that. That one, one drives. That one drives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, we're going to be buying a trailer to to, yeah, to move it around this, the village. To, to I had that same question, yeah, um, Richard, and yeah. Um, I think that this, the 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 reason why is because the community wanted wants to move more towards green energy, and. It may not be everybody, but I think there are a lot of people in the environmental committee has suggested it in terms of just moving more towards green energy and is the reason why we were, we were trying to switch over to these things. And unfortunately, because I had the same question, like, why we need a trailer to trail, you know, and I'm and but. That is the reason if you want more clarification, we do have um, Mr. On who can give you more clarification on as to why that was chosen that particular one and the trailer and he can tell totally give that information to you if you like it have, have, have there been studies to see how long these this yeah. electric mower will last are we going to be buying a new one in three years because the batteries die on them and or <laughs> well i i don't think i mean it's a lot of a lot of these places don't even sell uh the the uh, other ones anymore so um, you know I, I guess going back to my comment earlier you know we, we try to make smart decisions all of us because we have to pay for our bills mm -hmm. I just think asking the community to pay forty thousand dollars for a lawnmower it is Absolutely. ridiculous. Okay. Um, I think there's other options that are out there, and maybe we can't go all electric for our lawnmower, and we can do it some other places. But you know, there there has to be a cheaper, a more affordable way than going all electric for a lawnmower. I mean, the boat that we all know takes a lot more in, in maintenance is ninety thousand. So we're gonna, or now it's a hundred, but. We're, we're going to spend half of that to mow once. I just think that, you know, maybe we should look at the, the a more efficient gas mower for now and wait for the technology to catch up so that the, those mowers could be a little bit more affordable. $40,000 is a lot of money. It's a lot of money for this village. And I think it's just, it's, it's not worth it. Thank you. Thank you. Peter? You gotta second that because uh, okay. it is an absurd amount of money for a lot more for a lot more that we don't need because we have gas powered ones. Mm -hmm. You're looking to do something green to offset is the, the use of gas by installing solar panels. You utilize some of the land that we might have, install solar panels that actually has a return on the investment mm -hmm. instead of a capital expenditure which has emission returns and will ultimately. We worked with in three years when the battery. Well, we don't know that, but the fact. No, we do because it's we the, the technology is out there. It, it's not new. These batteries drain. Anybody that has a bunch of car will tell you in ten years they're shot, and it costs more to replace the battery than it does to replace the car. All right, thank you. I I, I really feel disrespected when you dismiss me like that. Oh no, thank you, thank you. But. But you're not even hearing me. I hear you. You 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 don't think it's a good idea. Uh, you think the the well, batteries would bring what? Many people don't. Okay. And it's, and it's the largest expenditure of our money. I know it's not your money. Right. Well, some of it's my money. I, I live. Please, 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 please. Uh, 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 all right. What are we? What's your pleasure with this one? Yes. I, I can't take it in. I really can't. Okay. My name is Daniela Bierman. I live on Birch Lane in the Heights. I've been here 
My, my parents moved here 22 years ago. I've been here 15 years. Mm -hmm. and I don't get it. We're the taxpayers. It's our money. The only time we have a vote is putting you on this board. Mm -hmm. and, that, and so then it gives you free reign to spend the money however you guys feel fit. Because we don't want it, but you're still doing it. Um, Lerana, you made a comment that, you know, it's all happening at the same time, okay? When I bought my house, my house needed $200,000 worth of work. I didn't have $200,000 to replace absolutely every single thing it needed at once. You prioritize what you need done, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't see how you prioritizing a lawnmower. I'm getting as angry as Daniela was up here. I'm losing, I'm kind of like losing my mind a little bit because my taxes went from 8,000 to 15 now. Why? Why? I don't understand. All the things you're doing here, it's just like a mountain on top of a mountain on top of a mountain. And you spend it like if I had the chance to spend somebody else's money to fix my house, huh? Do you know what my house would look like? So I know what you're doing here because it's not your money. When you spend somebody else's money, you go fuck wild. <laughs> but, but that's not fair. It's not fair to people. You need to prioritize what you're doing here. Let's get our let's get our house in order. This is our house. Our house. Come on, bro. What's going on here? Thank you. What's your pleasure on this? Is it, does any do, do we uh, do we want to buy the uh, the uh, mower that the park the parks department has asked for, or do you do you not? Uh, please don't argue. Uh, uh, yeah, we we heard you. Please, we heard you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So so what's your pleasure? Is either we're gonna put it on like like Guru said, put it on the side, or move forward and. It is a tough decision because you sit, we listen to the people who are right in front of us, which we have to, and that's, you know, it's the right thing to do. But then we also listen to the people who are not in front of us, who don't have the luxury to come here and state the things that they want to state. Um, and it could be the opposite voice. So we have to take everybody's voice in consideration and not just the people who show up on Monday nights. Well, so, I mean, but that's the truth. No, 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 I know I'm not going back and forth. Okay. I'm, I'm stating what I'm stating based upon the facts that I have in front of me okay. and the facts that I listen to. Mm -hmm. So it's not, and I'm making a, I'm making an observation. I'm not going back and forth. Mm -hmm. I'm making an observation. Okay. So the observation is that we have voices present. We also have voices not present. Understood. And we have to go with the information that is presented to all of us at all times. Well, so let, let, let's let's do this then. If if the uh if the parks department wants to uh, remake the case for the Lou, Lou, can I yeah, Lou, can I recommend something? Sure, yeah. sure, please. Thank so, you. So so Jeff Jeff didn't want an electric mower. I yeah. asked him to quote an electric mower because it's an initiative from the Committee for the Environment and a lot of conversation. I think Jeff would be satisfied with a replacement gas mower okay. since he has so much grass to cut and we can forget about the electric idea and just abandon that. Um, and I think Jeff may have that price to okay, be able good, to good. purchase that mower. And so instead of an electric mower, we just get a gas mower. Okay, yeah, well, let's do that. what that would cost. Let, let, okay, let, let's do that. Let's do this then because we, we don't, we don't. Can let, go ahead. So I think that um, this is, we do need to get a new mower. I mean, that's, we have we need to get a new mower. Um, we have asked, I mean, not just the Committee for the Environment, but we have adopted a law requiring people to use electric mowers. And that's what's, that's, that seems to be, you know, the state of the art. That's what's happening. All, Rye Town, you see, you in all of their parks, and they have quite a few parks. And um, we've adopted, we're, we are, we are having a public hearing on a law that requires the village in addition to everybody else to use an electric mower. So in order for us to- Electric mower, not mower, not mower. That's true. Yeah. But we are requiring everybody, we are requiring people to use these electric blowers because they're better for the environment. And this is an initiative that we're doing as, as a result of the Committee for the Environment. So I think maybe what we should do is put this off for two weeks mm -hmm. and have a conversation about it because it's really about 
you know, th this is not, this, this may not be what the Parks Department actually wants to do. They've been asked to do it and, and, you know, they do a great job and they have to mow a lot of grass. And it's a, it's like, it's a, it's a toss up. Does the community want to go electric and which is better for the environment? Or does the community want to stick with gas because it's somewhat less expensive? So, and, uh, and I think I'm, I have to say, I'm really glad that everybody was here tonight because I'm thinking about lawnmowers because, you know, we have a lot of things that, 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 you know, that are, that the staff needs and the staff makes a case for, and there isn't a lot of interest in what we buy. And this is something that everybody seems to be interested in. Okay, so, so let's put it off for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, have, fine. I'm sorry, Jeff. But have a conversation and, and, and see and pros and cons because there's some people who really think we should move to this and some people think it's too much money and let's figure out like what's a good choice for everybody good, good that's good that's a good idea now, the 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 idea and when, when the leaf blower thing comes up um uh we're you know the proposal is to ban the gas leaf blowers outright and Which um we have done. what We've done it. We're okay. just modifying the law. To modifying the, the law, all right? And and, and, we, and and I thought it was hypocritical for us to tell people they can't do it, okay. and then we did it, right? So, but we're going to do that, but it costs more money, right? So, so you know, um, and just like this thing, um, they, they don't want you know, they want us to uh, set an example with electric, not gas. So we, we're 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 following that. We hear those voices, just as passionate as the voices here. So we do this. It's more expensive. So let's put it off and let you know you folks and the and the and the folks who want the electric stuff can kind of hash it out and we'll and we'll listen and we'll we'll just decide one way or the other. So I think we could put this this one off. And thank you for coming up. I mean, I'm not. I wasn't trying to disrespect anybody. I understand. Forty grand's a lot for a mower. I get it. I would. I said the same thing. But go electric, go electric, go electric, go electric. That's what you're hearing. All right. It's not that it's not what you know. It's not necessarily what we want. Okay. To the people. All right, so we're going to put it off there. We're, we're we're done with this one. This one. Well, I, mean, I, was say, I, I own two electric cars, and yeah. they're forty thousand each. So for a car that I use a ton of, like, okay. so, understood. You know, I hear you. I believe in the green environment too, but I think that's an excessive. For a lot of uh, okay, that's fair, fair, fair. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna wait. We're gonna we'll, we'll talk to Jeff about it. Maybe mm -hmm. he didn't. Larry has something to say. Yeah, go ahead, Jerry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So we're bringing we're bringing back to the board in two weeks the gas powered mower price mm -hmm. to replace an existing mower that we have that needs to be replaced. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I mean, well and we have this one too, and then there'll be a conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we, we if we just if we just go the other way, we're going to hear the same thing from the other and side. I think, and I and I think that. And I just like normally, I mean, it, I don't think it needs to go back on work session. This could be a conversation that we have at the board meeting when people can speak and about it. And that's a positive it. thing. And that's what democracy is all about. And we're happy about that. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your input. We hear you. Thank you. All right. So next now uh, is, oh gosh, we're going to be here all night. Um, resolution authorizing funding of capital project for the recreation department of Toro Workman. All right, this is uh, how much and, and what exactly are we talking about again? I'm, I'm trying to remember this. Uh, it was, uh, it's, uh, the, it's $28,000 or $28,710. Uh, the uh, utility vehicle is $25,710 and uh, we're asking $3,000 for the appropriate lighting package. For the what? Uh, the lighting package. The lighting package. Yeah, to, for, you know, to put on the vehicle so people can see what's coming. Oh, got it, got it, understood, yes. And also, if, if, depending on what time of day we're using it. It's, yes, yes. It's yes. dark pretty late now, or pretty early now. Uh, you know, we're currently using a golf cart to... You know, yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah, you know, an electric golf cart that, uh, in, in for... In, in a manner that was never really designed for, where we're actually uh, running it down, yeah. using it rather than using the most appropriate okay. yeah. um, vehicle for what they need it for. What she said. <laughs> okay, so that's it. So this is a twenty-eight thousand uh, dollars for a uh, Toro Workman. Uh, we remember it was uh, to replace the uh, or take the the, uh, the the pressure off the golf cart that we're wrecking. Um, what's uh, anybody got any comments on that? No? All right. What's your pleasure? I, Jason, are you still there? Yes, I'm Thank here. You. Good job. <laughs> um, is this something that you're going to be using in the wintertime? Uh, this is not going to be used for 
salting and like plowing. Uh, it's not that type of vehicle. Um, this is something that we're going to use for maintenance purposes. Uh, the park is 44 acres, so it's quite big and we're all over the place, especially with like the dog park now and different programs and also beach maintenance, heavy moving sand, moving buoys. And we do it all ourselves on the beach. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not for snow, if that's what you're asking. Okay, I just want to know the usage for right now. And also, do we know, do you know if this is something like everything else that is going up in price? This is going up in price. And it also takes about eight months to a year to even arrive. Okay. Um, so if you order it a year from now, I would say at least 5% is what I've been seeing in the market from year to year. Um, okay. that, no, in other words, uh, you, you, I remember this now. You say, if we don't buy it now, we're going to pay more later. Yeah, and it's just going to take a long, a long time to come. But obviously, you know, every you got to make your decisions and your choices. So whatever it is, we're, we're, we'll make do uh, with what we're what we're given, as we always do in the recreation department. We're pretty resourceful. All right, All right. thank you. What's going on? There's like a button. There's a panic alarm. Awesome. Oh, I was hoping that it was not like a rodent or something, and then I have to leave. <laughs> gotta get some water. All right, so then just hold on. We. I guess under somebody's foot, they hit the panic button. So, so lucky, lucky SWAT uh, uh, people didn't rush through the door here. We accidentally hit uh, that barrier. Oh, but that's smart to know. I didn't even know that it was there. Did anybody know that it was there? I knew it was there. Well, good job. Well, Somebody there's a panic button on the dais. Really, I mean, for the board, but also for the judges. We are. Good to have. Wow, you can't even have to tell us what they All right. Um, I've been distressed. I, 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 I think, I, I think this, this makes sense. I mean, you know, we're not, there's an eight, eight month lag on it. It's 28 grand, it's 28 grand, but um, I'll take a motion. Um, Deputy Mayor Lou, also, this is a piece of equipment that's going to last easily 20 years i mean we jeff has toros that are i remember that yes yeah they drag man They're, that this is a piece of equipment that will take a beating so do i have a motion to approve this from anybody uh second no no oh, yeah, motion. Motion. motion oh so sorry i'm so sorry uh so moved okay sorry second sally call the roll no Geyser lead. <laughs> Let's revisit it when we re revisit the mall. Or... It's a snow? Yeah. Okay. So, well, I say yes. Mall. That doesn't matter then. No, doesn't. Okay. I'm going back to my. Okay. All right. Well, no. just, just say no. We don't have to do it every time. You're not pleading the fifth. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, next is resolution authorizing funding of capital purchase for recreation department, blue and red room ceiling and floor tiles. That is, uh, and, and um, uh, that's a public space in the, um, uh, at the Harbor. And, and what was the cost on that again? 60. 60. Wow. 60? Mm -hmm. But those are flood resistant, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, the, the Harbor on Pavilion, given its location is, subject to flooding, as you can imagine, it's right on the water. Uh, the floor tiles in the building have reached the end of their useful life. They're actually pretty pretty gnarly, uh, pretty dirty. Uh, what we're proposing to do is replace the uh, floor tiles with a new floor tile that in the event of a flood can be picked up, removed, washed off, when dry, they're good to go. Uh, so what was that? Uh, I, I, uh, please, if you yeah, want to come up here. I, I don't know the exact composition. Not from the audience, please. Uh, but you know, this is really kind of helping to maintain the integrity and usability of the facility, especially after okay. a major event. We actually rent this. This is this is the, one the of these rooms. Is used by is keeps. Used, used by keeps. We rent kids, the kids using part this. Of a, part of a, uh, a, uh, a, a revenue stream, right? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, it's part of that revenue stream. I'd be like that. Jason, do you know how oh. old the tiles are that we have there now? Protect the revenue stream. Protect the revenue stream, exactly. You're muted, Jason. Sorry. Um, 
predate me, um, predate the previous superintendent. So I'm a I'm I'm anticipating at least twenty ish plus years. Um, as anyone's ever been in the pavilion, you, you it's it's quite it needs some work, um, especially for a program that houses a lot of kids throughout the year in the summer. Um, yeah, it's in bad shape. So, um, I, I but it's, it's been quite a bit of time. I've never seen improvements done to the pavilion. So, so it's 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 for the kids. It's part of the, uh, the revenue stream, and it's uh, flood resilient. Uh, it's sixty k, but I like it. Right. Yeah, it's worth it. There is a limited because of the use of the building. There's a limited amount of time at which we can really yeah. do work in the building. So this would yes. kind of fit in that schedule that allow us to get. Yeah, I'll take a motion to approve this. So moved. Second. Hmm. Call the roll, please. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just, but I want to say one thing. The, all of the resolutions that we're adopting tonight start, whereas by resolution of February 13th, 2023, the Board of Trustees adopted the fiscal year 2023-2024 capital budget and plan, a comprehensive document that identified approximately 100 projects and provided backup documentation and, and then we go on for each specific project. And the, from, from my perspective, it, it's, it's, was too general was too, it was too general a statement we didn't really adopt a capital budget where if we were going to spend ten dollars on something that then we had to spend fifty dollars on some other emergency we didn't figure out where we were going to get it from and we don't go back and forth we just sort of take from this list and so I, you know, we are going to, I will put it on the agenda for two weeks to yep, start to have a more systematic plan. And I think everyone's on the same page. Yes. And, you know, and I get it. There's just, you, some, we have to spend some money, but but there's money, okay. there's money we don't want to spend too. And I think we're going to be really better about this. Okay, good. All right. Does Thank you. Mayor Young? Yes. What was your vote? She said yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was making sure. Yes, but uh, yes, but uh, yes, but it's a yes. It was a long sure. vote, man. I know. I don't know what you say. It was like, yes, with an explanation. Okay. Uh, F resolution authorizing funding of capital project for recreation department uh, of pavilion storage. Uh, the, the amount and what this uh, is again. This is a this is a storage facility in the in that same building. Um, so it's building additional storage. Building uh, additional storage. Yeah, it's about twenty-five thousand dollars. I mean, it, you've been in the building. It's, you know, it's like everything. Our storage is like a can of sardines. Yeah. Lou, uh, Lou can I, Lou, can I recommend that it's almost eleven o'clock and department heads start early and they're still here. If there's yeah, any questions, if there's any questions about the department, the department heads are here and they can answer those questions. Okay, great. So let's, uh, uh, thank you for that. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, so let, let, let's uh, let's go through any uh, any of these that might have, uh, if we want to, all, all of them do. All yeah, of them all do. All of them, yeah. Okay. Hey, Glenn has some there, sir. Yeah, I says, uh, for, for the uh, storage for the uh, pavilion, I says, I am not in favor of adding storage down at the harbor. You're, you're adding to a building that is probably going to be flooding on a fairly regular basis. Anything that's in there is going to get destroyed. Uh, I think that um, there is a need for storage, but we have about four or five different departments that need it. I think we should, should seriously go look maybe on Waverly Avenue or someplace like that, get, get a nice size warehouse. And instead of having all these little, little spots here and little spots there, and we're using the firehouse okay. and everything else. Thank you. Find, find a comprehensive okay. spot to, to put for all storage and not be adding on to a building that, quite frankly, floods on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank you. The clock's ticking. I'm trying to get rolling here. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, Jeff, do you want to weigh in on this or no? Jason. Jason, Jason. Sorry, Jason. Uh, yeah, so Jeff is the one helping me with this project. We're not adding on to the building. We're just retrofitting a space next to the red room while we're doing the floors. Um, and these things are going to be shelved high up off the ground. That's um, what I remember, so like, yes. Yeah, so like anything that's on the floor, anytime we flood, we move everything up. Nothing gets lost in the pavilion. If it's valuable, it's taken out or it's lifted 10 feet in the air. Um, okay. Now, in terms of what we do a lot here, we have things in the old firehouse, we have things behind the building, we have things all over the building, and yet I'm still moving things from one room to the other to run a program because it, it just, just there's just everything's on top of each other, just not enough space. 
So uh, uh, well, he he made his case. Uh, what's uh, what's uh, ever, what's our pleasure on this? Oh. So, what? What's the price? Yes. So basically, the storage will make it. You'll spend less time moving things around because you're going to be able to put stuff you use on a regular basis up high. Yeah, like right now, right now I send my staff up to old hooks and they're like going through closets and right. finding things in their move from, you know, we do very seasonal things and, and we're very organized and everything's labeled and it's just very difficult right now having things in a million different locations and, and we felt like if we're going to do the floors, we can do this project to minimize the and you'll yeah. get things out of old hooks, which we have to clean out. Right. I mean, we have so many things in old hooks that we can that we can move down, and it, it would work. Um, but again, it's up to the board. We'll make. Thank you. Work. Thank you. Um, uh, we have a motion to approve this. Yes. So, uh, so moved. Sorry. Second. Uh, Sally. Trustees Rawlings. Nope. The eyes are lead. Yes. Lucas? Yes. Deputy Mayor Young? Yes. Okay. Resolution authorizing funding of capital project for the police department of Marine Unit Vessel. Okay, let's get the price on this. And uh, uh, and uh... Uh, this was uh, $504,740. Our chief, uh, Dan, our chief is still on. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, there she is. Oh, chief Drew, is there? Yep. All right, Chief, tell us how much you need this or don't know what we can do without it. So I'm going to ask uh, Jeff to weigh in on this one as well. Um, the boat has reached its end of life, um, but Jeff, you could speak to that further, I guess. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is our primary patrol boat that gets used uh, basically all summer, spring, and fall. And with this boat, we would be able to extend our season further into the winter months, like this time of the year when there's still people out. But this boat is more will be more equipped for the weather and conditions that come up this time of the year. The boat that we have now is at its end of life and needs to be, you know, either replaced or a lot of work done to it, which really doesn't pay to do that much work to a boat that's that old. Yeah. So also, uh, we'll be still be applying for the grant to try and get this money reimbursed uh, back from a Homeland Security grant. Uh, you you would you would call us a public safety uh, issue? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, but that said, five hundred four thousand dollars is a lot of money. What's your pleasure? I'm all right. Hmm? Okay. I'm all right with it because okay. okay. I need a motion then. Uh, so uh, goodness gracious, some of that came okay. okay. is too late. Anybody? Second? Second. Okay. So I call the roll, please. Please, Raleigh? Yes. Deputy Reed? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Deputy Mayor Young? Yes. All right. Resolution authorizing funding of capital project for the police department uh, for of or three Prius vehicles. I remember this, uh, and uh, and uh, I, I think the price is going to be three. Uh, what's the price? The exact price? Again? She has it. Hmm? She has it. Eight, roughly a little over okay. yeah. Okay. Any comments on it? It's it's hundred three three vehicles, one hundred eight thousand dollars. This is replacing two ten year old, actually, ten or eleven year old Prius. I think we purchased them in twenty twelve. Correct. Uh, and. Uh, based on request, we also hired an additional parking enforcement officer, mm -hmm. and we need a vehicle for uh, that individual. As well. Parking enforcement is a revenue stream. We appreciate that, and right. the and the vehicles being replaced uh, uh, will be sold. You know, we'll get something back. You know, not, not a lot. All right. Um, uh, any comments on it? <laughs> All right. Um, I'll move on this one. Second. Sally? Yes. 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 Deputy Mayor Young. Yes. Okay. Resolution authorizing capital project for Harbor Island Park renovation and upgrade. What's the price on this and what are we talking about? Uh, this is includes a number of items. Actually. I think Jeff, Jeff is still Jeff, on. Jeff and Glenn. Glenn. Or you can say first now. Okay. Let's find out what we're talking about first. Yeah. I, I don't quite remember. I, you do? Yeah, yeah, well, I, I want to let you see the first before I... Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you so much. I've, I've short circuited my hearing aids. So the uh, <laughs> as I mentioned, Jeff is still on. Go ahead, okay. Jeff. So so this is this is a Harbor Island renovation project. It mm -hmm. includes the spray grounds, lands of baseball oh. fields, Harbor Island playgrounds, and a new bandstand. So what's happening at the harbor is Lanza Field is pitched four and a half inches the wrong way towards the playground, which every time it rains, it floods out the playground, especially the toddler area. Mm -hmm. So we would have to strip and repitch Lanza Field along with a new safety backstop to bring us into 2023 and redo the playground because the playground's falling apart. And we are on our last leg with the spray ground. Yeah, and and the spray ground would be expanded. That gives reason people a reason to go there, even when the beach is closed, which seems like it's every other um, beach day. So um, uh, again, that's part of the revenue stream, uh, and 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 why people go to that go go to go there. So what was the price on that? The total price on this again? The total price on this was one point five six seven two, I believe. I think that's what it was. It was uh, $2,538,110.75. Uh, uh, one thing about the spray ground, just to remind the board, uh, a couple of years ago, we discussed the play, the spray ground with the board, uh, and, and we knew this work, all this work was, was we said it was necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, the board asked the staff to kind of split it into two phases. Mm -hmm. So we did some the uh, most needy sections mm -hmm. of the spray ground first. Mm -hmm. And you know, as requested by the board several years ago, we've come back. This will be the second phase of that spray ground mm -hmm. improvement. So we're in the second phase. This yeah. is the second phase of, 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 a, of, a, of a, a project that was started a while ago. Yeah, and I think it was, it might've been 2019 or 2020. I can't okay. recall what year exactly, but it was definitely- And, and the Harbor board. Island is, a, is the crown jewel of the uh, uh, of the of the uh, park system, certain probably the village. Um, it, it it makes it a destination, and it generates uh, income. And I think we've got to maintain it. If we don't maintain it, um, it's going to just become uh, start to become shabby. And uh, th this is this is a lot of money, but I think it's it's a good investment. Jeff, Jeff you said that this is a the the park. Uh, the kids the 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 playground that the kids play on. Is it a safety issue at this point? I believe so. We have pieces of equipment that are falling off. We can't get replacement pieces for the equipment because the company that took over the original company is based out of Canada. So every time we try and order something, it gets held in customs. And are we looking into other other um, companies or is just that we have to go with that one? No, we're, we're not going with that one because that one uh, is not on one of our source well contracts anymore or a state contract because they're based in Canada. Got it. Um, and we're going to try and get away from the wood because what happens is the wood splinters and rots. And right, right, right. the issue we're running into now, like the balusters for the the safety um, bridge keep falling off, but there's no good wood to repair it. And thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And Dan, do they offer grants for things like these? This? There's some grants out there. The uh, uh, for instance, uh, when we built the original spray ground, uh, the uh, the village received community de community development block grant funding. How much uh, did you receive? Uh, you know, I, I I don't know the answer. Okay, that's fine. But I I can tell you that um, you know the village was able to routinely get grants of you know three hundred fifty four hundred thousand dollars through the CDBG program, but due to changes in the reporting requirements. Um, the uh, We work through Westchester County. Mm -hmm. uh, Westchester County isn't awarding uh, grants in excess of $200,000. And uh, we are also uh, limited uh, or capped the number of applications we can file. And for the past several years, even with the CDBG applications, we have been uh, focusing on uh, infrastructure improvements, specifically sidewalks. Got it. Um, and that's how we've done uh, you know, some of the, uh, the work that was done this summer. And there are other phases that we're looking to do around Mamaroneck Avenue School 
to improve and enhance pedestrian safety. Aren't those grants on okay. specific areas? Uh, yes and no. Yes, it's th there's um, it's you can apply for uh, uh, infrastructure improvements within the low to moderate income census tracts. Um, you can you can also apply for areas outside, but the documentation that's required you're required to provide documentation for demonstrating that more than fifty percent of the users of the facility uh, are in. Uh, are either residents or uh, are uh, below the, the motor, moderate income level. And that level of work is significant. Uh, and given the reduction in the grants that we're able to get, it's, it's making it even less of an incentive. And the county uh, strongly encourages the member municipalities of the, um, what they call the Urban County Consortium District to, or to, uh, apply for infrastructure goals like sidewalks and the like. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> just, just to do, uh, go back, it says the parking is not a revenue stream, we break even, okay? Just because we bring in money doesn't make it a revenue stream. If your costs are the same as the revenue, it's not a revenue stream. It's a safety issue. And you like car turnover, we do not make any money. No, no we don't, but I would like that to happen. Yeah. Okay. And we do okay, not so. make any money at the beach. No, no, but I would. But, and, okay. and the, the, uh, th this is a major project. It has to be looked further into. And I would rather see, you know, if you want to do this, I'd rather see it done in January, February, as part of the operating and capital budget for this year. Because, um, quite frankly, not only do you have the actual cost of the spray park. But you're going to have a significant increase in the cost of the water for the spray park. We have $50 million worth of projects that have to be bonded over the next five years for the water. You might be looking for a 50%, 100% increase of the spray park. Mm -hmm. At its current use, that's $75,000, $100,000. The beach brought in $107,000 last year without any personnel. So okay. I'm not saying that you don't do it. What I say is, I would push it off until February. That way you can see what funding you need. Again, everybody's asking here about funding. Mm -hmm. You don't have a penny for Village Wall. You don't have a penny for the Sea Wall. You don't have a penny for Halstead Avenue. You, you, know, you know, you have a lot of, you don't have a, a, a lot of money for a lot of, you don't have a penny for the dam right now. You don't have a penny for the flood mitigation. You don't have a penny for dredging. You know, you're in, you're you're talking about hundreds a hundred million dollars that you have to look and see what are you going to actually do and what revenue source you're going to put. Maybe you come up with a revenue source specifically for the recreation department so they can afford a certain amount for for uh, capital projects over the years. But as of right now, all you're going to do is if you spend this money, it all has to be bonded. We don't have any money for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have a four million dollar grant for what? Halstead. We have a four million dollar grant for Halstead Avenue. Okay, I, I know, I know. Okay. Just let him talk, Dan. Okay. For Halstead Avenue, it's going to talk to something. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Tina. Hi. So I think I have two weeks left on my chair position. Of okay. Commission. Yeah. Um. So I feel like I know a lot. Oh, sure. More than what you guys are talking about. Um, a couple things. I think that I'm, you guys seem like you're on a trend of saying no, so that's why I wasn't planning on getting up here. Um, but I think at the least, this breakdown needs attention because it's broken. Yes. And Jeff and his guys have had to come in all summer just to turn it on, turn it yes. on. Yes. And I think that's uh -huh. the least that we can do for the kids that are coming to the beach and pay fees to come mm -hmm. onto the beach and they can't go in the water because the water's always closed. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Jeff can correct me or maybe want to kill me after this, um, but I think part of repairing the spray ground requires digging up part of lands of field. So I think it almost kind of goes a little hand in hand, but mm -hmm. I think it's a lot of money. Um, 
you guys had a really nice presentation from Feels for Kids not that long ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I know a few of those people personally, and I think we've had a few nice conversations after that as well. Mm -hmm. And that was one project, Land the Field, where personally, aside from me being the chair, I felt that was something that Feels for Kids could work on. Um, as and, and in making it a regulation size softball field mm -hmm. because the girls, the Marinette girls high school team has nowhere to play mm -hmm. and they would willingly rent that field while they could repair theirs, uh, but they can't because they have nowhere else to play. So I having conversation. I think you should not neglect this breakdown. And I think a lot of the things that are coming up to you guys is because of neglect yeah. over the years. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think the entire project is way too much money for now. But I think that you really need to revisit the Fields for Kids partnership mm -hmm. because it really would be a partnership. Mm -hmm. And they're doing so many things right now right. that I think that we could benefit from it. And why would you say no? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And nice job as chair. Though. We appreciate it. All right. Um, yeah, the, the, the spray grounds act absolutely got to get get it addressed. Uh, uh, the um, the other stuff there, uh, um, the, the, the the pitching of the field and and, and the uh, and the uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, how do you, how do we how do you how do you just say? I think I, I, from what I remember, if I could recall, I may be wrong. That when Jeff um, presented it, it was like Tina said, it was the 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 it spray will. ground affects the land yeah, field. The land true. field affects the the um the playground. the playground, and it all comes into play. And then you have the pavilion that is on kind of on land field that is just it just flowed. But I also agree, maybe we don't have to do it all at one time, but. Um, if we, Jeff, if we take one, if we take the spray ground and work with, if we have that conversation with uh, Fields for Kids, how do you, would that work for you, got for you? Um, that's not really up to me whether the village wants to work for Fields for Kids or not. No, I'm asking, what I'm asking is. If we end up working with Fields for Kids, if that ends up coming up, and then we just we we're not necessarily fixing the um the the playground, but we're fixing the spray ground that which I also believe connects with the uh, lands of field. And if we do partner with, with Fields for Kids, does that work for you? In that we just wait for the playground. That would, I mean, that would work for me, but. It all depends on whether or not it works for Fields for Kids. I can't. No, of I can't. Course. No, of course. No, of course. I can't speak for Fields for Kids. The only thing I could speak on is the safety of the playgrounds, and that's why I brought it to the board. All right. I also think I also think Fields for Kids um, is looking for uh, artificial surfaces, and I think the Committee for the Environment is uh, meeting at their next meeting. They put on the agenda to uh, ban uh, artificial services, or at least suggest to the board to ban artificial surfaces in the village. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, right? That was something that they- I saw, I saw those- Those, uh, those, um, those emails. Uh, so, the, 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 Jerry, the funding on this. Um, um, what? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, Jerry, yes, we were, the Fields for Kids was interested in turf, but not only turf. Correct. They were, they are looking to improve the quality of the recording in the community. Um, they didn't, we weren't even sure if fields, if turf was possible at the harbor, mm -hmm. and yeah. they were willing to commit to learning about that and continuing the partnership, even if it did not include the turf. So, so I think the board should really consider the spray ground and the pavilion, and then ask fields for kids to. Um, fix the lands of field and purchase a new playground for us. I think that, that would be fantastic. Because that pavilion is rentable, right? Yeah. Yep. So field fields for kids. If fields for kids can come in and redo the Harbor Island, that's a score. That's a, that's fantastic. Um, they want to do stuff for kids. I get that. And a new playground in the largest and most used park in the uh, in the Sound Shore area would be a great idea. At the same time, of course, we're going to have to have them or ask them to 
give us money to um, to fix fields, you know, the, the lands of field, uh, which I, I don't know why. I'm not sure. Maybe Tina can come up. But why are the high school girls softball not able to play? Do the does the high school did they lose a field somewhere? Is there something that happened, or is there a new team? I, I didn't go to Mamaroneck. My kid didn't go to Mamaroneck High School, so I don't know. Play softball. They just won the field hockey state championship. Yeah. Um, softball, right? The high school varsity and JV softball play on the softball field at Central School. Okay. Which is the only field around us that is regulation size for high school softball. So in order for them to repair their field, they would need somewhere else to play. And honestly, the field, the location of that field isn't ideal either. There's no bathrooms. It's just not what you would want for a varsity team. And I think the Harbor, personally, I think the Harbor is a beautiful venue. And why wouldn't we want other communities coming there for a game for yeah. you know, uh, high school Jason, I have a question for Jason. Jason, do we charge the high school uh, or the uh, school district for any use of our fields? Yes. Uh, well, yes. Even the elementary school when they want to have their picnic. Yes, we 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 yeah. do charge the school. We do charge the French American school. We charge Good. pretty much pretty much everyone. So if, it. if Field for Kids renovates lands of field and puts in a new playground, we'll be able to charge the high school for the use of that field. So that would work out well for us. Yeah, I agree. So then revisit the conversation. All right. So um, uh, where where are we now? So the so just to prove the just to prove the pavilion and the spray ground, we'll get we'll get working. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Hello, um, uh, Mayor Elect. I'm just hoping that rather than pushing through 1.5 million dollars. We can look at everything that has to be repaired because obviously we want the children to be safe. We want our people to come. We want to make money off of whatever we have. Mm -hmm. and everybody agrees on that. But expanding the spray ground doesn't sound like an urgent issue. Mm -hmm. And so, can we back out some of the extras of trying to build onto and just work on either the maintenance that was let go or repairing something that's dangerous so that we can keep moving? But we're not putting ourselves in debt when we know we have flooding and flooding and all these other big issues that we might need to pull some money from. Right. So I don't know what that number looks like, but if we can pull some of that back and maybe look at it for another year and start planning ahead, um, we have no guarantee of making money off of this. We're hoping, you know, it sounds like maybe, but you don't really go to the beach for the spray park. It's more like the spray park's there with the beach. Um, Cause you don't want to pay to get in just to hang out at a small spray park. I would think. Well, uh, I don't okay. think it's a huge revenue generator, and I see it as a huge expense for okay. water. And our water rates went up this year, so oh, you know, just if we could look at fixing everything we need to fix, but not just Got putting it. everything on that water. Not a spray ground, right. ground. Right. not a spray ground defend. But so from, so from my understanding, we have no choice. We can't. We can't do any maintenance. Fix it. We have to expand. This is a, this wasn't like a choice that we well, wanted to. We don't have to make expand it. it. We, we don't repair it. We, but then we're repairing would just be another repair like we've been doing the past. Well, I mean, we could re years. we have to rebuild it. Yeah, but we it, have. But no we don't have to double it. And, sure. and there is a concern about. I know you're not going to agree with me about I mean, this. No, but okay. yeah, yeah, I know. Well, no. uh, yeah, right, right. But the 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 amount if the, the 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 cost of the water is significant, and we can't. We can't afford it to do what we did this summer, which is turning it on, leaving it on all day, and then end of the day, okay. season, turning it off. That's just yeah, that's that's and, and fortune yeah. every year. And, 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 and it's... <laughs> Glenn, 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 please, 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 have a seat. Take a seat, all right? Come on. <laughs> no, I just, I, I'm just, I'm just, the, if the, we have to rebuild the spray ground, it's not functional. Yeah, the we do, sense. we, the good news is we bought some new equipment for it that can be reused, like the great fun equipment, but it's the cost of operating the spray ground in terms of water is significant. So if we double the size of the spray ground, we're just doubling the size of our water bill. And that's just being transparent. Yeah. Yes, right. I'm so and we back can't in the day, recycle ago, the water. It was Carlos' idea. I know. You know. I know that. So we're supposed to be 3,600 square feet. And if we go to, that's what we want to try to do now. 
serve three different categories. I agree with you. you and I sit on the rec committee and I've been very active, as you know, sit on the budget committee too, and all the other ones. So we cannot get parts for it anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Initially, when it was built, the guts, the pit, basically, floods come, destroys everything. We cannot get parts for it anymore. When I hear about maintenance, the playground, okay, we can't get parts for it. What are we going to shut it down? Only 50% of it can be used. Safety is a concern here. We have to spend money and we're going to make money. The pavilion, or you know, the tents. How much is that costing us? Jason, still there? That was like $30,000 a year. Okay. I'm close. Uh, please. So, all I'm saying is the pavilion basically is a, going to be a money revenue. The deck is doing well. I've always said we should also have anniversaries. You can go down there, birthday parties. Yes. It should be a revenue stream. No, no. So, you can make projections. Okay. The camp, the camp utilizes it on a regular basis. It's great. Okay. How did we bring the people back to the, to the harbor? It was because of the spray ground. That's what started the whole thing. So when I was a kid, you couldn't find a speck of sand there. We had towels everywhere. And when I went there with my children, there was no one there. That's why I said, and, for, and you know the word, the truth. Let's be realistic here. So we need the spray ground and we need the pavilion. And field for kids, 25 years ago, okay? Uh, we were talking about it. There was only two communities that went out there for the money. They're the ones who said, here you go. What do you guys want to do with it? It was Larchmont, which is going through a second phase. I'm repeating myself over and over again. And a town around. Six months ago or nine months ago, they were here to give a presentation. We have never taken a dime from that. Yeah. Never. So let them, we should go to them and say, we want the money for the playground, the school market, the yeah. No, for them to tell us what we want, it should go the other way around. Mm -hmm. They want, they want us to. They want, they want give us right. money. Jim Hanley and I, okay, years ago, and that's the truth. We have to spend the money, and again, flooding is the number one issue in America, and we've done stuff to try to fix it in comparison to years ago. A lot of stuff, right? Yes, exactly. I mean, I can go on. Yeah, I know. All right, this is the truth. Anyway, leave it. All right, right. Sorry. <laughs> um, remember, remember this. This play the, the spray ground is not being fixed for this summer. This, this program is set for next October. That's why I said rethink it, and you can still pass this in January and February and have to do the work. The spray ground is not being repaired this summer. The fields are not being. This was. This is all planned for next October, November. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be any reason that you can't look, look at it. And this is. I absolutely agree. Fields for kids. We have three softball fields, not just Lanza Field. We have three softball mm -hmm. fields that could use a lot of work. And quite frankly, they are underused. We do not bring in a lot of revenue from softball anymore. Softball isn't as popular as it used to be. So to adopt that for use of you know any youth program, whether it's through the schools or anybody else, to get more use out of lands and field would, would would be absolutely terrific. You know, I says the only field right now that looks like it's it's one hundred percent maintained is the little league field all the way up by uh, Boston Post Road. But you, you have you have two other you have two other softball fields. That, that's used for little league and, and softball. And then you have Lanza Field, and all of them are, are very underused at this point, especially during the spring and summer in the early evenings. Oh. So I would definitely get fields, but what I would do is just just push, push it back. Like come up in January and February, and if you want to do the program, that's fine. The work isn't supposed to be done until October, November. Maybe you come up with a more comprehensive plan and maybe come up with, with a better source of funding and you can tie it into your next year budget and your next year capital budget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. So, so um, Jason, uh, Jason, well, Jason how, much, how much less are we collecting from uh, uh, softball or are we actually making more money? Well, the adult softball league is down that is an accurate statement uh -huh. but the field revenue 
is way up. I mean, I have a spreadsheet from 2019 or 2018 to now, and we're going at a clip every year. It's going up. I mean, we were at in the 40s, and now we're going to be closer to 100 this year in terms of field revenue. Um, I think we are maximizing our field space. I mean, we rent every parcel that I could possibly rent out, rented is rented out. So four years ago, uh, five years including, ago, we were at 40,000. Now we're at 100,000. Just about. We'll probably be a little short at 100 when it's all said and done. Um, Sounds like an increase to me. But <laughs> I will is... say that we also have Little League using both for Larchmont Marinick Little League, both for youth baseball and girls softball. They're using lands of field almost every day. I mean, Jeff lining it seven days a week, including into the nights with the new LED lights because they're affordable now. So it's so, not underused. It's actually used more. I, I, and from my perspective, and from the information that I have doing my job, it, every year we, the fields are being used for more hours consecutively. Um, and that shows in the revenue and both in the, uh, the bookings. Thank uh, you so, for so, that. so Jerry, what's your recommendation here? My recommendation is tonight you provide approval for $777,707.50 for the spray, the spray ground improvements and the pavilion and Field for Kids, you approach Field for Kids to uh, build us a new and much needed playground and the reconditioning of Lanza Field. All right. Um, all right. Uh... I just interrupt for one second. Yeah, you know, sure, sure. And then in addition to revenue, okay, this is the driving factor for revenue. Mm -hmm. Because the other communities used to basically charge. American never did. Mm -hmm. I was the, the one who basically started it. Thank you. And going back to the revenue, next year, soccer, correct me from law, they're paying us double the amount, mm -hmm. basically, in revenue. So mm -hmm. more revenues coming in uh -huh. from other organizations. Yes, sir. Okay? And that's the truth. Right from wrong, Jerry. Sorry, Jason. Okay. Double. Okay, thank you. I just have one question about um, the pavilion um, deck and beach and tent rentals. We projected 20,000, and I would assume the season's sort of over, and we only got in 2,270. So we're, you know, we we got 11 about 11 percent of what so we about, We're off about 18 grand there. No, but but. All that money comes in January, February, March, and April. We didn't do our 2024 bookings. Okay, fine. So that's so, so yeah. Book, so last year we hit until, twenty thousand. But until, all of it good until May thirty first. Yeah, all of that is on the back end because that money was people book in the winter for the summer. That's yes. how we budget. That's my question. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, I, I like Jerry's suggestion that we uh, that we approve the spray ground and pavilion, and um, because the spray ground, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it is the um. Gosh, it's kids that don't have pools, that don't have access to pools, kids that don't go to camp, kids that are that are stuck here, are stuck at home in an apartment in the summer. That's where they go. All right. Little kids. And um, and I, I think well, kids who do go to camp use it, too. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's but 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 that's 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 summer for them. So I, I like Jerry's suggestion. And uh, I would uh, entertain a, an emotion, uh, an emotion. <laughs> okay. I second that emotion. What was that song? Um, I um... I just want to ask a question, like the pavilion. I mean, so my I, I have a concern. Tina didn't mention the pavilion. I, I know this hasn't sort of gone through Parks and Rec, and I, I'm not sure. I, like, I think we have to. I mean, I think we have to do the spray ground, and if we can get fields for kids to help with the other two, we're in good shape. Can we think twice about a new bandstand? Um, because, uh, are, you know, how are we, is it really going to be used by the camp? It won't be built till October of 2025, 2024, right? October 2024. Well, let's just get That's confirmation on that. Jeff, Jeff, what, Jeff, uh, on what are we doing with the pavilion and how are we building it? So the pavilion is like a, a kit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Contractor will come in and do the footings and the cement pad, and then the kit comes, and it's basically probably a week process for them to build the pavilion itself. So um, if it gets passed, we could start working on securing the kit, which is, I believe, 16 weeks out, 
which would then put us in for the opening or close to the opening of the spring season. Thanks. And Jason, what do you need as far as protection for the kids uh, that we don't have right now and that the pavilion would provide? So uh, we have this past year, 323 day campers this past season um, with just the pavilion indoor space. So, so we're rotating kids to eat lunch under to not be eating lunch in the heat. We also, if it rains and not like a lightning rain, like just a drizzle rain, we're packing everyone in one room. So if we had a covered space that could fit a hundred people, it would be a game changer for the camp in terms of just having shade and a place to eat that's not under a tree or in the grass. Um, so. And can you, yeah. if you get this, can you skip the tent? What, do you need the tent still? Uh, Probably, I mean, I have, there are different age groups, right? So you have to put the older kids somewhere and the younger kids somewhere and um, so it gives you more probably, flexible. but we could re we could revisit it and, and see what we could do. Um, it's two separate locations, but certainly I can look at anything and try to maximize anything I can. Jason, good what, was your positive, what was your positive revenue this year in camp? About 40 after all the expenses, you know, staff time, insurance, and no, I know it's a lot of work. I appreciate that. Yeah. Right. Um, but we've modeled our, we've tried our best to maximize our scholarships while also trying to bring in a little bit of revenue, uh, while also keeping municipal gate camp, what it should be as cheap as possible for, for our residents. Thank right. you. Awesome. I, I, I would, I would entertain a motion so to go with Jerry's suggestion that we fund, uh, that amount seven, 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 707 uh, and change uh, for the uh, spray ground expansion and pavilion, exploring the other aspects later because uh, the price tag's too big. Wait, what? So move. So move. S second. Se second. Sorry. Uh, second. Sally, call the roll. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Deputy Mayor Young. Yes. How about that? We all agreed. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. That was a great idea. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm moving here. I'm trying to get your staff home. A resolution authorizing capital project for renovation and upgrade of Florence Park. It's a price on that. And uh, which, I mean, it needs renovation. That's for sure. Um, what's uh, $1.4 million. Okay. Uh, it includes the uh, rehabilitation of the tennis courts, which we are going to program in the future and collect yeah. the revenue. Yeah. We are going to uh, upgrade the basketball courts, which we typically would not really program or have uh, organized sports, although we could. Mm -hmm. And then it includes um, some uh, curbing work, which is important. And then mm -hmm. it'll be our first pickleball court, pickleball courts in the village. Uh, and that's 136,000 and some new okay. lighting and electrical work for about 50,000. Okay, um, uh, what, what are our thoughts about this? Okay, I'll go first. I, go ahead, you this go. This is something we've been talking about for forever. Since, since I was on the PRC of upgrading, yeah. you know, Florence Park, the entire park is in disarray. I just think it's it's insane that we like before I was on the board that this has been a park that's been heavily neglected. The courts all ripped up through tree roots. The tennis courts are horrible. The playground has like a sinkhole in it. Like, I just think if we don't do this, this is, a huge safety issue for any kid or anybody in that neighborhood who used to that park. So and, I just think we must go ahead and and, and move this. And it's also a community a pride park. issue too. I feel yeah. the same way about that park as I feel about about this building. I mean, you know, I I, I want to say, aren't you embarrassed? You know, I mean, I'm 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 embarrassed for us with this and that and everything. Right. So. Um, What's good, and I, I should say, what's good about re rehabilitating or re renovating and upgrading this park mm -hmm. and keeping and not doing the Harbor Island playground at the same time is yeah. that still kids will still have the kids and parents will still have the ability to go to one of the other parks, including Jefferson Avenue, which Jeff and, and Jason and, and, you know, the staff just redid. Mm -hmm. So there'll still be other parks to go to while this is being renovated. And then it allows us to have those other parks renovated while this one is completed. So it's also good as far as programming and allowing our residents to be at least find something to, uh, you know, to do and go. Okay. Peggy. 
just spitballing an idea here, but there's a chance of course it's been redone up in Warren Avenue Park that gets almost no use. Where? Warren Avenue Park. <laughs> and it's very interesting. It goes to take the roof with the pickle. It's there. It is there. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, just the thought. And, it's like and, and you know, and, and if, if if we don't do this now, I would say we could do this in two weeks and let the people at Florence Park know about it and see if they if they want to weigh in on it. But um uh a couple items right Florence. So the uh the safety surface, I think that was first done in 2013. Uh and I think you know basically has a useful life of about 10 years. So that has reached the end of its useful life. I think we're hampered by the same thing with the playground equipment that uh, it's just, you know, getting more difficult to find replacement parts. Um, the other thing that I mentioned about uh, Florence is that it there's a lot of uh, school age pedestrian traffic that you crosses through Florence Park uh, to get from uh, areas in Rhinec, mm -hmm. uh close to uh, the Daniel Warren School and, um, uh, uh, Fe Bellows, uh, and uh, so there's a large, just other population that uses uh, Florence, especially because of that walking track. Yeah. It's and, a heavily used. It's our second largest park on our It's the second largest, and, and and you know when you when you look at when you look at the condition of the Harbor Island Park, you look at the condition of Columbus Park, you look at the. It's like um, you know, I mean, Rhinex part of the village too. I mean, uh, uh, I, I I I feel I'm embarrassed for. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, uh, I think the more we I, continue to look at parks, it's going to come to another point where you drop some of the board or some of the boards are to come and every park's going to be redone. And then how do you, how do you choose? We have to get on a schedule of, of renovating our parks over time. We went through many years of neglect. Jefferson Avenue Park had nothing done for 10 plus years. We finally did something to that park. We cannot continue to ignore every single one of our parks. And then decide, you know, we're going to push this off and just keep pushing it off. That's just not fair to the people in, um, in certain parts of our community. So I, I just don't think it's fair to them. I've had them come multiple times from people representing the PRC world in Rhinec who know how Florence Park is. I've had residents come and, yeah. and speak to me about, about Florence Park. I just think it's an embarrassment that we, we continue to neglect certain parts. All right. Like I'm all for Harbor Island pushing off and hopefully working with fields for kids. I am not gonna. I just don't think it's acceptable. I hear you. I hear you. So, Carlo, yeah. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. You guys both said the same word. It's embarrassing. If you look at surrounding communities, and then, man, you know, you have spoken about this. You look at what Harris is going through. Don't bring up Harris. Five years. <laughs> it's incredible. Okay. Um, they're going through a community center that I've been talking about for years. They knocked down the old one. They're expanding their you know, twice the size. Home Run Park, which was near the uh, shopping center, they just built a walking track for the community. Mm -hmm. um, they also took over the country club. Right, we're down to the Moon Avenue, where Emmy and uh, Rick said, let's go look at their facilities. It's incredible. What do we do? We sit on the sidelines until you can't get parts, and then we go through the uh, exercises. Everything has a shelf life, and you have to address it. Okay. Right. Thank so you. Thank you, Carl. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Back again. Okay. Great to see you. So I agree, like all of our parks do need help, but um, it seems that, you know, we're trying to do every park at once tonight. Um, I think that like everything else, the budgeting and the planning of these projects should be paramount, right? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. You said paramount. paramount. Okay, good. Can't, like, obviously like, again, we're, we're hemorrhaging, we're hemorrhaging cash. Each time, like, all right, it's it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Safety is of most importance. It's fine, but I've been to these parks. I think my kids to these parks all the time. I don't feel unsafe. I don't think they're unsafe. Uh, a wooden park can. I think we can replace wood. Right, that's not necessarily a park. That's some bolts are easily found. Metal and plastic which are the types of parks that you are replacing them with, do require proprietary parts. So you're saying it's, it's tough to find parts of these things, but you're replacing them with wooden structures or things that have universal items and materials. Mm -hmm. 
with things that have proprietary materials. That is going against what your, your goal here, you have stated as a problem, right? You know, unable to obtain parts, but yet you're, you're continuously replacing with these, these rubber, rubberized metal structures mm -hmm. that have proprietary parts. If you were to use structures that were more universal, mm -hmm. wooden structures, they do last very long. Okay. Right? And they're more sustainable. All right. Okay, thank you. Right? And again, plan year on year on year, do one part at a time. Really? Every part at once? That's just plan. Well, I mean, I think this was a plan, but thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, this this predates my arrival on the board. It's just arriving now. Right? You're planning on this? No, I don't think so. No, yeah, I've been here a year. No, but I don't think it's been planned. I think it's just okay. It's thanks. Coming right. to fruition now. May relax. So the first part of Harbor Island was 1.5 million. We started. I'm sorry. When you talked about Harbor Island, yeah, it started at 1.5 million. Oh no, that was uh, 2.5. Oh sorry, 2.5. Thank you. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> uh, this one is 1.4. That's a lot. Yes. And we all love our parks, and I agree with you, some of them need work. But when I've gone to the parks, I don't see excessive use of everything that we're talking about. It doesn't sound like an emergency. And I don't think waiting a few weeks to allow more residents to speak, because obviously we're just what's left over from affordable housing and flooding. Mm -hmm. Nobody came here with the intent of speaking on Florence Park. So if we could push it off and talk about you know, having a plan for every park to be on a schedule. Okay. I'd be willing to put this off two weeks and let the people in Florence Park know we're talking about it, and and then they come and talk. That'd be that'd be great. Um, uh, but uh, I, I, I'm just just from I, the the okay. Whatever, whatever. But, 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 but I that, think that, that the Florence not, Park the Florence Park people have come. They have said they have spoken before. That's why it may not it. have just been at this meeting, but they have come and spoken before at previous meetings when we because this is not the first time we've discussed. The renovations of the parks this okay. is like this has been stated not maybe in consecutive meetings but in various different meetings staggering so they have come they have stated what they needed and in in, in, in all honesty Florence Park is the only park on that side of the community and in the right next section where we have a lot of parks on this side and it does need maintenance and if we do go there and then the people who actually visit it on a daily basis are the staff and the staff is saying that this is something that is needed and we have to take into account what they're saying on top of what the, the parks and rec has been um uh, has been suggesting for for many years so it's not just a one-shot deal it's not something that we just thought of tonight it is something that, that be, no no i'm not saying that you said that i'm just saying in general that this is something that has been stated and people have come up so i'm not basing my my decision on just a one night only, but I'm basing my decision on what the staff see every single day with, in terms of the usage in and then also in terms of how they maintain the, the parks. I'm also paying attention to what the right next side of the, the community needs, as well as any other community. But this is the, that's why I'm paying attention. Yeah, so I am the right next community. No, I understand. I'm very close to Florence Park, and I understand what you're saying. Good. It's not that I don't appreciate it. I just also am looking at the, vault, the sheer of course. number of dollars we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And $1.4 million to renovate an entire park while you're also doing Harbor Island, while you also want to do affordable housing, while we also want to do flooding. It seems like we're getting into something that's not yeah. sustainable. Right. But and we're not so spending on affordable housing, but that's for good have more people come in talk and maybe push some of this off. All right. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Well, thank you. I think we, we have been somewhat deliberate with our parks and playgrounds. I think the first one we did the safety surface at Florence, uh, then we kind of renovated Warren Avenue Park, mm -hmm. which was in, in pretty pretty bad shape. Uh, then we did Stanley Avenue Park. Uh, then you know uh, last year, well, last year you provide funding for the Jefferson Avenue playground. Uh, so you know we've been trying to be a bit systematic in uh, looking at some of these uh, upgrades to and I, and our I, parks in the last several. I years. think the stuff you you installed at Columbus Park is terrific too. I mean it's a uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I I live near there, and I'm 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 thrilled to live there, and I would not be so thrilled uh, to live near some of the others. Now, Columbus, no, how are you? Pretty good. Um, John Hostetter. Yeah. I uh, used to live in Rhinek, grew up in Rhinek, mm -hmm. and 
very much uh, as a child frequented Florence Park. And I would say that one way that you could encourage greater use and maybe get more buy-in to spending money in Florence Park would be actually to have some parking there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Every, every community, every park in Harrison that was mentioned earlier has parking adjacent to it so that people in the community who don't live adjacent to the park or nearby mm -hmm. can actually go to the park and use it. Florence Park doesn't have it. It's one of the biggest parks in the village. You're absolutely and right. And if you're looking for a place for fields for kids to contribute money, have you explored Taylor's Lane and investigated okay. using Taylor's Lane for fields for kids on a piece of property that is currently not used for anything? We don't have currently have control of, of, of Taylor's Lane. Well, you, <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah. DEC's got a, a, a waiting room. No, oh, we're, DEC timed out. But we're still working on closing it out with the site management plan. Uh, we're awaiting comments from uh, the DEC on our submission. As far as the future use of the site, uh, the there is currently a deed restriction uh, that <clears throat> says it's to be used for uh, passive or active recreation. Uh, the one thing about uh, Taylor's Lane is that we we can't do anything that would pierce the cap on the site. Yeah, but the cap is ten feet down. Well, but um, to say that that's the, and there are competing interests for Taylor's Lane. Obviously, uh, we we had advocacy for a recreational use. Uh, the Committee for the Environment has advocated for the installation of solar panels. So it, it's you know that, that's so a kind of a policy. Uh, and Johnny no, said okay. they're they're we're, they're we're they're, not, they're been competing. Let's talk about Florence Park, please, John. But it's getting late. Right? Taylor Taylor's Lane could be used. Okay. So I mean, I I'm not sure that I would be. I I, I think uh, coming up with a capital plan for all of the parks and doing them in a systematic way would make sense. Okay. Doing it all at once, the way you're proposing, seems like. Okay. A gift to somebody, and I can't figure it out here. All right, thank you. All right. Um, uh, so, what's your pleasure on this? You know, I, I think that we uh, we need this. We're going to be in a situation where we'll have done if we do if we do this, we will have done Jefferson Park, Park Royal and Park, and um, Florence Park all in a in a period of like two years. Okay. So we're getting the same situation where we're not spacing it out over a period of three or four years per park so that we can do a plan. This all came at, this was again on this, you know, it's the same wording. It's the hundred, uh, you know, hundred thousand, hundred, like hundred million dollars worth of projects. And we've just pulled some of them. I think we should really think about a, an overall plan for maintaining the parks and then stick to it. Just, I mean, the fire department has done that with materials and trucks that they buy. They're on a, they're on a system. And I think we need to get on a system okay. to, to avoid the situation we're in now where lots of things are breaking, lots of buildings need repair. I think we need to do it systematically because we don't, so that we have the funds, that we have the capacity to bond and we have the capacity to execute. I, I, I just, one through one thing else. If I'm understanding and remembering correctly, the Jefferson Avenue Park did not come out of village funds. I'm pretty sure that came out of a specific fund right. project. We did not cost any of the money to tap nor, village. Nor did the nor did those swings at the Columbus well, the Park. They all came Columbus. out of a special fund. That wasn't village. That was the developer contribution. Right. The only contribution we're making is for parks is what we've done tonight. All right. Uh, I mean, uh, if if we're going to get criticized for Doing too little or too much, I'd rather do too much. Right? I'd rather do just too much. Can I make a motion to approve this? Sure. Um, I'll second it. Um, Sally, call the roll. Trustee Rawlings? Yes. Yeah, yes. Lucas? No. Deputy Mayor Young? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, resolution scheduling a Board of Trustees work session. For November twenty seventh at five fifteen. Any problems with that? What is the no? Is that just a regular work session? The regular meeting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I, I, I think we hadn't scheduled one. Is that was that basically? We forgot it? to do it in our last meeting. Okay, there we go. So we'll do it. All right. 
Okay. Thank you, guys. Take care. Good night. Have a good night. All right. Come back. All right. Please, yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, making a motion or making motion? So, so last time she'll be a, be able to leave early. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry. We need a need a motion to approve that, please. Second. I made, I made the motion. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. All in fa uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's done. All right. Uh, resolution scheduling public hearing on PLLZ 2023 land use application requirements. Uh, that would be uh, public hearing would be when? Two weeks? November 27th at 8 p.m. Okay, and 27th, 8 p.m., public hearing on, on land use application. Uh, um, any problems with that? Nope, okay. Uh, motion, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, resolution accepting donation from the Mamarnock Elks Club for purchase of Turnicate. tourniquets Turnicate. for Tourniquets for police department. Awesome. Okay. I think, uh, Have a good uh, night. Good night. No, good night. No, no, no. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, what do you? What do you? Uh, uh, oh, Alps. On behalf of the Alps. On oh, behalf of the Alps. Um, this is typical of what the Village of Germanic is, and represents not only a service organization, but uh, it was interesting that when they came to a meeting to accept the police department, they gave a demonstration, and it's typical and illustrates. The reality why you should have emergency equipment, whether it be the fire department, in this case, the police department. And these tourniquets can be used by the individual himself. Mm -hmm. So, as was, as was discussed and uh, illustrated by uh, the officers that were there, mm -hmm. um, this could be if they injured themselves, got injured, mm -hmm. if they go in any type of uh, uh, situation uh, where it happened. And it's something you don't think about. Uh, and it's akin to something that uh, I was associated with uh, as a result of some people may remember when they had, uh, as an example, safety ropes where three firemen in New York City died. Right. right. If you remember that, you may even uncover it. Yeah, I uncovered. Um, yes, yes. And it's that typical after that. It's something you don't think about, but it actually saves lives. Jeff Hissel, right? Yes. Yeah. saves lives, and it's sponsored by. Uh, the Oaks, mm -hmm. a, a service group that uh, this is one of several that they do uh, during the year and fund different organizations. So I think it's great and it's a um, great indication that the friendly village business is. Well, thank, thank you, you very much, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Uh, make a motion. I'll, I'll, I'll make a mo that motion to uh, pass it. Okay. All in favor? Um, Aye. 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 Great. Resolution accepting donation. Uh, to the Marine Education Center. What kind of donation is this? Uh, I believe it's for the tax tank. Mm -hmm. It was from a variety of residents. They have a box, I think, that okay. people put money in for donations. Yeah. In. So it was a variety of residents for $110. Okay, so we're just taking the money in? Yep. Okay. Yeah, $110. <laughs> Hey, revenue stream. All right, here we go. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, somebody make a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Um, Aye. Right. What do we need? We need because it involves money? We, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, resolution we'll take it in. Take it in. authorizing <laughs> the purchase of 20 firefighter emergency escape systems, which is a, which is the kind of like the tourniquets, except for firefighters thing to get out of a, get out of a hot spot. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it ain't but it ain't cheap. How much was that? 14,000. 14,000. Uh, and uh, money well spent to keep our first responders safe. Uh, any any issues with that? Okay, uh, I make the motion to uh, to uh, to buy those uh, twenty firefighter. Okay, uh, call the roll, Sally, please. Yes. Yeah, Reed. Yes. Yes. Deputy Mayor Young. Yes. Okay. Resolution increasing previously adopted funding authorization for the purchase of a seventy-five yard compactor trailer. This was something we talked about also at the end of the work session. It's an increase, I think, of five thousand dollars. What was that now? It was an increase of five thousand. Oh, it's an increase of five thousand dollars because of uh. They have to change. Yeah, the yeah. To get this. The they gotta. They gotta. They gotta paint it, because if it's Orange. the wrong color, um, they can't use it at the. All right. Uh, any any uh, I'm not, not making it up. Uh, yeah, exactly. I said yeah. You gotta. Uh, it's wrong. So anyway, I'll make the motion. Five grand paint job. Um. Uh, okay. Second. 
Trustee Rawlings. Yes. Judge Reed. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Deputy Mayor Young. Yes. Okay. I'm a really good painter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll paint it. I'll paint it for two, for two grand. All right. Resolution authorizing purchase of emergency response and recovery equipment. This is uh, uh, Jerry. Uh, yes. How much? Was this is this is Swift Water Rescue equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for uh, the staff that's uh, currently trained, but also newly trained. I think we're going to have an additional 15 Swift Water Rescue uh, personnel. I mm -hmm. think this is um, $68,000. And this is 60... for the fire is this, this is for them? These, these are specially yeah. trained yeah. firefighters. Yeah. 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 Swift uh, Water Rescue. Yeah, water rescue. yeah. 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 All, the, all the equipment. And we want to get rescued. So that's, yep. so there's, it, all, it all works out. It's $68,000. Any issues with that um, from anyone? Uh, um, make a resolution. I'll make the motion. Motion, uh, second. Uh, call the roll. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, R resolution authorizing funding of capital project for police department of three patrol vehicles. This is not cheap, but I think it's something we uh, need to do. How much is it? I think two people could yeah. not. But this money is in the general fund budget. Yeah. Okay, the money's already in the budget. It's how much? 216, I think? Yeah. Okay, 216,000. 23,000. Okay, all right. Yes, Glenn. I was just wondering, is, uh, are these cards, uh, cards that we're getting with the uh, uh, federal grant, or is this going to be uh, money out of uh, our budget? This, this is money that the board appropriated as part of the general fund in this year's budget. This is coming out of appropriated funds. Yeah, no, but I, I didn't we appropriate, I know we appropriated for three cars from that Build Back Better money. I'm just wondering if no, this, this is for that or this is just coming out of the general fund. This is coming out of the general fund. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, that's, thank you very much. Oh, uh, Oh, we got to, I got to go vote on it, don't we? All right. No, uh, well, are you, are you, sorry. So sorry. She's, waiting to, she's waiting to speak. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So um, um, I'll make the resolution. Yeah, I'll make the, uh, <laughs> I'll make the uh, motion. Second. You second it? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Um, invitation to address the board. Man. Thank you. And I'm sorry you had to wait so long. Uh, good evening. Thank you, board and staff and residents for listening to me. I'm Helen Rafferty uh, with, on Prospect Avenue in Lavernick. Um, I just have one comment to make about the affordable housing project that is proposed for the Hunter Tier Lot. Yes. And it has nothing to do with the merits of affordable housing in general or more about affordable so housing. Can you, can back up. you don't have to, you don't have to be right on. It is a comment on the fact that an RFP is your absolutely crucial foundation document for a project of any size, but certainly for a project of the magnitude being proposed, mm -hmm. even though that magnitude seems to be somewhat up in the air at this point. Mm -hmm. um, an RFP that can only attract two proposals is an RFP that has got to go back to the drawing board. There is no way that a decision of a project like this can be made when you have two proposals coming in, unless there are several more proposals that we just haven't heard about. I guess that's enough. No, no, I, I, I know. Either you have them or you don't. So if you only no. have two proposals on the basis of the RFP that you generated, you need to generate an RFP that will effectively and efficiently guide this project forward. Um, that's all I have to say, but this really can't keep moving forward because your RFP is clearly problematic when you would have had more proposals sent in. And so whether it's because the scope of the work is far too vague or at least reputable vendors to give you a proposal they feel they can stand by, whatever the problem is, there is clearly a problem with the RFP. And I would ask the board to go back to the drawing board and to create an RFP that will create a more competitive environment for the developers that might sign up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, We've gone. Hold on. Oh, there's a one more shot at the end. One. <laughs> we want to finish this up while it's still Monday. Yeah. Oh, we don't have the clock anymore. No, the clock's about. 
No oh, chance yeah. of that. <laughs> what? Oh, okay, I know. Oh, he's got to reset. We were at the end here. All right. Um, there's a couple of things uh, quickly. Uh, we've had representatives from Washington go. We have representatives from uh, mm -hmm. the Resource Center and talk about affordable housing. I think we should have a um, summit, much like you did with the uh, Flood Committee, because I think that we need to get all on the same page of exactly what affordable housing is in the village, what programs are available in the village, because uh, I found out recently when you talk about Section 8 housing, one of the things that the town of Marinick mentioned was the fact that 60% of the vouchers that they were giving out when they um, when they turned over the program were for people who did not live in either the two towns of the village, which would mean there's only about 280 Section 8 vouchers in the entire village of Marinick or less. So we really have to know do we have any any um any stabilized apartments left in the village at all? Do we have any rent control left in the village at all? Um, how many uh, units do we have that are left that were originally part of the ten percent plan that um the time the time limit didn't run out on a lot of them were for thirty years and and they're gone. They're no longer uh, they're no longer uh, rent 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 controlled or rent mm -hmm. agreement. With, with the village, we do not have a lot of those. How many apartments does Washingtonville have? And people have to be uh, aware of that even in the flood areas, the, the least expensive house in this village is now five, six hundred thousand dollars. So the the, uh, the condominiums are now starting at two hundred thousand three hundred. This is for one bedroom over on Rich Bell Road. Yeah, we we, we all know this. Yeah, they said yeah. So the affordability isn't simply about um rich report affordability is you've lived in the village all your life and uh you know if the rental unit you live in sells and you have a new owner who puts money into the uh the home or the apartment building or whatever you you're 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 run right out of here the last thing is we have a lot a lot of programs i mentioned it before we have a new village hall we have an old village hall that's still being repaired under a 1.6 million emergency repair order from two years ago that we still slowly but surely working on. We have the dam, we have Halstead Avenue, we have two projects. We got one, which is a sidewalk project, 5 million. We're getting 4 million. We have the pavement, which is another good three to $4 million. Uh, we have the seawall, then you have the parks, and then you have uh, different uh, paving operations that uh, some, some are finished. Some aren't done. The hillside one that you passed today is going to be three hundred thousand out of our pocket. We have five hundred seventy-five funded. The rest is it. We got a one point five million dollar bill coming from the project around the Rennick Avenue School, minus what FEMA's um, involved it is. How much money do we have coming from FEMA that's still owed to us? You know, these are things. Uh, the Hillside Avenue Bridge. I said, I'm, I'm sure Dan put all the bills. Did we get the money from the state yet? Did we get the money from the county yet? Are we owed any money from the towns? Uh, we have to be aware of everything that 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 is paid for and everything that is and everything that's coming in. That way, you have an idea of where your cash is and your cash flow. Thank you, yes. thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Did, did you want to say something? No, I was mentioning the time. Okay, time. Norm okay, was, thank I you. Mean, I, don't know. I mean, not Norm. Uh, Norm, are you are you uh, speaking? Right. Norm right. wants to bring uh, Norm wants to bring in Tuesday. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'd like to underscore Helen's comments. Um, I was fortunate to uh, work for an avionics company, and I, I dealt with FAR's federal acquisition, federal acquisition regulations, and the FAR, same thing mm -hmm. for our military. Uh, I think that, a, and I'll be very honest up front, I didn't agree. The F, uh, RFP given out by the village. Uh, however, from, from, when, uh, yeah. from but the point I'm trying to make is that the request for proposal and the proposals that are going to be received, uh, from what I've read and posts, I don't know how valid posts are, no, but, no. but the original comment was that the village was looking for a building with 50 units. 
then someone put, uh, I think I thought they would for 100 units, someone for 187 units. And that clearly demonstrates what I believe is a fatal flaw. The village of Marinic sending out an RFP must be more specific. The village wants every uh, a proposal by anyone who wants to reply to it, addressing the specifics of what the village wants. Does the village want 50 units? They want 100 units. Uh, what are the requirements for people to build under the existing parameter of the zoning and so on? Because I can give you this example. If the village puts out a request for 50 units and someone comes in and says, well, I want to build 100 units, and someone, third person comes in, I want to build 108 units, that neutralizes the entire, you can't accept either one of those because they can only reply on a proposal to the specifics I got the it. village put out. Oh, uh, thank okay. you. Yes. So if and you have it now, someone comes in, I want a hundred units. And the village says, well, this is great. I want that. And the guy or the group that says, well, I want 187 units. You can't give that to him because he has legitimate grounds to contest that. And he has the right to counter proposal. Uh, and this is not a question for me. You just the question. I, I think I think the RFP was uh, intentionally vague to 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 to, to encourage the um, the um, uh, developers to be uh, imaginative. I can't answer that. I mean, okay. that was involved. That, that's what I, I mean. And, and, and they're that's both exactly they're both different proposals. That's exactly I mean, correct. And the two meetings, the two meetings, one each with the developers, mm. will help the board craft what they are looking for based on the developer's capabilities. And the two proposals that we received are completely different proposals. Yeah. Completely yeah, so, different. Okay. And so, so the board a, gets uh, to choose which one they're, they're, ha they're comfortable with. So we're not dictating to them. We're asking yeah. them what they can do. If you don't put, if you put them in a box, they'll give you the box. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes. Well, I understand that the RFP was left vague for reasons that you just explained. When you go through the RFP process in a normal business and in government, there has to be some specificity. It can't just be do whatever and then you'll pick because then they didn't work on even grounds. Mm -hmm. So the whole 187 units is going to have an issue if we go with the other one because they're going to say we didn't know we couldn't do this. Um, but there were a few things I missed before, so I just want to bring them up. With the hundred tier lot, I have not yet heard um, where are the flood victims going to park. If we end up with something that has less than two hundred spaces, and we don't have enough resident parking because they're using a zoning formula that's what we have, mm -hmm. but maybe it's not enough for the number of people who will move in. Where are people going to park? Um, right now, we tell people in the flats, go park your car and we can here, and we won't be able to do that. Um, the West Have one also talked about buying the land from us for $3.5 million. I don't recall that ever being part of any conversation where they were going to buy the property. The whole point was that we owned the lot and then there would be like a joint effort. I have I have thoughts on all of that. I don't want to opine on it now because I haven't heard their proposal. I have, a, I mean... I mean, I, I'm not I'm not happy with any of that parking situation, we're, we're, but we could, that's what we're going to work out. Okay. Um, and also, when I looked at the West Have, there is an issue, in my opinion, uh, that starting in 10-5, and I think it might be like 10-12 or 10-14, there are at least five letters of support from community organizations or you know, community churches, uh, CRC, et cetera. That was at 10-5. That's over a month ago. So that means they saw the West had proposal before it came into the board, put their letters of support, and nobody else had that opportunity to get any kind of letter of support. So it just has a bad look to it that there were people writing letters of support for something that wasn't even brought out yet. Um, okay. I would think it would come after the fact. So just to be careful, you know, that we're not favoring or trying to create something that is going to play into one particular group. We're going to get the best price and the best building by giving multiple vendors the opportunity. To pay any price. I, also, I, I, you know, I don't know if they, if I, I don't want to speak for them. I don't know if they saw the report before, um, you know, sent putting in their letter of support. I don't want to assume that, um, but it is a good point. Um, I forgot there was something else you said. Well, and, and Lou, I understand. I 
I don't mean that we're going to pay for it cash, but I mean, yeah. we are going to have other issues. I mean, it's a six story oh. building. It's, you know, how many units are there? How much do we lose in parking, et cetera? When you put them all on the same level playing field, you can compare much more easily than you can. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, under, understood, understood. Uh, I think that's uh, that's what we deal with going forward. And then the other thing that I know is about educating the public, because I think there's a lot of comments of everything from Section 8 and vouchers to affordable housing, and they're all very different things. Yes. Um, yep. And I think when people hear affordable housing, they hear very different things. And so as we're moving forward, if we could do something to educate the community a little bit more, I think they'll be a lot more accepting of things that we're doing. Yeah. I, I, I like the term workforce housing. Great. We still have to explain it, because I, nobody's going to know what workforce housing is. Can I, have, I, just have to do I, I, I hear everything you're saying. Let I agree. Home base share. What was that? I, I, have, I, I, have, I, I do agree that we need to educate the public. That's something since we begin that pro this process, I've always tried to put out there and say to me in a meeting that we, when you think of affordable, that means many things. People think only low income. Some people think low to moderate. Some people think workforce. I think it means many things. And that's why a couple of meetings ago, I did propose for us to have kind of this, like either something that's village ran that educates the public on certain things. What AMI. I, yeah, exactly. I just think AMI is fifty yep. percent of I, the AMI. So I think we just need a lot I, more I, education. I, agree. I brought this up in the past. I'm not trying to keep us. No, I just want to. I just want to. I don't know. I, I hear what you're saying. I, I have this in the past board meeting because it's something I believe on. And when I ran, I believe that we need to educate the public on many things. So I am a. I agree with you that we do want to. That we should do that, and we will do that. Thank you. Thank you. It, it, it is fairly typical. Um, sure. With it is fairly typical that. Uh, companies responding to an RFP will have letters of support or, rec or you know, letters from prior clients extolling their yeah, virtue. Okay. So okay. it's it's not unheard of. To, it's to not see like what's have doesn't work with with the uh, regular yeah, people I mean, on a regular basis. I mean, this is that's the, what they do, right? Uh, Peter. Yeah. The last thing. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, four tonight. What do you got? Collect the whole set. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. When this all discussion began, uh, it was said that uh, prior to the RFP being sent out, that there would be a study done to identify the, and quantify the amount of existing units in the village that were considered affordable. Is that right? I don't recall that, but uh, that may have been said. I don't know that we ever voted on that. Uh, said that it was being done. Who? who? Well, you, Guys, well, I, I didn't say it because so, so uh, of course, people put words in my mouth all the time. <laughs> the person that would usually sit in that seat. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, he's uh, not, not here now. I, I just wanted to, you know, kind of, I just was kind of brought back to my memory. Uh, just with the early discussion. I mean, I, I do know this. We're short. We're way short on affordable housing. But, but you can't say that without the fine. Well, we have less than we had. Uh, well, we could we could talk. Okay, and, uh, you know, make these movements, and you say, and you quantify the number of units that are going to be in this place. We need to know how many do we have now. How many do we need? Without knowing those two numbers, you can't act on anything. I I, I no, I don't. I'm talking. About, well, I don't want to go against this. Well, I've heard. I've heard that like we're six hundred short or something short like that. Sweet, but without knowing the numbers, right. how much we have now. How much we need. I right. can't say we need anything. All right. All right. Thank you. How many sorry spots we need? No. I just want to confirm. You know, so maybe we don't need any affordable housing. Some of that information in 2019 when we did the moratorium study and the county um, did a housing assessment, and that will have some of it. And the best person to ask is Greg, our planner, yeah. yep. but I think he's quite busy right now. But if I can remind, and, and I just want to speak, if I can remind everyone that Greg has sent you no less than three emails with specific questions regarding all of those numbers that mm -hmm. Peter just asked about. So I know you get a lot of emails and I have this issue that I have 1.6 million emails that I want to try to delete. But the reality is your the information is sent to you. You okay. do have it. You just, I, I get that everyone else does something else and we do this full time, but all of that information has been sent to you by Greg. All uh, of it. So okay. just, just I'll look up go. his name and look up his emails, and you have all of that. I'm going to do that right when we get home, uh, 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 Jerry. Thank you. I plead, I plead guilty. I plead guilty. It's all right. Uh, thank it you. Is what it is. All right. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm I'm leaving, and I didn't I didn't close the meeting. 
I think we have two. We have three. Yeah. What? We, we have to finish the agenda. But do we have a report from the park treasurer? I think all we have something. For yeah, me. yeah. Thank you. Why don't you take over? <laughs> Yes, that be my real resignation from HCCM and Harry, Cammy, Tobias. That is all. Thank you very Thank much, Augie. You. God bless Thanks, you. Augie. All right. And then we have something for from Bob. From, yeah. uh, from the village attorney report. Four sixteen was filed on October 2nd. Which one is that now? That's the one that had to do with fees for the building department, restructuring the fees. Oh, excellent. That was good. That's a long overdue. All right. Okay, minutes, commissions, boards, committees, uh, minutes of the uh, Board of Trustees work session and regular meetings of, of September 26th, October 10th, minutes of the Board of Ethics meeting of September 20th, 2023, minutes of the Recreation Parks Commission meeting of September 6th, 2023, minutes of the Arts Council meeting of October 2nd, 2023, minutes of the Tree Committee meeting of October 4th, 2023. Uh, we got a vote to accept those, or yeah, yeah, okay. Um, motion to accept those minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Motion to close the meeting. So moved. If you guys second. Are... Good night. Good night. Oh no no. Okay. Good night. This is off the record. Good night. <laughs> if you guys were looking for information that um, was yes. sent in regards.